Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to explain you exactly how you uh, you will download the two files. VMware Workstation 17 Player, you will download it and you will install it. You will download it from this website, okay? Uh, or you can go to Google and you will type uh, VMware Workstation uh, Player uh, download it will take you to this uh, link and you will download now once you download it actually just keep it okay why i need this file actually this is the virtualization this gonna give you the ability to create virtual machines so yeah virtual machines so virtual machines you are going to create a linux virtual machine in order to be able to follow me and make a lab and uh, try whatever I'm doing in the course uh, to, to write the comments, to see, check exactly how to practice everything or the labs that I'm going to already give you in this uh, course. This is the first file you're going you're gonna to download. Okay, once you download it, just keep it. And the second file I need you to download is here is from this website, centos.org. So you will go to this, this website and you will go to download. Where is download? It's up here. Download, it will open you this website. In here, you will go to CentOS stream and you have two options, nine, version nine or version eight. For myself, it's not a big difference, okay? Uh, for myself, I downloaded 8, okay, and I choose actually if I am using Intel 64-bit, I will pick this one. Then it will take me to this page. Then I will go to the ISO file. This is ISO file. I press it. Then I will go to 10 gig, which is full version, by the way, okay? Once you click it, it will, it will start download. Once you download it, just keep it. Also, so you will go to these two files. I already downloaded them. They, by default, they are in downloads. Okay, you will find VM player and you will find the ISO file for, for Synth OS. You will double click on the first one. Okay, and next, next, next until you finish. Uh, it's straightforward, by the way. Okay, you will go to the second, uh, and after you install it, okay, you will find it here. This is the one, okay, where I am using right now. Fine. <coughs> yeah, this is the one. I created the first machine. I will create the second machine with you, okay? How can I create it? Let's cancel this. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to do create new virtual machine. Okay, I'll press and create virtual new machine. And I will choose, uh, I will install the operating system later. Okay, then mm, next. Okay, it is Linux. Yes, it's going to be Linux. CentOS. Yes, exactly. This is the option. Then mm, version okay next again and i will call it 02 centos okay cento is let's say 02 for example okay i keep the location as else then next then i will increase the maximum disk let's use okay 30 well i make it 40 okay and after that, store it disk in one single place. Next. In here, actually, he's asking me, you ready to create virtual machine, customize hardware. You want to customize hardware? Yes, I want to customize the hardware. What I'm going to do, actually, the process, I'll make it like four process. And in here, actually, here you will use the ISO file or the ISO image that we downloaded. If you are in download folder, you go to download folder and you will choose which one. I choose this one. Okay. Yeah. Then it's 10, 10 gig. Yeah, it's 10 gig. Okay. So I'll open this one. So I'm going to use this one. Network adapter. I'll keep everything as is. I'll go to 
everything other things is gonna be remain but here actually I'm gonna increase uh, the RAM I'll make it like uh, here I'll type for example 4 okay very good then I will keep it then I'll close this then I'll finish now okay it will create me the second one but you have to start it okay when you start it just make it bigger what will happen now it is start the machine okay now it's say install CentOS stream 8 yes I want to install it enter I chose the first option it will take some time okay okay now it started right now as you see actually it's yeah now started to install I will um, now it's going on. Okay. Okay, and this okay. Okay, I will stop just wait. You know, I will stop the recording until it's finished. So this process actually is gonna, this process is gonna take a little bit longer. So you have to be patient. Actually, you have to wait while you are installing it. So this is the first step, by the way. <clears throat> so now actually, <clears throat> it is, going on So now we reach it up to here. So here is asking welcome to CentOS stream 8, for example, and the language is English. Okay, so I will continue.
Here, for example, we will find the root password. You have to put a password for the root. Okay, and it should be complicated for, but for for the uh, for the instruction purpose or for explanation purpose, I'll make it simple. So done. Yeah, done. And in here, there is an installation for the hard disk. It says that select the device you'd like to install to. So I keep everything as is and press done. Now I will press on what press on begin installation. Now, as you see, it's downloading the packages. <coughs> I will stop. I'll come ba back later. After the that one. Okay, finish. After I finish, I will come back again just to make the video a little bit shorter. So I'm going to stop here. This step also is going to take uh, some time, long, long times actually, to finish. Yeah. So please be patient also in this step or in this stage until it finishes in the um, until it, it, it reached to the end. Then it will ask to report the system. Yeah, finally we reach it up to here, so we reboot the system. We are going to to reboot the system. It will reboot the machine. Now we got that machine ready. Okay. Now he is um, user creation. He needs two things: user creation and license information. Actually, license I accept and done. That's it. And I'll go to creating. I'm going. I'm going to create a user. For example, let's say. Mm. What is it? So, or yes, yeah, done. Here, actually, it's requiring a user other than root because actually, um, he's recommending that you use another user to log in. Don't use root in each time to, to log in because actually it's very critical and it's a very powerful user. If it got hacked or something happened, it will make a, a big problem. Press done again to use. Okay, done again. And now finish the configuration. Right now, guys, we already got the machine ready to, to play. Okay. So I will log in. <clears throat> yeah, just minimize and make it bigger again. It will open the full screen. Okay. Why well, it's like that, man? Ready to go. Okay, sorry, using sensor stream. Actually, I don't need this now. Make it bigger. 
Now we are ready to use go to files, go to other locations, go to computer. Now these are the folders, uh, directories inside Linux. Home directory, etc, they have put and in the course actually we will handle or we will deal with this directories and you will know exactly these directories is important for what. Okay, like for example if you go to home, for example you will find that this is a home directory of user for, for the users, for all the users. Okay. You will find, in, if you enter inside that these user will lead, you will find the desktop, document, downloads, music, pictures, pub, public, templates, videos, and so on. I'll close this. Now the machine is ready. Okay. So by that we installed. That's very simple, very easy, but you have to be patient and you have to wait till the end. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, actually, we will talk about Linux kernel. Linux kernel is that, as you see here in the picture, is the green area. Lies between what? Between GUI, show, apps, and the hardware of the PC. So, in order to be able to give command to the computer, or if you need the computer to do any process, you should talk to GUI, or shell, then the shell will give the commands to the kernel and kernel will translate these commands and send it to the hardware. So the kernel is the intermediate player that sitting here taking the commands from the human being and send it to the hardware. Okay? That is exactly kernel. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the Linux directory hierarchy system. What is that exactly? If you guys coming from Windows background, you will remember that when you open my computer, for example, you will find the partitions, right? You will find CD, EF, and whatever you partitions you have. But in Linux, actually, this this is not the concept. The in Linux in, it is containing a directories and the main directory. Let, let me draw, for example, the shape here. Imagine that this is the hard disk, okay? And logically, you divide it into in, for example, in in Windows, okay? You divide it into C and D. So when you open my computer, you will find the C and D. But in Linux, actually, if you open the hard disk, okay? I'm talking about logically, okay? You will find that it has directories, okay? The main directory is the forward slash, okay? And under the forward slash, let, let me use control Z here. I will use this one. So in Linux, you will find that forward slash is the main directory that has other directories. So and down here, I, I can find home, for example. And down here, I can find uh, for the slash or the main directory and etc, for example. What is that? I will show you exactly what is this and what does it mean. But right now, I want to show you that the Linux itself is containing directories. Okay, and the main directory in Linux is for the slash. And under this for the slash has other directories. And each directory is referring to a place in the hard disk. It's referring to a place in the hard disk. Let's go to Linux and see exactly how it look like. See, I'm here in Linux. I'm using CentOS. I will go to this place. I'll open the files and I'll go to other locations. In other locations, if I, if I open computer, I'll find these directories. BIM, boot, dev, etc, home, library, Media, Mentor, all these are the directories uh, which uh, exist in Linux, okay? And all these directories is coming under the forward slash directory. If you go, for example, to whom, what whom has? Whom has, uh, this is what it, the user, okay? So this is the home directory of the users. 
home directory of the users. Like, for example, if you open it, you will find the desktop of a lead, document, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, videos. All these are the, direct the home directory of the user Wally. So if there is any other user, you will find it here. Except, except the root user. The root user actually has his own, has his own profile or has his, ho his own home directory, okay? Which is located directly under the forwarded slash, okay? The main directory. That was about the hierarchy. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. I welcome this tutorial. We are going to go deep in uh, CLI command line interface. Actually, let's open the. Um, I will close this again. Actually, close terminal. And here, in here, actually, I'm inside Linux. Okay. In if you remember back, we, we talked about uh, kernel. We talked about kernel, and we said that the, we are using graphic interface, graphic user interface, and CLI to give commands to kernel and kernel translate our commands and they give it to the hardware of the PC or the computer. Actually, in front of you right now is graphic user interface. If you come here and you click on here, um, you will open these files. These files will take you the, to this place. Other locations, if you open other locations, computers, you will go to these directories. This is actually the graphic user interface. If you go back, if you want to go back, you want to go back, okay, you can do that. You can open files, you can, uh, create files you can do whatever you want actually using graphic user interface but at the same time this one is a, a bit limited you know? that's why Linux the powerful of Linux is the command line interface actually is using the command line interface this is a command line interface the command line interface is very powerful giving you a lot of capabilities like for example <coughs> Now I will write, for example, BWD. Okay, what is it? BWD will show you exactly where is the path that you are existing right now. Okay, now I open the command line interface. I write BWD, printing, <coughs> print working directory. Actually, this is actually the path or directory that I'm inside of. And in here, actually, this is a command line interface, okay? <clears throat> I want to show you the power, the power of the command line interface. In command line interface, you can do multiple tasks one time. Like, for example, if I write date, date, it will show me exactly the date of the day, okay? What if I want to write date and at the same time I write another command like ls? So it gives me two results, yes, the date and the directories. ls actually is uh, listing the directories and the files and the path where you are, okay? So this is the use of ls. Let's clear this, yeah? And uh, this is what we say CLI. And this is a purity of CLI. This is actually really, it's amazing. And in Linux, we will learn slowly, slowly, we'll learn the commons and we will be familiar with the, the commons because this is the main purpose of using Linux, by the way. So um, here, let's say, or let's talk a bit about the command. Okay, so let's say that I, I have this command, which is ls, and with the command itself, I have options. Like for example, dash a. These are the, these are options giving you more results. Like if I enter here, it will show me more details. Or again, if I write ls only, it give you small details. But if you use options, it will you go, give you more details. Yeah. What is dot? And this this is actually the hidden files. So dash a means dash all. So I want you to list all files and directories in this path, whether it is hidden or not hidden. Okay. Clear again. Okay. Let's say that I want to ls dash a, and I want let's say root and desktop. Enter. 
Now I listed all directories and files inside this path. Okay, very good. So this is the comma, this is the option, and this is the argument. This is the argument. So the argument, as we see here, is case sensitive. Because if you write it like this, for example, small d, it will give you, it will not give you any result because actually you mistakenly or wrongly wrote it. Okay, very good. This is at the beginning. The second thing I want to talk about is the prompt. The um, um, uh, let's, for example, uh, read a bit about the prompt. Actually, this is called the prompt. What is that prompt? Prompts from the prompt, you will know that which user you are uh, using right now. I'm using root user, okay, and and the PC name or where, okay, the computer, okay. So this is you can understand from the prompt itself. This is another thing. The third thing here I want to talk about is the shell. This CLI that I'm using right now is shell, shell. Like in Windows, there's PowerShell. We are using right now, what we are using right now is shell. It is a language. Yes, it is a language between you and the computer. Okay, you can write anything and the computer will understand it and it will process and it will give you the results due to it. But shell itself, uh, it has different types of shell. Yes, there is different type of shell. What I'm using right now is bash, something called bash. Oh, how you know that I'm using bash, you can write this command. Echo means print me what is the type dollar sign and what is the shell that I'm using. Enter that I'm using bash. Okay. That means that there are other, other type of, uh, of, of, of shell. Yeah, there are other type of shell like KSH, like CSH, like, for example, um, porn against show. Yeah, born again show. Okay, so there are different type of uh, show. Yeah, so patch is the one that I'm using right now. Okay, very good. Um, that is exactly um, the CLI and the powerful of CLI and as we will see uh, uh, later in the following lessons we will always deal with CLI uh, and we will elaborate and talk more about a lot of commons okay and I want to thank you for um, this is actually the end of this lesson and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about manage files and directories. How can we manage files and directories in Linux? Okay. Okay. So managing files and directories, what you need actually to, what you are going to do actually in order to manage files or directories. You want to, let's say you want to navigate. You want to navigate. You want to, let's say, for example, you want to list files. You want to create files or directories. What else do you want to do? You want to remove files and directories. You want to copy. You want, what else you want to do? You want, you want to move and move and rename, move and rename. So these are actually the, you can say the persons that you want to, uh, to deal with in order to manage files and directories, right? So let's go to Linux. Okay. Printing system. I will log in one. Yeah. And I will, uh, clear and in here. I want to show you exactly how you will manage the files and directories. Let's say, um, let's write bwd uh, uh, print work directory, and I find myself here in 
uh, forward slash root. If I type ls, I will see the files and directories inside this path, right? Um, let's say that I want to go up. Okay. Now, if I print my work directory again, I'll find myself now in, in the main or the main directory. The main directory, if I type ls, I'll find that it includes other directories of Linux, right? Very good. Now, I want to explore these directories. How can I explore these directories? I will write cd and I, will, I want, for example, open. I want to enter inside these directories let's say i want to enter inside home for example enter now i'm b deputy it will show you exactly that you entered inside who let's clear again now let's say i want to cd and i will write this in this case in this way what happened here? I went up two times. BW again, I find my, myself here, right? In the main directory again, I, I went up two times. Okay, so again, if I open, for example, home. Okay, now I want to go up one time and I will print BWD. Oh, why it's like this? Because actually there is no two levels. But if you, let's say, very good. I will go to, again, to CD home. And inside of here, I will list what is inside. I will go inside Walid, for example, CD and Walid. Okay, I'm inside Walid right now. Now I want to go up two times. And BWD, now I went up two times. I went back to the main directory again. I went up to Walid. I went I went back to, up to uh, home, then directory. Okay, very good. This is how you entered inside, how you enter inside, and you have to go, to go back. What if, um, let's say, I will CD... And I will go to home again, and inside home there is Walid. I will go to here, and I will write CD, then minus, CD space minus, enter. What happened? It takes me to the, the place where I was, P double D, exactly. So CD minus, it takes you back to the place where you, where you were, okay? It's like back, so... It's like in Windows, there is up and there is back. Okay, very good. Now, if I write, for example, ls a dash a, it will give me all details about the directories and files exist in this path, right? As we, uh, as we said last video. What if I write, for example, touch, and um, first I want to go to home. Let me go to home. Okay, CD, and I will go to home. And inside of home, actually, clear. And inside of home, I will write touch file one. File or file. Touch file. Now I created a file. Yes, I created a file. Very good. And it's very simple. So touch is giving you the ability to create to create files. To create files. Let's say let's create another file. Touch. Let's say file one. File one dot for example txt. So this is exactly you created a text file. Yes, you created two files right now. Okay, I want rm. rm means remove, remove the file. So I will remove, remove the file. It asked me, you want to remove this file? I will say, for example, yes. What happened here? If I write ls, it will show me that I deleted this file, the first file that I created. Okay, if I want to remove without 
um, let's say dash f. Now I want to remove the file that I created without letting the computer asking me. Yeah, I will dash f, rm dash f, then I will write file one.txt. Now it deleted it without asking me if you are, if I am sure I want to delete it or not. Okay, there, very good. Yeah, let's again. Yeah. Now I've created files, I deleted the file. Okay, now I want to create a directory. How can I create a directory? MK dire. MK dire. MK dire. MK dire is the command to create directory. Okay, now I create a directory. I will give it a name, like for example, make dire called, for example, data. I created a directory called data ls. This is an empty directory right now. If you want to go inside it, just cd and I want to go inside it, man. Okay, data. And enter. No such. Why? Why like this? Now I want to go inside of it and I cannot. Why? I will write bwd, I am inside home. In, in the home itself, ls, I created data and Walid. Sorry, data. So I want to enter inside data. cd for, not forward slash, because now I am writing it wrongly. Why? Because I am here writing a wrong path. So be careful, you have to write the correct path. Just data, because actually no need to Write the full path here because actually you are inside whom and inside whom there is data only data and what is so write just data enter now you are inside the data now you want to create file touch inside data so touch file and I want to create a file let's say file one for example I created a file one inside data then I will let me clear this oh my god CLS Clear, clear. Now I cleared it. Now, very good. Now I have, I created a file inside that directory. Let's say that I want to go back. It will take me to home. Now I will ls, I'll find data. Data is having file one. Now I want to delete data and its files. How can I delete it? I will write rm, means remove. Then I will write data, for example, enter. Now what happened? It say cannot remove data because it's a directory. When you remove a directory, it has a special way. You will write rm dash r, then the directory name, enter. That means what? It's asking me, <clears throat> you want to delete the data and its, con its files? Yes, I want to do that. Oh. It asked me again, remove regular empty file? Yes. So it asked it asked me. It asked me two times or three times to delete data. You want to delete data? You want to delete the files inside of it? Yes. Now ls because it will ask you one by one. What if I want to delete without making it or without letting it asking us how I can do it I will do this way rm then um, let's create it again mk dire and data I created a directory called data then ls I find there is data okay in here inside data i will create can i do like like this touch let's say file one okay and specify where is the location yeah now what i did i created a file inside of data without going inside data without writing cd data and enter inside and create a file no i can create it directly like this this is the beauty of using cli Enter now. If you ls data, oh my god, 
it didn't create a data it didn't create anything inside of data so ls and dash a data oh it's empty so where it created this file okay so write ls again uh, it created in this place why why it created inside of whom and it didn't create it inside of data actually in order to be to write it this way you have to write the full path so touch file 2 for example and I will write for example who then data and inside of this please create file 2 is it gonna create it let's say ls um, that again oh it didn't create it again ls oh it created it in the same place why why I'm not able to create it inside of the directory data directly and I'm creating each time I'm cre it created it in, inside of the home because actually touch is working like this you have to be inside the directory itself so you will write CD and you write data and you will create touch file one ls yeah I created it in here okay <clears throat> That's for this lesson, and I will see you next video. Hello, welcome. Um, in this video, actually, we will continue talking about manage files and directories. In last video, actually, we talked about navigating, list, create, and remove. We already navigated using CD, list, ls, and create using creating file using. Uh, using what using touch and creating directory using mkdir removing using rm dash r and dash f okay dash f means force delete without asking me uh, uh, whether you sure to, to delete or no and I, today i will continue to talk about the other options as well uh, but we talked about remove but i still want to show you something about remove I will create, for example, touch. I will create file one. Okay. I will create file one. Enter. I'll create file two. Enter. I will create file three or file three. Now, let's say that I want to delete that uh, or ls. Okay, now I want to delete all of them one time. I, I will create also directory. Okay. Okay. Um, MK dire data. Now I created files and data ls. Now I have data, file, file one, file two, file three. Very good. Now I want to remove all of them. There are two ways actually you can remove one time. RM and you will type data you will type file you will type file one you will type you will keep typing them one by one like this enter what happened it say that there is no such file or directory no such file or directory that oh, okay sorry okay ls it deleted what okay I, uh, I wrote it like this okay okay ls what happened it didn't delete anything because I didn't confirm so again delete yes 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 now ls it deleted okay rm data ah 
is a directory as we said that because there is a directory you have to write dash or okay and if you don't want to ask to him to ask you just like this now it deleted so ls now we deleted this so this this is the way you can um, rm and write file one file two file three file four or whatever or you can do like this file and asterisk so please remove or delete everything start with file okay enter ah it will ask me okay yes yes now ls there is no thing nothing start with file so we deleted all of them okay so as you see now you can remove using these two ways okay instead of deleting one by one you can delete all of them once very good so now i will continue uh, talking about other options here about copying about moving about renaming and all these things let's let's make clear here first i and i will exactly see how can we do it i will create first a file uh, touch um let's say work one touch work two or only touch work one okay now what i want to do here i will create mk dire mk dire and i will create a directory called that now i want what i want to do right now is to copy work one inside that how can i do it okay very good now i will write cp which is copy and i will write work one now i want to copy work one inside of data and enter what happened if you write ls data enter you find that we really copied work one inside of work one inside of data what if I write ls again? Okay, still there is a copy of work one inside of whom? Okay, very good. This is about copying. This is about copying. Okay, what if I want to copy, let's say, for example, that I will create mk dire. mk dire, let's say that I will write, I will create another um, folder or directory called that that two now i created another one called that two and i will copy let's say work one inside of data two enter okay now i want to copy data two inside of data how can i do it so i will write copy data two inside of what data enter ah uh, what happened here copy dash r not specified omitting directory data 2 so if i write ls if i write ls i find data and data 2 if i write ls data what will happen ah uh, it didn't copy it why we have to use dash r let's see cp dash r data to okay i want to copy it inside of data and enter and i will write ls data uh, i copied data to inside of data in this case as you see her i copied it because you have to use dash r because it will copy the files inside of data two also so it will copy the directory with the files inside of it and it will copy it somewhere else okay very good this is about copying what if i use a command called mv 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 means move to move the file from one place to another place so moving itself is to move the file but if you move it in the same place means you will rename it means you will rename it as we will see now i want to move i want to move what 
I want to move, let's say, work one. I want to move work one. Where I want to take it? I want to take it data two or data one. Okay. Or, sorry, data. I want to move work one to data, but I want to give it another name, like, for example, work 100. Sorry. Work 100. Enter. Oh, what happened here? If I ls data, enter, I found that I copied, already I copied work 1. Sorry, I moved work 1. From whom? Okay, from the current location, if you write ls, okay, work 1 is no, is no longer there. It's not there. I already moved it to data. I moved it here. But not only I moved it, I also moved it with renaming. With renaming. Let's create touch. I want to create, for example, I want to create like file one, one, one. I want to create this file. And I want move this file. Okay. In the same place, but I will give it file only or file 100. Enter. LS. Oh, I already renamed file 111 into file 100. This is actually move or MV. Okay. Yeah, this is exactly about these things to copy, to move, and to rename. Okay, very good. Now, this is the end of this lesson. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about getting help. What is getting help? Actually, most of us is not familiar with the old commands. Let's say that no one in on the earth will keep in mind all the commands of Linux. But at the same time, there is a way to get help. Get help means if you are not familiar with any command, you have to go to manual, something called manual of the command. The manual of the command actually is it's what well, it's a POC. It's written inside of Linux. It's a documentary. It's giving you full details about how to use these commands. Okay, so let's clear for example this. Let's say I, I'm not familiar with LS. I don't know what is LS is doing actually. So in this case actually I will write man MAA, which is manual LS, and enter. And in here, actually, the first thing I want you to take your um, to take your notification to it, or to take your um, to take your attention to is user command. What that? What does it mean? Actually, user command means this command you can do it without any privilege without using, for example, root privilege or higher privilege. If you are a normal user, for example, you can write ls. Let's say that I'm a normal user inside the system. Let's say I'm, for example, a user, a limited user. I don't have full privilege on the system and I want to write ls. I will be able to write ls. Okay. And in here, inside of here, actually, if you uh, enter, it will go down line by line. If you press, for example, um, if you press uh, on the space, actually, it it, it will give you um, uh, uh, page by page, okay. And as you see here, there are there are different options. Here are the options, and explain you exactly what these options doing. When you use it with the command, as we explained, the command, option, and the argument. These are the options when you 
multiple options actually a lot of options inside of it and so, uh, you can use it without ls in order yeah so this actually is the manual of ls you when you want to do something and you're not able to or you don't know actually you can come here and you can read and you can explore and you can find exactly what you need okay if you want to go uh if you want to quit it he say press edge for help q to quit so i press for q it will go uh out okay so one more time now we i will open this again M N L S enter. Now I will see user commands. What if I want to queue? I want to go out again, and I want to, for example, M A N another one called another command called, for example, um, if config, if config enter. Actually, Linux system administrators manual. Now it's different. It's not a user. It's system administrator privilege. So when you use this command, not normal users need higher privilege in order to be able to use this one. Manual, just press space. It will go page, page by page and it will explain you exactly how to use it. Q to go out. Uh, what M A N R M? For example, this user commands also. You, any any normal user can use that. Okay, enter line by line, space to go to like this. Q to go out. This is actually how to get help. Okay. Um, let's say for example, I want to write man or manual <coughs> manual dash for example, KLS. What is this? Nothing appropriate. LS, nothing appropriate. What if I write man dash K, for example, disk? Nothing appropriate. Let's write it, for example, capital. Okay. Let's get the key. Yes. Ah, what is this? Here, actually, if you want to search for, if you want to search for a, a, a word, for example, like this, there is commons start with this or no, like this. Okay. It will help you. Okay, this is all about manual and uh, how to use manual and it's really ben beneficial and it's, uh, it's really very good. It will help you a lot in learning the commons. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next video. <clears throat> Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about text, uh, text files. How to edit the text files, how to view the text files, how to create text files. So we will create and we will, uh, let's say, edit and view the text files. Actually, in Linux, okay, you have to deal with text files. So text files actually is very important because maybe you have a script you want to create a script or you want to edit any text files okay for any reason okay so in this case actually how can we do it or how, how can we deal with that okay so let's go to our linux here for example i will log in then i will open the terminal or the CLI command line interface okay here I won't show you exactly I will create let's create a create a file like for example touch let's check first BWD I'm here in root I will go to for example home let's go to home directory now I'm in home I'll type ls yeah 
there is a file called file file hundred. I'll create another file. Touch. Let's say touch file dot txt and enter. Now I want to edit or I want to write inside of this file. How can I write inside of it? Okay. What if I use something called g edit and file dot txt and enter. Oh, this is actually the graphical editor of the file. So you can write inside of here, for example, test. Yeah, hello. Yeah, welcome. Okay, that's very uh, good. But why actually um, I'm using gedit? I'm using gedit because actually here in this system there is graphical interfaces. S some systems of Linux they they don't have already. They don't have um, the graphical interface. The this one the, we don't have that graphical interface that you see right now. Now let me um, save. <coughs> Save and close, for example. <clears throat> Here, this is the graphical interface. This is the graphical interface. Okay, some Linux or some versions they don't have uh, that graphical interface. In this case, actually, what I'm gonna do is I need a tool, another tool which is available on all types of Linux, in all types of Linux, which is V, VI. VI and file.txt. Enter. Now it will open the file. Okay, but be careful because VI has a special, a special way to deal with. Okay, very good. I, let me explain to you here in Paint. Okay, V. Okay, I'll write here V. How you deal with V? Okay, in V there are three modes. In V, there are three modes. Okay, first mode, the second mode, and the third mode. Okay, very good. Now, I will type here the first mode is called what is called the insert or command mode. Command mode. Let's say that this one is command mode. Okay. The second one is what? The second one is edit mode. Edit mode. And the third one is what? The third one is last line mode. Last line. Okay, very good. Okay, I'm talking theoretically and I will show you practically and you will understand that. You will fully understand what, what I mean by that. Okay, the command to to go from command mode to edit mode, you have to do what? You have to write I or A or O. Okay, so let's bring this like this, for example. Now I want to go from command mode to edit mode. What should I do? You will write either I, you will press either I, or A or O, in order to go to edit mode. Okay, and we will know what is I, A, O now. Okay. By default, when you open via V, V, and the file, okay, you will go, you will pee in command mode. And in order to, to, if you want to go to edit mode, you have to press I, A, O to be able to edit the file. Okay, now I want to go from edit mode to... I want to go from edit mode to what? From edit mode to last line mode. Okay, I want to go from edit mode to last line mode. What should I do in this case? I will press escape. I will press escape on the keyboard okay i'll press escape in order to 
uh, go out from edit mode to last line mode, I will type escape mode. Escape. I will press escape from uh, on the keyboard. What if I want to go for back from last line mode to command mode? From last line mode to command mode. Okay. If you want to go back to command mode, um, actually, if you if you are in edit mode and you press escape, you will be in last line mode. Okay. Very good. Again, uh, command mode, command mode. You will pr you will use this. Actually, I will show you. Again, now I want to go to command. Okay, what should I write here? I will write this. Okay, and a colon. Colon, you will use colon. Okay, okay, so let's go to our file here and see exactly how can we. Um, Let's see. I open this. I will close this uh, one more time. Let's see. I will press escape, enter, and Q. Now I quit. Oh, very good. Now I want to open the file again. Okay. I want to open the file again. VI, VI, space, and the file name. File.txt, and enter. Now it will open the file. Now I can edit. But now you are in command mode. In command mode, you cannot do anything. If you press any key, you won't be able to write anything. If you want to write, you will not be able to write. Okay, I will use the arrows. I will use the arrows. See, I am here in the, in the test, in this line, in the first line. If I, for example, press I, now, now if you notice down here, there is insert, a word insert. You can now write anything. This is my first line, for example, using VI. Okay, very good. Now I want this, this is now the edit mode. So I pressed I in order to be able to go from command mode to edit mode. Now I am in edit mode. Now I want to go back to command mode. I will press escape. Once I press escape, now I'm not able to write anything. Okay, very good. Now I want to go back to the edit mode, but this in this time I will use A instead of I. A means append. Okay, A means append. Append right after. So, if I, for example, I am here in, in this word first, and I press A, okay, that means it will write after the first letter, H. Okay, very good. Okay, so, append means right after. Okay. What about, I will escape again, and what about O? What about O? Okay, if I press O, Let's say I will press O. It will open an, another line. It will go to another line and it, it will let me write another line. Okay. This is the second line using the editor. Right. Very good. So we know now that Common mode, there is common mode, there is edit mode, and there is last line mode. What about if I want now to go to, I edited the file, and I want to exit, or I want to use the last line mode. Last line mode, you always use it to, to quit, to write, to save what you did, actually. Okay? Very good. What I'm going to do is, I will press escape. Or let's press escape, 
then I will press colon. Uh, I press the escape, then I press colon. When I press colon, okay, you can say WQ, for example, to save and to quit, to write and to quit. Now, if you want to see the file again, okay, I will write V file dot txt enter now i'm again inside the file i'm again inside the file okay that was for this lesson thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we will complete a b uh, part two actually in uh, here we will uh, take or we'll talk about navigate inside of the file <coughs> delete copy search you will delete word you will delete lines you will delete part of the text copy you will copy, copy line copy word copy whatever you want and search you will search search inside of the file okay if i go here to our linux and open the file using v and file.txt and enter now i'm inside the file very good as we said that we are now in the common mode in the common mode and now i will i am in the beginning of the line right okay let's talk first about the navigation and navigate navigation using word okay or uh, navigate first the word i'm talking about the word beginning of the word and end of the word let's say that i am I am, for example, here, okay, in this word, word, first. Now I want to go to the beginning of the word. How can I do? I type, or I press W, O. It takes me to the second word, the beginning of the second word, or the following word. I press W again, it will go to the next word, beginning. Again. It will like this. So what if I go to? I want to go to the end. I press E. It go to the end. I press W. I'll go to the beginning of the next or the following word. And E is the last of the word. Now, for example, I am. I will um, to first. I want to go from command mode, that mode, and I want to go to the edit mode i will press i okay now i am in editing mode very good now there is a mistake let's say that there is a mistake here and i am in that word v now i want to go to the end of the following word first i'll press w oh sorry i'll press escape to be in the command mode then i will press w w again to go to the beginning of the following and e to go to the last then i will go to i and i will edit the word like this or here t okay i press okay t okay very good so as we said that w is the beginning of the word e is the end of the word okay what about line what about line now i'll press escape again okay now let's say that i am here in that line okay the beginning of this line let's say that i want to go to second line what should i do in this case the capital g capital g capital G okay first let's come here so for navigation navigate for example W um, or let's say that I will start with word okay uh, begin of the word you will use W okay okay
end of the word use e what about line line okay line you have to do the following use capital capital G for example if you want to go to the second second line two then capital G what about if you want to go to line five for example so you will write five and capital G okay what about uh, if you go if you want to go to line one again one then G what about if you press zero it's the beginning of the line beginning of the line what else um, dollar sign dollar sign is oh sorry dollar sign is the end of the line end of the line okay this is exactly how you navigate so let's go here i want to start deal with lines okay as we said capital g if i want to go to the second line very good you have to be in command mode then you press 2 and capital g ha it take me to the second one what if i want to go to the fifth i will go back to the first one i have how many lines one two three four five if i, if I want to go to welcome how i'll press five and capital g if it, it will take me to the five, the fifth line that is so that is actually how to navigate the lines what about if i want to go to the beginning of the line so i'm here for example and i want to go to the beginning you will press zero enter i'm sorry i'm sorry i'll press escape again i'll go to here uh let's go to uh, let's press a one and capital g it will take me to the first line again and end of the line dollar sign so i'll press dollar sign it took me to the, the end of the line okay what about if i want to go to a start of the beginning zero zero will take me to the beginning of the line okay very good so this is the lines what about now this is the navigation what about the delete if i want to delete something okay very good if you want to delete word <coughs> if you want to delete word dw let's say i want to delete this for example dw ah it deleted one word what if you want to undo press u u it will bring it back it will undo whatever you did okay what if i want to uh, so dw delete word okay what if i want to delete a complete line dd dd it will delete the complete line so u means undo dd delete a complete line u undo again okay so i dd is to delete a complete line what about capital d capital d is delete from prompt to end of the line capital d okay very good so let's say that i am here and i uh, you uh, i use capital d shift d ah it will delete from the prompt to the end of the line okay you to undo again so delete if you want to delete something okay uh, let's write here delete if you want to delete something okay if you want to delete something in this case you will for example word what about word if i want to delete word well in this case what i will do i will use dw to delete word if i want to uh u is to undo undo this one is to delete delete word okay what about if i want to do something else if i want to delete a, a line so line if you want to delete line dd okay dd means to delete line what about if i want to use capital d to from from 
the prompt prompt from to from from the prompt prompt to the end of the line okay that is dd okay what else that's for deleting and of course if you want to go back or you want to undo you will press u so it will undo what about, what about copying copying now i want to copy okay i want to copy something okay if you want to copy something copy something okay very good what you have to, you have to do is if you want to copy a line there's yy copy line copy line okay as we said here dd means dd you will delete line delete line okay yeah what about a copy why why mean copy line copy line what if i want to paste you will press p to paste i copied by yy then paste you will go to the place where you want to paste and uh, type p on the keyboard and p capital means p capital means paste before paste before okay this is for copying and paste okay let's go here and see exactly how can i copy so i am here for example in this line <coughs> As, as we said why why it will copy the line now I want to paste it I want to paste it okay let's say I want to go to um, line 2 to G capital and I'll press P small P small ah it copied it copied here so I what i did actually so let's undo it copied after okay it copied after so okay copy again uh, or paste again small p what about capital p shift p okay let's come here okay now i'm in the last one i will use capital p ah it copied before Capital P is copying before. B, small p, is copying after. So it copied after. So when I was standing or I stopping here or I was in here in this location and I press small p, it, per, it copied it below. Okay? And so on. But uh, when I was here and I used capital P, it's, it's already uh, pasted uh, after. Okay? sorry yeah paste it after oh sorry i was here and welcome it pasted it before okay again capital p it copied it before okay what about here small p will copy uh, it will copy after so small p small p copy after capital p copy before that's for the copy and paste we'll go to another thing which is search now i am inside of the file and i want to search for something okay search you have to go to you have to um, press forward slash then any word you want to search for like for example i will search for second second and enter it will directly take me to this to that word okay second because i was searching for the second and if you note here search hit bottom continue at top okay so it's search from top to down but let's say i have for example here i will come to the end and i will insert i i will insert, insert the same word one more time second and second one second 
two, second, three, and escape again. Now I won't search for second. I will press for the slash, then second, okay, and enter. It will t take me to the first one. If you press, if you press in, it will go to the second one in the thickest. If you press in. Okay, it will find the nickest. Press in, it will find the nickest. Press in, it will find the nickest. Okay, until the end. There is there is another way to stop. Okay, let's for example go to that one. Okay, and I'm in here. Press enter. Press insert, and I will. What I will do? I will. No, again, space. I will delete. I put capital S in here. Okay, in second. Okay, in this case, actually, escape again and search for second. Ha! Huh. It didn't bring me the first because it says sen uh, case sensitive. It's case sensitive. In order to search and uh, you want the program to neglect the case sensitive. There is another way to do it. Okay. Okay. I'll press question mark. Um, escape. I'll press question mark like this. Then the word second. Enter. It will take me from, oh, sorry, from bottom to up. In, 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 in. Ah, okay. So, what if I want to search for something? Okay. 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 Okay, guys. You know what? This is actually it's gonna be a task for you. I want to search, and I want the program to discard or. Um, don't use the same case sensitive. Search for any word, and um, without looking to the the sensitive or the sensitive case. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do, okay, um, I want to, for example, I want to replace. Okay, but before I go to replace, okay, I will write here the another one which is. The last one we last one we took is search, right? So I will come here. Search. If you want to search, okay. As we said, you will use this and the word. Uh, or and if you press in, yeah, find next, find next. And if you want to um, from down to po from bottom to up you can use this one okay this is for the search i prefer that i stop this video here um, and continue in the next video thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to continue uh, v part 3 in v part 3 i want you guys to um to um to know exactly how if I want to replace a word in the text I want to replace something inside the text how can I replace it okay escape then I will go to last line mode the last line mode in this case we need the last line mode in order to be able to replace any word in the text so I'll press the colon then I will use the following I will use the uh, percentage sign okay then search is search for the word like for example second if i want for example replace a word second okay now i'm telling to the program search for second then do what replace it with for example third okay now i enter what will happen it goes to the lines okay and it replaced second with uh third with third what, what if i want to undo 
just press U, it will undo. I want to go up here to the beginning of the uh, of the of the text, and I want to I want to type that again. I want to type that again. What I want to do? Press then upper arrow. The upper arrow actually is go gonna gonna write the same thing again, and I will press enter again. Okay, it replaced it replaced it replaced second with third okay what about let's say let's say um, I'm in here and I want to replace first with for example second okay or like this and I will write in instead of first Instead of first, I won't replace it with, for example, second. And enter. It replaced the first with second. This is my first. It became second. Okay. In all the text. You, you, it will undo again. So this is a way how to replace. This is a way how to replace word inside of the text okay <clears throat> see i want to again use the following what if i put g in the end of that comment what will happen okay but in this case actually what i want to do I want to replace second with third. Okay, and I put G here. And it gives me the same result, huh? Okay, very good. You give me the same result. Enter again. It gave me the same result. And if you notice, also it's a case sensitive. Huh? Okay, very good. So undo. And now let's continue. What if, for example, I want to copy from line 3 to line 5 and paste them after, for example, 7? In this case, how can I do it? Okay. You can go. <laughs> to last line mode and you will what you're going to do actually is let's say one two three okay so from line three to line five so three two sorry 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 three two five okay from line three to line five copy and paste it after line seven so one two three it will copy from here three two five three four five it will copy these three lines and it will put it where one two three four five six seven after seven and press enter oh so it took it three lines and it put it in here okay fine very good what if I want to undo? Yes. What if I want, for example, to delete from line 1 to line 3? From line 1 to line 3? Yeah. Go to last line mode. And 1, 2, 3. Okay. This is line from line 1 to line 3. And I want to delete just D and enter. Ah, it deleted from 1, 2, 3. Undo. It bring them back again. This is uh, another way to delete and copy. Now, I want to talk a bit about the last line mode. Okay, uh, last line mode actually, when you press W, that means save. Enter, it will save. Okay. Uh, what if I press, for example, 
if I want to save as. From here, you can save as. Okay. For example, this file is in home. Okay. I want to save it somewhere else. How can I do it? I can write the following. I can write W and I will save it in root and desktop. Desktop of the root. But be careful because actually D has to be capital. I'm sorry. This is root. Has to be capital. Oh my god. Desktop. So, in this case, actually, it will save as, but it will save as with another, let's say, for example, another, another, another name. And enter. Say it's saved there. So, if I go there, now, if, for example, I want to, okay, I want to quit for B, and I want to go to ls root and this desktop enter i'll find it saved here if i want to open it okay you can use for time being you can use cat or you can use v v root desktop and work one work one enter it you will find the same thing so we save this file as okay now I want to quit again. Q. Now, if you, for example, you want force Q or force W. W sometimes, okay, sometimes you are, uh, this file is created by another user and you want to, you are in the root user. So let's say, for example, Tom. He created that file, and he he he's the one is the only uh, having the privilege to that file. If you are in the root, you can do something. If you want to save or edit on this file, if, and you are a root, you can do force write or force save or force quit or force uh, write and 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 quit. So force write. You are using exclamation mark after the right and enter what about wq so again i will wq and exclamation mark so right and quit force right and quit it will force right and quit <clears throat> if i want to open again okay what if for example now i want to check the numbers of the lights okay or I want to show the the number of the lines. There's something called set. Set what? Set um, set number. Set uh, set in you. Set in you. Enter. Set in you. It will give numbers to the lines to show you exactly how many lines you have. What if I want to? I want to go back to default, set no number, no, and you enter, it will go to the default again, okay? What if I want to ignore, ha, ah, here, people who want to, I, as I, I give it, I give it to you as a task, you remember guys, when I asked you to search for a word and I wanted the program to ignore the capital S, or the capital letters of the sensitive you can say set and no no i see no case sensitive enter if you search now for for example second and in in in, in, in okay Uh, I'm sorry, ignore case sensitive in search. So set, um, set IC, enter. And I want to search now for second. 
Okay, but I want to know. Oh, okay, like this. Second, enter, enter, enter. Ah, now it came. <clears throat> I I will tell you why. If you go top, because as, as we said that if you search like from top to down, second for the slash is search from top to down to bottom. Ah, now it became uh, searching without focusing on the case instead of right or wrong. So because in the beginning when I did it, I was I was here, I was down. So it will it was searching from up from here till to down from till from from this point up to down. That's why it was ignoring the first one. But when I went to pro the prompt to the beginning, okay, and now it's it doesn't care about the case in series, so it can it can search. What if I want to set no IC? No IC means sorry. No IC means that uh, now again it 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 make it default. It make it case sensitive. Okay. Now if I search again for second, it will not give me the first second. It will it will give me directly to the small letter second. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Sorry. Okay. That was the last line mode. The last line mode. Um, there are uh, some files, and these files actually are very important. Okay. Um, I want you to to know exactly what these files do, or or what 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 these files contains. Okay, but you know what? I will do it in the next video. Thank, th thank you for watching and see you next video. Yeah. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we continue talking about text files. Actually, you know, um, in this tutorial, I will uh, use Vim tool. Okay. What is Vim? Vim is like exactly like VI, but it's you can say that it is not available on all of the Linux, and it's giving a colorful uh, uh, results. When you open any file, text file using Vim, it's gonna give you a colorful text. That is Vim, and um, at the same time, also I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, more. I will talk about head. Okay, I will talk about what else? I will talk about tail. I'll talk about so more head, tail, and I will talk about find. If you want to find something, <coughs> if you want to find a file. Okay. This is actually, uh, these are the subjects that, that I'm gonna handle in this uh, tutorial. But before we go to this, I, some of the people, they asked me to repeat again the, the, sta the states or the uh, uh, in, in V, actually the, uh, the three status of V or the three states, okay. The th three modes. Uh, sorry, um, in V, as we said, that we already have three modes, right? Okay. And we said that. Okay, let's draw like this the modes again. I will, for example, the first mode, and uh, it was the default one. It was the command, right? Command mode. <laughs> the second one was the edit mode, right? And the third one was what was the last line mode. Last line mode. Okay. I I draw it, but may maybe the, the 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 last one, the last one, or the last draw that I did, the the last drawing that that I did was a little bit confusing, so I'm repeating it again. So here. Let's say you want to go from command, command 
mode to edit mode. What you are gonna do? Okay, very good. In this case, you will write I or A append or O new line. Okay, this is actually to go from <coughs> this is to go from a uh, command line to edit mode. Okay, what if I want to go back to command? How can I do it? Okay, if you want to go back, okay, very easy. If you want to go back, I want to choose, yeah, this one. Okay, if you want, if you want to go back, you will skip. Okay, in order to go back to common mode. Now we know that first two modes, how to f go from command to edit. Now I want to go from command, common mode to last line mode, and from last line mode to common mode. Okay, and from last line mode to edit mode, and from edit mode to last line mode. Now how can I do it? Okay, very good. Now I'm in the common mode. I want to go to last line mode. Okay. Let's use this, 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 and this. <clears throat> Here, you are in the common mode and you want to go to last line mode. Okay, you will column. You will use this column. Okay. But if I am in last mode, I want to go to <coughs> Command mode, what I'm, what I'm going to do, ESC, skip. Okay, what if I am, if I am in last line mode, I want to go to edit mode. Okay, this is very simple. You will write I, A, O. Okay, but if I'm in edit and I want to go to last line mode, okay, column, use column. This is exactly the way how you go from the, the different modes of VI. Okay, that's very, very simple. Now I will go to Linux. I will log in and I will show you Vim. VIM is another tool. It's like V. Okay, but it's colorful. So let's open any uh, file. I'll open this file, EDC, bus, WD. This actually, uh, the file that has <coughs> the usernames. Before, Hawaii, yeah, it has the username without the password. But why the name is password? Because in the old versions of Linux, okay, the password was saved here. Passwords were saved here. But right now, they took it, the password, in a different place, and they hashed it in a different file, and they kept only the usernames here. So oh, you will you will notice that the old usernames are here. <coughs> you can use the arrow to go up and down. Same like V, exactly the same. Okay, if you want to edit, you will press in, in I to insert, escape to go to the, that mode, the command mode. If you want to go to the last uh, line mode, uh, colon and so on, okay? <clears throat> Very good. This is for the, the, the Vim. Um, what if I want to quit? Okay, just last line mode, then Q, enter, you quit. In here, let's say that I want to use, for example, more. More. Okay, and etc. Buzzword. Here, actually, it will start show you page by page. So if you open more, more will show you the content of the file, but it will, it will, um, it will view it or it will show it page by page. So if you press enter, the second page, the third page, and it will go out. Okay. Just press the space. Okay. What if I want to use something called head? Head will show me the first. 10 lines of the file. So, here is see again. Bastard. Okay, enter. It will 
Show me the first 10 lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What is this? <laughs> I will use it again. Head. Let me clear. I will use head. Yeah, here you see. It will show you the content of the uh, file. 10 lines, yeah. Yeah, now it's correct. It showed me the 10 lines, the first 10 lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. But if I want to make it show me the 5 lines only. 5 lines only. Okay. 5 lines only. You will press 5. It will show you the first 5. So here. Yeah. Again, you want it to show you the first line, sorry, so dash 5, dash minus 5, enter, it will show you the first five lines. Okay, what if I want to see the last? Now there is another tool called tail. Tail, tail, and the file etc. etc and password. Enter. It will give me the last ten lines. What if I want to see the last five minus five? It will show the last five lines. What if I want to see? Or I want to find something. I want to find, let's say, name. Okay, I want to find a file. For example, work one. Work one. I want to search for a file, uh, and the name of this file is work one. It will find work one everywhere. Okay, and it will give me because there is work one in data work one here work one here okay <coughs> this is to find a file by its name okay thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome this tour we are going to talk about redirection redirection actually is a very good uh, uh, thing that you're going to use actually when for example, if you want to uh, type a command and you most of the commands actually is, is the output of the command is coming on the screen. But, I, but there is something called redirection. So if you, for example, if you have the output of one of the commands, this output is huge output. And in it, you don't want it to be coming out or to be shown on the screen you can redirect it to a file to a certain file and you later you can see this file the content of this file or you can type a script for example if you want to do a script and this script actually is giving a lot of output you can inside of this script you can redirect this output in another file so you can go back to these files later and 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 look to it so uh, let's see exactly how redirection is working. Let's say that I want to type, first of all, I want ls to, find, to see exactly what the file is there. I want to delete all these things as we learned before. RM in order to be able to remove the files. I want to remove, for example, anything to start with file and and with anything and at the same time that uh, let's see exactly to work or no uh, okay so see you guys i will not delete okay again ls i didn't i didn't delete it no now i want to use dash r dash f dash r okay space dash f and dash r enter now it deleted everything so ls again now we deleted the files 
and data existing in here or I, which I created before here. Now I want to clear. Now I want to see redirection, how it works. See, let's say, for example, I want to type a command called date. Now the output is coming here on, on the screen. What if I want this one is not uh, giving me the result here. I want to redirect somewhere else. For example, if I write date and um, this sign is greater than, greater than, let's say the file name file one, for example. Okay, what happened here? So if you type ls, you will find that it gives the result of the output of the line of the command in here, in this file. If you catch and by the way, cat also is a tool we are using actually to <coughs> see the content of the file. So file cat file one, enter, you will see that it saved the date and time side of that file. Now, what I want to do else is I want to, let's say, instead of date, I want to write, for example, host name. Okay, host name. And I will write this greater than and the same file, same file, file one and file one and enter. What happened here if I cat this file, file one? It, what it happened actually, it overrides. What happened? It overrides host name of this file, local host dot local domain. Actually, this is the name of the, the machine that I'm working right now. This is the name of the machine that I am using right now. Actually, now it's override. So, but uh, most of the time you want to append, you don't want to override. How can you do it? So date, what the last one we did, host name. So, okay, I will write date then and greater than two times then the name of the file, file one, enter. And I will cat the file again to see exactly what happened. What happened here? Actually, it gave me the name of uh, the first result of the first command, host name. It gave me the host name. Then it gave me the output of the second uh, command, which is date. So if you want to redirect the output of any command, you will use greater than. And if you want this not to override on the existing one you will use greater than two times okay to append the result to that file that you created and it will not delete the content of the file so you have to be careful when you use this redirection thank you for watching and see you next video hello oh, welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about local users and groups yeah Actually, local users and groups, um, in order to be able to log into the, to any system, you need to have a username and password. Very good. In Linux, actually, what you need actually for the user? What you need for the user? You need a username. User name. What else I need for the user? I need a password. Password. And I need a home directory. Home directory. What is this home directory? Is the profile. Profile. Desktop, download folder, desktop uh, document folder, and so on. Profile. Okay. What I need else, or what else I need, is the user ID. User, user ID. And user ID should be unique. Should be unique number. Okay. These are things that I need for the user to be created or to be exist on Linux. Okay, so let's go to Linux and see if we have any user here. There is a command called id. id, if you type it, it will give you what? It will give you the user id of the current user. Let's, uh, for example, let's say that I'm, I'm using root as a user. So if I type id, it will give me the details of the root user. Now, this is the user id, zero. 
and the username, the user ID zero, and the group. Yeah, we should. It should. It should. It should have a group also. It should belong to a group. So this is I forgot to write. It needs group. Group. Okay. It needs group. Here is the group. Group zero. Root, context, and other details. This is the most important details, the ID and the group and so on. Okay, very good. Let's say that I have another, uh, I have another users. How can I know that I have another user on the system or I want to list all the users on the system? Inside of, you can write, for example, Vim and for the slash edc for the slash password enter you will find in here a user called walid okay this is username actually these all of these are users but this users is for the system but here down this is user i created before okay this user has like this one, if you go up, here, okay, this, this is the user ID, uh, so uh, the user ID, which 1000, and this is the username, and this is the directory home folder for Walid, okay, and this is the bash, the shell. Also, for the user, you need the shell. So, shell is very important. Okay, whether it's bash or whatever uh, available for the user. So, for the user, we need the username, we need the password, we need the home directory, which is the profile, the user, the user ID, the group, and the shell. Very good. If I come here, okay, I quit, or I quit like this, quit. Then I will type this ID Walid. It will give me the details of Walid. The user ID, the group ID of Walid, and the groups where Walid belong to. So the group name. And actually, as you see here, Walid is having is a member in two groups, real group and Walid group. So these are the groups where will it belong to and this is the id of the group this is actually the id of what it himself very good so this is at the beginning you want to in, in order to be able to create group okay what i want to for example i want to know what is the shell the type of the shell that i am using right now i'm using Currently, I am using root as a username. I want to know which shell I'm using right now because it's possible to change the shell for any user from bash to ksh or csh or whatever uh, uh, shell, okay? So as we said before, echo dollar sign and she double l, this is the shell. The type of the shell that I'm using right now is Jesus Bash. Okay. Born again shell. Okay. And now let's do something else, which is, for example, going to shadow file. Okay. What is shadow file? See, I will clear and I will open the shadow file. Just V and etc sorry it is etc and shadow what it does file is, is included is including it is including the password of every and each user in your system and it's it's hashed like this as you see this is the password of what it okay it's hashed fine so this is another important file for the related to the users okay 
The first one we took is password p p pass double d in etc and the second one is shadow in etc also okay this is for shadow what about let's say <clears throat> i want to create a user right now okay so i quit from this and i want to create a username in order to be able to create a user you type user add okay and in here you will for example the user itself the username okay let's create you sales one for example so user add and sales one enter now i created a user called sales one what is if i want to change the password for user for sales one i will write password pass wd and i will write for example the name of the user and let's say pass one two three enter this is actually only one username may be specified so okay now this is let's say i want to come here go to root logout yeah i want to log out and not listed and i will use sales one enter pass one two three sorry password authentication <coughs> didn't work p a double s one two three aha uh -huh. so let's go back i will cancel i will go to root again I will log in. What I'm going to do right now is open the shell again and in here what I what I will do I will say id sales1. Here is saying that this is the user id of sales. This is the group id of sales and this is the group name of sales sales one so once you create a create a user okay the user the group by by default or automatically will be created as well and it it's gonna take the same name of the user okay so now let's go back to the password why i'm not able to To change the password of again password sales one enter it will ask me for the new password now i will create a new password p a b a double s one two three for example it will ask retype it it say it's bad bad password because it's simple password the password is shorter than eight characters all right no problem i use i'll use it one two three now you can log in using the sales one okay if you go to let's say vim and i will go to edc and i will go to password and enter what will what you are going to see here is the new user that we create sales one and this is the ID of sales one and this is as we said that this is the direct the home directory of sales one and this is actually the bash is using patch okay let's quit from here I want to modify the user now I created it I want to modify it yes I can change the patch I can change the user ID I can change the, the uh, group id i can change everything to the user in order to be able to modify the user you will use this command user modify or user mod okay user mod okay dash s dash is you can change the bash for it for the user so instead of for example using uh, bash you will change the shell so dash s means shell 
you can change the shell. And instead of bash, you can change it to something else. Okay. Yeah. Let's say in here, um, I'll use like B I N. Then here, see, I can use what C S H. For example, KSH, let's use KSH and see, for sales one, enter. Now, again, if I type ID and sales one, enter, uh-huh, this is the user ID, the group ID. Now, I want to know the type of the patch, the type of the shell that sales one is using. How can I know it? Okay. How can I know it? Very good. When you log into sales one, okay, if I let's try to log out, I will log out, okay, and I will use sales one again, enter, and I will write P A W S one two three the password. I logged in. Sales one, the AWS one, two, three. It looks like a bug. I don't know why it's not working. Sales one is the username. Next password. PA. Okay, so let's you let's go back, cancel, not listed. I will go to root again, and I will write the password for the root. Okay, I open this one. Then in here, actually, control. I will ID sales one and i will write for example vm vim etc and password enter here it will tell me that he is using ksh instead of patch okay this user guys i will check why it's not able to log in by the way uh, but at the temporarily I am now showing you how you change the binary, uh, sorry, how you change the bash into KSH, okay, instead of uh, bash. Now it's KSH. Okay. I will quit. So I changed the bash. Okay. Let me clear this. I want to change what else? I want to change the user ID, for example. So I changed the, the show. I want to change the user show the user id so user user mod and the name of the user sales one so uh, user modify sales one but before sales one you want to for example change the the id okay one more time let's go to id sales one enter the ID is 1001. Now I want to change this. I will type user mod, user mod, and dash u to the dash u. I will change it to 1003, for example, user, user one. Sorry, sorry, sales one. Okay, so sales one actually. I will change his ID from 1001 to 1003. Enter. Now ID the user again. ID sales one. Enter. You will find that it got a new ID. Yes. What if I want to put a comment? I want to put a comment in here, for example. Um, 
like for example I will modify user modify and dash C which is comment and I will type in here for example sales manager this user is sales manager for example for for sales one enter now if you go to the file which is pass WD and you go down in here here actually the comment but it's not coming uh, completely this manager okay sales manager oh yeah sales manager now this is a comment sales manager okay okay let's quit sales manager so this is also the comment so i changed the bash uh, the shell okay from bash to something else by using minus s i changed the user id by using minus u i changed the comment using minus c now um if you go to uh for example let's use the following okay there is a way to write su then minus su minus let's say sales one or space sales one enter what is this fail to execute no such file or directory okay so ksh is not installed or it's not available in this case that's why it was not able to log in so i will return it back let's return that back so what i'm going to do user modify dash s i will change again to binary and i will use bash oh sorry for sales one now i can do the following yes you dash and sales one now if you notice here in the prompt that i am using currently i'm using sales one instead of root now i logged into the system without logout from here and login again i logged in using su dash a minus using uh su minus then the username it will log me log in because i am the root it didn't request me a password so the root is able to log in with any other users but when you go back su dash root it will ask you for the password one okay now you again went back to the root so that the current user is the root okay this is for login okay su minus and the user id um now okay you can modify you can modif modify the login name yes instead of using for example the login name sales one you can use different name okay yeah you can use instead of sales one you can use tom for example so how can i change it so user mod dash l dash l means login okay dash l i will change it to tom instead of sales one enter what happened here if i type id sales one enter the user id is this what happened uh-huh user sales one is currently used by process Ah, because the process it's working still running so I can kill the process uh, kill mm, copy paste and now let's change again it's currently used by process mm, okay what can we do in this case in order to be able to uh, okay kill and the signal sh 
actually what we can do actually is uh, okay clear what I'm gonna do is I will create another user user add I will call it for example sales to sales to okay sales to I want to ID sales to sales to it say that this is actually the ID and of the sales to and uh, this is a group and so on uh, let's change now the login for sales to so user mod dash l and i will say or I give it tom as a name sales to enter now id sales to there is no sales to but there is tom exactly okay let's clear now it's clear now i want you to uh, to take into consideration that there is the user id okay there is a range and this range is preserved from 1 to 999 so from 1 to 999 actually is this is reserved for this id numbers is reserved for Reserve it for what? Reserve it for surface users or the local uh, the users for the surfaces. Like we see here, if you write them and the file itself where the users exists, etc. And pass wd enter these IDs. Okay, uh, which is blue nine 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 or uh, smaller than 999 is all reserved for that surface or for the system users so the, as you see here the first user we created it took 1000 1000 1, as a id okay <clears throat> very good okay i'll end the video here and um, see you next video. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we continue to talk about users. Actually, um, what we did last uh, uh, video, we uh, create, sorry, we created, created user. We modify, we modify user. And in this video, we are going to delete user. Okay, let's go to Linux and see how we delete user. In here, I will, first of all, I will, I want to see the home directory of the users. LS and home directory. I'll find that there is a profile for file one it created a user called file one or this is a file one. Oh, sorry this is a, uh, a file not a direct uh, not a directory okay ls l for example who it will tell you that this is a file and this is a directory very good now i want to clear i want to type ls forward slash home very good now i am i am I am having okay sales one sales two and wait these are these are users okay existed on the system right very good what if I say for example ID and write sales two oh no such user no such user because we deleted if you remember last video we deleted it okay but when we deleted it still his home directory or his profile still exists in order to delete everything related to the user you can write the following user delete or user del dash r and you will delete for example sales one in this way in this case he's saying 
user sales one is currently used by persons again okay two it will say it's not exist right so <laughs> very good so i will create another one so user add user add i will add user or sales three and i will type ls for slash boom sales three is, is, is there right now now i want to delete user del sales one sales three enter oh my god i will i will add it one more time i will add it one more time it say the home directory already exists not copying any file from SQL directory into it file exists very good if you id sales 3 enter it will say that sales 3 is there what if i type ls and boom i'll find that he talk the same directory again okay very good okay now i want to delete user del sales 3 but i want to delete sales 3 with everything with his home directory and everything so i will type dash r sales 3 enter now ls for the slash home Ha, ah, cell 3 is not there. The, the directory, the home directory of cell 3, his profile is also deleted. So dash R is used in order to delete everything related to that user. Okay. Very good. That was for deleting the user. That was for deleting the user. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. This tutorial we are going to manage groups. Okay, so we finished users. We are we are going to talk about groups. Okay, so we'll manage groups. Okay, in order to be able to manage groups, okay, you need two things to do: list group and so three three things. By the way, list the groups, create the group, and delete the group. So very good but what is the purpose behind using groups in general okay the uh, the purpose uh, behind using groups is why i want to classify user or i want to add users in groups okay very good this is a very good question for two things for permission for permissions and for me for example now i have let's say i have a hundred users Okay, these hundred users, they have the same permission. Okay, you will add them inside one group and you will give the group the permission that the hundred users needs, right? Instead of going to the user individually, user by user and give him permission, you will add all of them, the hundred users inside one group and give the group the permission that you need. And the mail as well. Let's say that I want to send a podcast mail to group of users, to the users. I will add them one by one. No, I will also add them inside a group and I will send this mail to that group. That's at the beginning. Now, let's create group and let's say, let's see exactly how to create group and how to modify groups. Clear. Now let's say that um, ID sales one, for example, I have a username called sales one and his group ID or his group is sales one also, because I told you, as I told you, when you create any user, this by default, you create a group with the same name of the user. Okay. Uh, this is the user ID. Okay. This is the group ID and this is again the group name okay that or the groups that he belonged to um so he is a, a member in sales one group okay 
Now, I want to add, uh, I want to add or create group. Okay. Or first of all, I want to show you um, Vim this file erc and group enter this r or this file includes all the groups in on the system okay if you go down here you will find sales one will lead and sales two, sales one and sales two these groups is the groups groups of users that you created okay i'll quit from this file okay now I want to create group. In order to be able to create group, you will use this command group add. And let's add, for example, sales. I will add IT. I will add HR. So I have three groups right now. I have three groups right now. I created through three groups. I added three groups. Okay, if you again, Vim, and you go to ETC group enter and go just go down you will find that you created sales it and hr okay how can i i created the group how can i modify the group okay in order to be able to modify the group okay very good so you can do the following group Oh, sorry, group add, or group mod, mod, group mod, and dash g, for example. Let's say that uh, sales one group here is taking this, for example, this ID. I want to change this ID to, for example, for example, 009, for example, okay? um to sales one enter now again i will write id sales one enter i'll find that the group id changed so now i modified the group id okay i modified the group id um uh, now the very important thing how can i change the group for any user Okay, how can I change the user the group for any uh, one of user? Okay, uh, I will add a user, for example, user called IT one, for example. Now I added a user called IT. I will add a user called IT one. Okay, and enter, and I will write ID IT one. In this case, actually, you will find that I created it with this ID, this the username, and this is a group ID, okay, 1010. This is a group name, and this is these are the groups that he belonged to, or uh, this user is group is member in this group. Okay, now I want to change this group for this user. I want to make him. A belong or member I want to make him a member in another group how can I do this hmm okay I have different options okay how can I do it okay I will write user modify dash G okay because I will change that group for it for this user okay I'll add him in what you know what I will add another let's say user Sorry, group, uh, group at um, managers. And now I will take this user, I will say user modify dash G. Now I want to change IT1 group, the user IT1. I want to change the main group of him to what? I want to change it to managers instead of IT1. Again, if you write ID IT1, you will find that he's a member in this group, IT1. Now I want to change it. I want to make him a, a member in another group. How can I do it? 
Okay, so I will write the following. User mode, user mode, okay, dash G, because I will change the group. I'll write managers. This is a new group for IT1. Enter. What happened now if I write ID IT1, enter, I'll find that he we replaced, we took him from IT1 and we put him a member in managers. Okay. I want to return him back. I want to return him back to IT1. Very simple. I will write the same command. IT1. Enter. Now ID of IT1. I'll find him. We return it back to IT1. What if I want to make a secondary group for him? I, I want to make him a member in a secondary group. Let's try this. So user mode dash g capital okay and i will let's say put him in a managers in managers dash g user mode i will write user mode dash capital g okay I will write managers and IT1. Enter. What happened here? Let's say ID, IT1. Enter. What happened here? He became member in these two groups, IT1 and managers. Right? Exactly. Okay. What if I want to do the following i will write user mod very good then minus a minus capital g and let's say that i will write hr or yeah uh, let's write sales okay and it1 what will happen here enter then id it1 he became member in three groups it1 sales and managers okay he became member in three groups okay what if i want to see now them etc groups oh sorry oh wait group enter now you will find here manager it hr sales it hr it1 managers all these are new groups that we create okay quit so this user became a member in different groups right now okay what if i want to delete group what if i want to delete group how can i delete the group okay or one more time i will open this okay if you come in here okay you will find different groups right very good okay I'll, I'll quit from here I'll quit from here now what I want to do I want to delete group so what I'm gonna do is write group so let me clear this I will group deal group deal and let's say I want to for example delete managers notice what will happen aha uh -huh. group deal managers deleted so you will write id and it1 enter who oh, we deleted managers so he this user this group is no longer exists okay what if i want to again delete sales oh if i 
the IT one. Now he became an IT one only. What if I want to delete IT one? Delete IT one. Enter. Aha! You cannot remove IT one because this is the primary group of the user. So you want to change, in this case actually you want to change his group in order to be able to delete this group. Okay, how can I do this? There is a, there is a way, uh, you can for example Veeam, um, and you can go to EDC, and you can to go to password, pass WD, where the user exists. And IT, you will go to his group. Here, okay. You will go to, sorry, you will go to his group here, okay. I will press I. I will, for example, delete this group. I will make him a a a member in, for example, let's say, I will him I will let him p. A, a member in IT or let's say I'll make him a member in sales and now uh, skip once I skip okay I'll go to last line mood and I will write and quit now if I say ID IT1 ah see it didn't change. Why? It didn't change. Because actually, this way need to reboot the system. Okay? That needs to reboot the system. Because actually, now this one became in the runtime. Or, you know what? Let's try now to delete group. Del IT one still so when you report the group the, the the when you report the system okay they uh this is in the runtime but the other one actually sorry uh, it, it the, the other one the modification that we did it will take take over so let's go to the same file again or i want to see etc and group i want to see the groups we have group called sales or no oh sales is not there then why we okay because sales is not there okay sorry i will quit from here and i will go again to password and i will write I and I will go zero sales I'll make him a member in I'll make him a member in sales uh, let's say sales 2 okay and escape and we'll W and the Q now id it1 still there okay so if i reboot it okay you guys you know what okay reboot the system it will report let's see exactly it will take the new or no now uh, it takes some time to boot okay let's see exactly what will happen I'll go to boot and I will see.
Now I'll go to here. I'll go to, for example, let's say ID IT1. Oh, it didn't change yet. So, okay. Group del IT1. Okay, we can do something else, guys. We can say we can make it like this group group modify dash G or we'll make him for example sales two uh, IT one user one ah it's a invalid group ID so I think sales2 is not there also, right? Okay, so let's go to Veeam and we'll open etc. We'll open group. Let's see. Sales2 is still there. We have sales2. Okay. Uh huh. I'm sorry. We should write user mod, not group mod. User mod dash g. We put him in sales two, it one. Enter. Now I want say group del it one. Now I deleted this group. If I id IT1, I'll find him, he is in sales 2. Okay. Now I will clear. I will. Um, what else you want to do here? We deleted the group. Okay. But be careful when the group become a, a primary of any user, you will not be able to delete it until you change the group for that user. Okay. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Hello, welcome. This tutorial we continue to talk about groups. But uh, here is a little bit different scenario, by the way. What I want you to know is let's say, for example, I will clear this and I will create, uh, create a user. Okay. So I will add user called, for example, let's say Sara. Okay, and I will change the password for Sara. And I'll give, for example, SR123. SR123. Now I have this one username called Sara and the password. Now what I want to do, actually, I want to, let's say, su dash Sara. I'm sorry. What happened here? Now I became using this user. Okay. I will clear. Sorry, clear. And I will do the following. I will write f disk. Okay. And if this what if this, I will try to delete. Uh, I will try to do uh, something which is not related to my privilege, or it's higher. It require higher privilege. Dev and um, for example. Let's say that is is the is R zero for example. I want to do this. Okay, I want to format a a format a a the uh, the file format disk like this. What what will happen now? I am in a I'm using Sara. 
k which is normal user it doesn't have a root privilege and i want to use a a command which is related to root okay which needs higher privilege i will enter what will happen here change will remain in memory only until you decide to write them what will happen here if this cannot open because permission denied okay what if i'm a user and i know i want to play around i want to do something which is actually not good what will happen what linux will will um response to this how 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 the linux will respond to this let's see the behavior let's see the behavior of linux in this case i will write sudo for example f disk f disk and i will write the same sr0 enter what will happen here it will require the password of Sara. Okay, Linux is saying now you are trying to use root. Now to, you are trying to use the root uh, privilege in order to, uh, for example, format the disk. Oh my God. So Linux will ask you the password. Okay, SR123, for example. What happened? Aha, uh -huh, sorry, is not in the Zodo file. This incident will be reported. So the Linux will keep him, okay, it will seduce him to, to do whatever he wants and it will log it in the security log. It will put as a security log. It violate, violates, actually, now the user is violating actually the rules. He's trying to do something, he's trying to format something which is not in his privilege using the root privilege so the linux will record it very good in this case how can i resolve this how can i put sara for example as a root or in a sudo or uh, let her has a privilege of root okay very good in this case actually i have a group called wheel okay i will make it a group a member in uh a group called wheel I will write ID uh, Sara now it say that it's a member in Sara now I want to do what user modify dash dash a G okay to Sarah. Now I want to put it as a secondary group to it. Okay, so wheel and write Sarah. Enter. What happened? So again, ID Sarah. What happened here? Okay, again, user mod dash capital G for example uh, put it in wheel group uh, for Sara it say that can oh, okay but this actually I cannot do it like this why because I'm still in Sara I have to go back is you dash root I have to be in the root right and ask for the password okay now I want to put it so I will write user I will write user mod I'll modify Sarah I'll put her member in group wheel okay enter now ID Sarah enter now it became member in Sarah and wheel now if I write sudo Sorry, I will su dash Sara enter um, right sudo sudo if disk if disk div enter it will ask the password one two three or sr one two three what say cannot open the read only file 
system still doesn't have permission to do this but what happened okay it doesn't have, this is a different case different thing now at the very beginning it didn't record it in a security now if you remember the first case it said that this will be recorded but here no because it became it having the same privilege of the of the root users the system here or linux didn't say that a uh, you are violating the rules and we will record it it says the read only file system if i give it permission to this file okay it will or she will become able to format this disk okay so now you have to differentiate between the two error messages okay now what we did is successfully done we were able to add her to give her the root uh, or added adding her to the servers or add, uh, became uh, having the same root privileges in order to do the root um, uh, commands but she doesn't have privileges okay thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about basic file permissions what are the permissions okay let's talk it like this r is um read write w is write and x is execute okay so we have three types of permissions three types of permissions read write execute read is to read the file w is to write on the file to modify let's say for example there is a line you want to delete it or you want to add a line you want to delete word you would add a word so you can copy you can uh, uh, delete this is, this is the writing what about x x is you it's like for example a script you want to execute something you want to install a file you want to uh, execute that file to to let it run to run the file so this is the execution permission but okay this is rwx these are the types of permissions but at the same time we have something called a when you create any file let's say that you are going to create file one okay this file will have three main things for the permission okay two and three <clears throat> okay when you type ls ls dash l uh, file one you will find the following okay you will find the following read write maybe uh, sorry read write and execute and here read write execute and here <coughs> read write execute what is this you will find that when you type alias dash l file one you will find that read write x read write x read write x is repeated three times but you may sometimes you may it's like it you you can find it like this rw then this one will be like um r uh, minus minus and here you may find it also r minus minus what does that mean here rw uh, here is the user the permission of the user that the user that create created that file and here is the group 
the group where the user plonk or the, the group of the user that created the file and here something called others okay other use other user on the system okay so let's go to Linux and see exactly how it looked like okay <laughs> I will clear in here now go to root yes now I want to create a file let's create a file called PWD where I am let's go to or from here for example you can create that boom Um, let's say file one. Mm. Or you know what? Root desktop mm. file one mm. ls dash l root desktop oh my god you will find that this is file one that I created okay and you will find that read uh, this first of all this minus is that means it's a file not a directory. If it's directly, you will find D here. Very good. You will find read, write, execute. There is no execute. So the user, which is the user is root, who created it, created this file. He has read, write, and his group has read only, and other people has read only. Okay? There is no write, there is no execution in this case. Okay? So, if I go to root and I go to desktop and I write ls, I'll find these three files, ls-l, the same result. I will clear. Let's say that I want to give a permission to specific user or I give permission to more permission to the people, to the groups, to anything. Okay, how can I do it? There is a way. Okay, there is a way to to do that, called symbolic mode. How can I do it? Like this, change mode, and let's say that the user, the owner user, for example, which is root to that file, uh, who created that file. I will write equal or plus. And he doesn't have execute, right? So I will add execute permission to him, and I will write the file the file name, okay, which is file one, enter. Now ls-l to file one, what will happen, you will find that the user which is user is root he got execute what if i want to remove the execute from him again i will write here i will write here minus okay enter and again ls we remove the execution again from user root okay so this is a simple symbolic way what if i want for example to the group i want to add something to the group okay i will write change change mood and group equal let's say i want to give it right to file one enter and ls file one 
enter oh ls dash l now <clears throat> what happened in here uh-huh what happened is this is the user this is the group this is the others what i did here i actually i removed the read permission and i give the user a write permission but what if i uh, i said equal equal that, that's why equal equal that's this is what equal doing what equal doing actually is to remove the permissions and give it exactly i want him to be exactly equal to this specific value write only what if i want to add read to it in this case you have to put in this case you have to put plus and ls dash l file one you will find that still using read write okay what ah oh, okay i put w oh my god i have to put r so now now it became what read write okay instead of write only it became read write for the group okay what if i want to reset it again or you return it back again you will type the same command and you will write minus enter or i want it to become like this or i want it to become like this equal read only okay now ls dash l file one enter now we return it back okay this for the group so we use minus we 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 use uh, plus we use equal okay exactly so change modification now we, i want you guys to create files and uh, change the permissions on that files using the simple symbolic way okay yeah what about directory <clears throat> what about directory is there any execution in directory yes there is if you want to uh, delete the directory so you need execute permission right Let, let's see let's see okay so i will create so what i'm going to do actually here i will create a directory called let's write ls okay i'll create directory mk dire um mk dire i'm i'm gonna call it data one for example ls dash l enter you will find that data read write execution for this is actually a directory okay and this is read write execution for root and read for the group and read execute for the group and read execute for others all right very good now i want to create a file inside of it touch i will create a file called for example um work 10 inside of data one if i ls dash l data one or there's no okay again 
I'm sorry, guys. I have it. I have to make it like this. Touch. You have to deal with touch in this way. Sorry. I will touch uh, work tin. Work tin. Now ls dash o data one. Yes. We created a file called work tin inside of data. Hmm. You notice here that the file it doesn't take the same permissions of data. What if on the data itself I change some um, some change some permissions? Let's say change mode for the directory. Let's for example, but first what I'm gonna do l or let me clear here and um, change mode dash. Uh, Okay, ls dash l to data one. <clears throat> Here, this is for data one or ls dash l enter. For data one, there's rxw, r, um, rx, and rx. Now, I want to change for data. So, what I'm gonna do actually is, I will do the following: change modification, and I will type this: a equal to. Um, R W X to data. Enter. What happened here? Let's type ls dash l and see. Now everyone has now everyone has read write execution. A means all. A means all. So I said all should have read write execute what about the file that inside data one so um, what i'm going to do is i'll go to inside data one and i will type ls dash l i'll find that it didn't inherit the permission of the directory okay very good cd go back okay i will remove I will remove dash f, for example, work 10 because there is another work 10. So ls is dash l. Now it's like this. You can change mode and you can say user minus, for example, let's say not user group minus w data and instead of group will say o so now ls dash l again we return everything back normal one again again okay this is called a, sim a symbolic way, a symbolic mode permission, okay? There is an octal mode. There is an octal mode, okay? And this is what I'm going to talk about in the next video. Thank you for watching and see you next video. All welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to continue talking about uh, permissions. Um, we already, uh, in the previous video, we had the symbolic uh, mode. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about octal mode. We are going to talk about octal mode. 
So what is octal mode and how can we use it? Okay, so let's start here. In order to understand that, you have to remember RWX means read, write, and execute. Okay. Um, but I will delete this. I will write, for example, binary. Okay. Binary. Binary number. What is the binary number I'm using right here? I will use, okay, and I will explain why I use this, okay? Let me do this figure, okay? And in here, I will write, for example, two, um, sorry, one, two, four. One, two, four. Very good. Down in here, actually, I will write the RWX and here. Okay. In order to give um, in order to give permission using the octal mode, actually you have to convert read write x into binary. How? Okay, so if anyone need the full permission, in this case actually you will it will be it's like you know binary system zero one zero one. Okay, so if you need to give someone the full permission, so you will give him full one 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 one. So all these uh, numbers okay will be one okay so I'm better want to make it like this um, four three um, sorry four two one for example yeah in here actually now <coughs> Let's say that um, I want to give a full permission using the binary number or uh, octal uh, mode in octal mode. In this case, actually, this will be one, one, one. Okay, that means what? One uh, plus two plus four. So this will be, for example, I'm going to make it bigger here. Okay, this will be, for example, 7. So when you give someone <coughs> 7, okay, that means you are giving him RWX, read, write, and execute. You understand this? So again, now RWX in binary or octal mode. What I'm going to do actually is, is I'm, I'm going to give the seven seven means the full permissions because seven is equal equal one 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 two four so equal seven so all the numbers will be one 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 it will be on it will not be off because in binary system there is on and off right on means one and off means zero okay so what if i give like seven 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 in this case what will happen that means seven is for the owner user so the owner user is going to have the full permission and the second seven is going to be for what is going to be for the group okay so the group also will have full permission and the and the last seven is going to be for others it's going to be full permissions as well so if you go down here how many uh, expectations here how many so if i write for example r uh, let's say R um, X for example. In this case, actually, how can I? How can I? Sorry. How can I? Um, actually, how can I calculate it? Actually, it's gonna be like one and zero one, right? One zero one exactly. So one zero one actually is gonna be equal what? Is going to be equal so one plus four it's going to be five it's going to be five right it's going to be five yes so if you give someone permission if you give someone five in this case actually it's going to have read and execute right okay what else if i give someone for example or only huh. in this case how can i Okay, it's gonna be like one zero zero. Yes. One and nothing. 
or one one zero zero. Okay. So one zero zero is gonna equal is gonna be equal what equal um four, right? So if you give four to someone, so that means he will be read only. He will have a read only. Okay. What if I give for example like this W X. In this case actually how can I do it? Okay, very good. It's gonna be like this. Zero zero and one one. In this case it's gonna be equal three. Right? So it would be uh, write and execute three. What if I like for example put here nothing and X only? In this case actually how can we calculate it? It's gonna be like zero 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 one and this will be equal what equal one right what about if i like this x is zero um, nothing but w only and nothing in this case it's gonna be like what yeah it will be like zero one zero zero one zero and this will be equal what it's gonna be equal two right yes these are the expectations right one two three four five six what ha, ha, um, we can have other expectation as well let's think okay what if for example r the x r nothing x r only w x and minus minus x yeah we can give him nothing right so it's gonna be like zero yeah it's gonna be like zero 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 means equal zero right means there is no permission means there is no permission okay what if for example um Actually, you know what? Actually, it starts with zero, one, two, four. Okay, like this. Very good. Because it's octal. Zero, one. Here, I have to put zero. Yeah. So these are the expectations, actually. So okay, this is very good. Ten now. So if I want to give someone full permission, so I'm gonna give him seven. Okay. And as we said. 777 seven, seven means 7 for the owner of the file, 7 for the group, and 7 for others. Okay, now let's actually do it uh, on Linux. How can I do it? Okay, so I'll go to Linux. I'll start, I'll open the terminal. And actually, what I'm going to do here is gonna be like this okay now I will check if I have files here like no so let's check where is PWD I'm in root I'll go to somewhere else like for example CD um, I'll go to home and I'll try to find any yeah I have a lot of files here very good like no not all the files it's only one file which is file one okay let's see ls dash l file one okay here there is read write and read and read this is and the owner is root very good now what's it, what what i will do is i will change the permission using that one that way octal way okay so how can i do it very good i'm gonna write change mod change mode and in here let's say for example i want to like you know um i want to give like seven seven five five seven five five or you know what i'm gonna give seven four four seven four four okay this right seven four four and the file name file one okay what will happen what will happen in this case 
what will happen in this case enter and again ls dash l and the file okay enter now what i did actually what i did if you come here you want to translate it so rwx which is seven i give full permission to the owner but i came to i came to the group and i gave it four if you go back here to our diagram so what is this yeah here for example i give four right i give four that means read and read only right so four means read only read only read only so i give 744 means full permission read only read only this is the way that i was explaining to you right now okay i have you have to be careful when for example let's for example do the same way but in here i will um remove this and i will keep seven only in this case actually how the linux will give the permission in this case <clears throat> okay you will expect that in this case actually everyone will take seven but no okay so let's enter and see exactly what will happen in this case so ls dash l file one enter you will find that you removed the permission from the owner you removed the permission from his group and you give full permission for for everyone so you have to be careful if you write it li like this what if you want to correct this you want to let's say you want to make the opposite you want to give the full permission to the owner of the user and the others will get, will take nothing so in this case you have to write it in this way okay let's enter right now and ls dash l the file now you made it the opposite way okay that was for octal mode thank you for watching and see you next video Oh, hello and welcome. This tutorial will continue to talk about permission. Okay, and uh, from the last video, okay, um, uh, I already um, talked about the file, but I forgot to talk about uh, the directory. So let's create a directory mkdir. Uh, I will call it data and ls. So I have a directory called data right here. Okay, very good. So I'll create file one inside of that and I'll create file two inside of that. So ls data. Oh my God, ls. Dash L data nothing so okay let's go to inside data okay create two files touch file one and touch file two so ls dash L or ls only okay so ls dash l okay now you will find that read write and read and read okay okay read write read 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 write read read okay so what i'm gonna do in here is i want to change mode and do dash capital R and I'm gonna give 755 for example well, let's make it like this 7 um, 4 4 okay 
but actually, you know, okay, 755. I'm gonna give 755 to on data. Okay. Directory. Oh, no such file or directory. Okay. So I have to CD and I come out and in here I'm gonna write the same command. Enter. What will happen in this case? Capital R or minus capital R that should give or it should um, give the files inside of the data same permission okay so let's say uh, let's check uh, ls minus l data yes what happened here it was like read only right so it was r r r w right and r and r now it became what r w x rx rx rwx rx rx because actually this is 755 five, right 755 five. yeah so minus r may, may means what actually make the files inherit the permissions of the uh, the directory itself so I want to check the directory permissions. If we go to data here, yes, it became same, right? Yeah, the files inside of data the permissions became same like the directory. So the files became like the, the directory. The files permissions became like the directory permission. Yeah, thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to continue talking about permissions, but now a little bit advanced. How? Let's say that I have like I have a file, okay, and this file actually okay. I have file and I have user. Let's say called HR, okay, or HR one. This is a user, okay, and the owner of this file let's say that the owner of this file is root okay okay and i have a user called hr1 and i have a group called for example sales okay inside of sales let's say that i have like sales1 as a user so um so this one will be user. He is a user. He will be a user. Okay. And this one is going to be a group. Okay. And inside of this group, actually, inside of this group, I have like sales one, sales one, sales two, sales three like this okay so what what i need actually right here what i'm gonna what i need actually here is i want to um give permission okay in this file okay i want to give permission to hr1 which is user specific user i want to give him like for full privilege full permission okay <clears throat> so hr in this case okay hr in this case actually belong to what belong to belong to what belong to others right but he belonged to others so hr1 he belonged to others in this case okay okay I want to give HR full permission like you know I want to give him like for example um, seven okay 
he will have seven so full permission read write read sorry Z. he is gonna have rwx so read write execute full permission but at the same time others I need them to have R only. Oh my god. It's very complicated now. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'll make it very simple. Now, again. So I have a file created by root. Okay. So I have a file created by user root. Okay. And there is another user called HR. And this guy has full permission to his file. Okay. So I need another guy called HR1. Uh, for example to have the full permission to that file okay but at the same time because this one is belong to others okay I don't need other to have the full permission mm. very good in this case we have what we call the access list what we call the access list ACL ACL okay ACL ACL is the access list is gonna give you the ability to write specific permissions to specific users okay very good how can I write how can I write it I use this command set f set f ACL set f ACL set f ACL set f ACL is the way you are using this is a command actually you are using to write access list and what if I want to list the access list I want to see the access list that I created you write set f ACL in this case actually you will see the access list that you created very good okay one more thing when you write ls-l okay uh, you will notice if there is a access list permission you will notice if you write ls dash l you will note that there is plus beside the file if there is access list uh, applied on it on that file so let's go to the practical way this is actually a theoretical explanation but when we uh, when we uh, practice this you will understand it very well so uh, yeah so i will look in here let me clear this and let's work this here there is file one okay or you know what yeah okay so let's see ls dash l file one file one okay so it's better to create another one okay i'll remove I have remove dash f then file okay enter I removed all files so ls and there's no files okay I'm gonna create a file so touch file for example I'll 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 draw I'll, I'll create a file I'll create a new file called for example file one I'll make it file one one one. Okay, enter. Now I have this file one one one. Okay, so ls dash l file one one one. What is this? Okay, this is a normal permission or the default permissions. The owner, the user owner, have read write, and the uh, group has r, and the uh, other have read so now let's see i'm gonna do what actually okay i will vim to see etc file and right here let's say shadow enter okay how many user yeah i have sara i have it1 i have tom so i have all this those people okay let's work on sara okay so what i'm gonna do here is to exit okay very good so now i have a user sara so sara um for this file 
it considered the others, right? Here, so she has read only. She has read only. So if you log in using, let's say, um, this here, minus, right, minus Sarah. What will happen here? I logged in using Sarah. Now I will try to do what? I will try to V D W D D first. Okay, I'm in Sarah home. Okay. Where did I create uh, I created in home, right? So if I C A D back and I'm in home right now and L S I'll find the file that created by file one 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 created by home. Now I want to, I have a read permission right now because I'm using Sara, read permission. What if I want to write inside of it? So if I, uh, let's say, I want to read, right? So I will write vi and file 111 enter and I will try to type insert. What happened here? He said press enter or type command to continue. Okay, so now I am able to insert or no? Ho ho! Yes, okay. Now I want to save what I did. So escape and I want write and enter. What is what is what you can see right, right now? Read only permission. So I have read only permission to that file. Very good. So I cannot save, right? Okay, very good. I'll escape again. Then I, what I'm gonna do is I quit. It say, okay, delete first, then quit. Okay, so in. In order to, and delete everything, then you should quit now. Okay. Sorry. You should, uh, sorry, you should quit now. I quit it. Very good. Now I'm able to quit, right? I didn't, I was not able to, to write in that file because actually I am using the server and the server doesn't have a write permission. Now I want to use the access list to give Sarah a, a write permission as well. So I'll go back. So su dash root i'll go to root and i will do let's check first where i am i'm in root so i will go to home i'm in home ls okay now file one so okay very good i will clear that let's now start do the access list very good so in order to write the access list, you write set f acl. Set f acl. This is at the beginning, and minus m. Then u, which is the user, and our user is Sara. What I want to do for Sara, I want to give her read, write, and let's say execute to what to file triple one then enter <coughs> okay very good now i want to ls <coughs> dash l file one 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 what what you're gonna see you will find here plus <coughs> beside of the permission plus that means that there is access list on it okay now so if you mm, Notice that the owner has read write, right? Others read, uh, sorry, the group has read write, execute. The others, sorry, not the others, the group read write, execute. And in here, there is read only, where, which is the other, where the Sarah located. Okay, <clears throat> very good. <clears throat> now what I'm do what I'm gonna do is I will use su dash sar again 
and enter. I'm in Sahara. Now I want to go to Siri. Uh, uh, I want to go to home. Then I will now open V and I will open what? I will open file triple one. I will start right, for example. I will insert. I am able to write on that file. Okay. And I will save. So W and the Q. Enter. Wow. Now cat that file one. Yes, I am able to write it. So I once I give permission using access list to Sora, okay, I'm able right now to to I'm able right now to write something on that file. Okay, let's go back to the root. Okay, to the root. Uh, let's go back to root and see here in the root actually i'm gonna see okay all right get f a c o enter oh get f a c o okay he will tell you that there is access list get f a s l okay there is an access list or you have to specify the file okay but I'm not in the same directory so I'll open home first then I will write git facl to file triple one enter aha uh -huh. so what happened here yes he will tell you that there is an access list and this access list this is a file name the owner is root the group is root and users taken rw user sara has rwx oh, so the root has rw and sara due to this access list she has rwx the group has r nothing nothing so and the mask is we will talk about mask okay rwx okay and others mm, okay so this is how you list the access list on the file uh, if there is any access list fulfilled on that file okay that's very good yes what if right now i want to joke with you about the mask what is mask actually but in this case i will go back to here let me delete this things okay what i'm gonna do actually is um i want to talk with you about mask 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 means what mask means it is a criteria criteria of what if let's say for example if mask is r only okay so now no one will take more than read on that file so mask is actually you can say that it is the maximum limit of the permission if mask is equal to rw that means you can give permissions up to rw what if the mask is rwx so you can give permissions up to rwx to anyone what if it is r only that means you cannot give maximum you cannot give to anyone permissions more than r okay so let's see okay um practically and you will understand more about mask <coughs> okay <clears throat> i'll go back to okay i'll go back to i'll go back to um linux okay and on the same file so if i i write ls dash l to our file which is file 11 and 11 what will happen you will find that see because the mask is rwx 
for that file so the group took rwx but what if i want to make the mask only rw so no one will be able to take more than rw okay okay so how can i do it so set if sl set if acl okay and space dash m and m means mask then i'm gonna give rw only okay to sorry to file driven one enter then again ls you will find that we removed that if you try to give others now if you are if you try to give others let's say i will try this i will try change mode and i will let's say oh i'm gonna give read sorry read write and execute to the file wall triple one what will happen ls <clears throat> It took the X. Okay. But let's go to get. Yeah, you you guys should understand that <clears throat> this way is overriding the access. So now if, for example, now I want to explain it to you. So now if let's say that if we have a file okay if we have a file right and we have this file has access list this file has permissions so how who will override to the other okay this i will let it to to you you have to search on it and let's for for example i make it as a task for you so for example i will um here there is a file okay and th on that file actually there there is um you can say there is let's say two things there is access list sl okay there is and there is mask and there is normal permission that group equal the one that the, I the last one I I did okay normal permission okay who will take over so let's say for for example if I made ACL to others to take or to the group to take RW only and here I said RWX to group who will take uh over okay think about it so let's go back here okay and what i'm gonna do here i talked about the mask okay and as i told you the mask will make a limitation to the permission okay <clears throat> no one can exceed this um right now um i want to type get uh get facl to the same file file triple one again what will happen here um the file is file triple one and the owner is root the group is root and the user take rw okay which is user uh, which is root the root take rw sara take rwx group take r group of the user mask is taken rw other take rwx okay very good so see if you notice here there is mask and there's other i want to just from you to what you're gonna do actually let's say for example um say uh, again i'll do the mask i'll I change the mask on that one i'll write like uh get f a c l 
and on that file uh, get fasl minus m and actually for the mask I'm gonna do it like this for the mask I'm gonna to take it mask uh, m mask and actually the mask on that file mask on that file okay we'll take read to file triple one enter um sorry okay so again again okay he's saying that get a PSL file I'm sorry, we should use set. Okay, very good. Now, again, I will write git fsco file1. Mask now is only read. Now, very good. If Sarah take R rwx and mask take r, in this case, if I go to Sarah again, what will happen? I will still able to write on the file r Sarah su minus Sarah and I will go to home directory and I will open I will open what? I'll open file triple one enter um okay I or O to, to open the new he say press enter type okay okay trying to type to type more, to type more and more, and now skip. Now I want to W and the Q. Enter. Ha ha. Read only. <laughs> so the mask is what? The mask is even if you give permission to anyone read, write, execute, the mask is gonna take over. Okay. Very good. Now you understand. Okay. So I want to go out right now. Force going force quit without saving. Okay. Very good. Now I will go back to root. Okay. And now I am in root. What I what you uh, can understand right now that git fsl is giving a specific permission to a specific users or a specific group so now i will teach you how to give it to the group uh, to the group as well okay let's say that i have a group of sales for example so how can i know that i have what what are the groups that we have um we can go to vm and etc and inside of etc there is file called what called group right you remember that if you want to know how many group or what the group that i have yeah these are the groups that i have hr it sales one sales two okay do we have like okay let's say hr for example okay i'll quit from here okay i have hr so what I want to do, I want to give HR group full permission on that file. Okay, full permission on that file. So what I'm going to do, git facl dash m and uh, dash m and group. Let's say HR. Okay, now I want to give HR read, write, execute. Or okay, or read write only, and I will write file triple one. File. Aha! Uh -huh. But first of all, where I am now? Ah, uh, I'm in a different place. So CD home, be in home. Then I, what I'm gonna do? Actually, I will write permission get if acl not get but set set if acl 
and I will give permission like okay dash f group called hr I'm gonna give hr read write okay read write and for file file triple one now get a fsl cl to file triple one aha uh -huh. <clears throat> so what happened here this is a file name this is the owner this is the group and users take this sorry take this <clears throat> and group take this and another group here called hr has this so i give a specific group specific permission i give a specific user specific permission okay that is the power of using access list by the way so thank you for watching and see you next video but my recommendation actually is to um, create files okay create two different users and give the, the one of the users permission to a specific user permission other than the owner user you will pick another user and give him uh, permission using the access list and you will create groups as well and you will pick one of the groups and give them another permission okay thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about managing ownership how can we uh, manage the ownership actually we have to uh, come on like for example ch change owner so uh, change on which is change owner and change group grp okay ch grp so change owner and change group actually as we agreed on that if you have a file okay if you have a file and this file let's say that file and the creator of the file is let's say uh, for example um, one of the users okay let's say for example hr1 mm, hr1 for example hr1 created that group uh, created that file so in this case actually he's gonna be the owner user and his group will be the uh, group or the owner the group owner of that file okay so what i'm what i need actually is to give another user the ownership of that to that file and give another group the ownership of that file so let's get it started and see exactly her sorry 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 <coughs> I will clear this and I want to show you how to do this actually I'm in home let's um, ls okay now I will delete well you, oh, you know let's create another file called search it's first bwd I'm in home I'm gonna create a file I'm gonna create a file called work one for example so touch work one okay and mk dire data one data one so i have file and a directory okay i'll go inside of data one and i will create touch uh, work one 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 okay now I go back oh sorry now BWD I'm in home ls I have this file work one okay okay so clear ls I have work one and I have data one which is having work Triple, uh, triple one okay very good now I want to write ls dash l work one enter now okay this is read write read read and this is the owner 
of that file he is the owner and the group of that the group that owns that this file okay very good now I want to change the owner so how can I do it change owner to that work one I'll make him more what for example Sarah I'll make Sarah owns this uh, work one enter now very good now ls again work one here the owner became what became Sarah and the group became still root okay so the owner became Sarah and the group became still root I want to ch change the group as well so change grp and I'll make for example the owner is group HR group for example HR and work one so again aha uh -huh. so the user became Sarah and the group became HR very good what about the what about data one which I created ls I have this data one so if I write ls dash l you will find data one here okay the owner is root and the group is root so I want to change clear what I'm gonna do change owner change owner of I'll make him for example Sarah again and this for data one enter so ls dash l again here the owner became Sarah and the group also change grp I'll make it uh, this time um, okay hr and what I'm going to do here uh, to work sorry, 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 to data one so ls dash l now data one the owner is Sarah and the group is hr very good very simple and very straightforward so what I need right now so what I need what I need right now is to check let's say ls dash l data one hmm. the files inside of the the files inside of data one is what is work triple one and the owner is root okay very good the owner is root so the files still under root owner so how can I for example the people who belong to HR group okay the owner the people who belong to HR group or to be the owner of the files inside how can I do it okay mm, think about it okay uh, what I'm gonna do ls okay so I will for example um, let's say su dash sub I will log in using using Sarah and what I'm gonna do actually I will go to cd this the oh sorry home I'll go to home ls okay I'll go inside this data one cd data one I'll try to touch work another file called work for example work 100 or work 10 okay now ls dash l enter so now Sarah and Sarah group became the owner of that 
file. The owner of that file. Okay. Sarah, user and Sarah group became the owner of that file. Now what I'm going to do is actually what I need to do is I want to do something to um, keep the owner of the files who ever going inside of that folder or directory and the create file it's the owner of that will be one group only who one group only which is the owner of that directory so the group that owns that directory okay whoever user get inside of that directory and create a file okay this file should be still under that group so i will what i'm going to do actually is i will go to su dash root i will go back to root okay, i'm sorry okay one more time nice one two no now right i'm in a root again so pwd so i want to go to home again now in here actually what i what i what i will do in here i will write the following i will write change modification change mode and i will write this group plus s okay data one haha <laughs> what will happen in this case if you go ls dash l or if you go inside data one and write ls dash l okay okay now i want to go back again or you know what cd and ls dash l now here be careful R, HR is the owner, right? Okay, very good. Is HR is the owner of that directory. Very good. Now I will log in again, SU dash L. I'm sorry, SU dash um, SU dash Sara. I'll go back to Sara user and I will go to home. And inside of home, actually, I will create another another file called for example work um, this time 100 enter what is or what can you see right now cannot touch work 100 you cannot write on it because actually now he's not belonging to HR group right so now he's not able to he is not able to create files inside of it. So whoever people, now I make security to that. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll actually look to that, that directory to, to P, to P, to HR only. Okay. What if, for example, SU minus root. I want to go back to root. Okay. Okay. I'll create a user called, for example, uh, user add Ahmed. Okay. User add Ahmed, for example, and password for Ahmed. What? Okay. For example, okay, very good. So, if for example, what I did right now, okay, so I created another user called Ahmed, okay, and uh okay uh what i'm gonna do user mod okay i'll modify ahmed what i'm gonna do 
what I'm going to do for Ahmed. I will make Ahmed a member in HR group. Or, first of all, you know, uh, okay, okay, I'll make or SU, I'll make Sarah first a member in HR group. So, user modify, um, if you remember, minus capital G to become a member in the second group. So, Sarah, or I'm going to do is HR, Sarah, enter. Now, Sarah, if you write ID, Sarah, okay, Sarah became what? Became members in two groups, HR and this. What if I go to SU dash Sarah? I will log in using Sarah and I will go again to CD home. Enter and I will create instead of now I will go CD data one. Now I'll try to create file like uh, touch um, work for example work uh, two 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 enter ah now i'm able to ls dash l okay uh, enter now see here actually ah i created that one but if you note okay Sarah created it okay Sarah the main group is Sarah but actually what happened because I made it like change mode uh, group plus s so the owner of the the owner the the group owner of the directory is HR so when Sarah created the file inside of it is still HR group is owning that file you got it guys Yes. What I will do right now, actually, is you know, um, I'll go back to root, and I will. What I'm gonna do, actually, I created Ahmed, right? So I, what I'm gonna do is user mode, and Ahmed, I will make him the main group of Ahmed. I'll make it HR. Enter. Oh, sorry, uh, Ahmed. So the main group now. So if you write ID Ahmed, you will find that HR is the primary group for Ahmed. Very good. Now I want to do what? I want to go to SU dash and I will use Ahmed. Very good. <laughs> Uh, now I am I logged in use, using Ahmed. Now what I'm going to do is I will open home again. I'll go to the home directory and inside of home, uh -huh, I'm sorry, see home. I'll go home and I will open the file that created by Sarah and I will try to 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 modify it. Okay, I'll go inside data one. And in here, Sarah created what? Sorry, created triple two. So Sarah, the owner of that file, uh, created that file. So I'm Ahmed, belong to HR group, and HR is the owner of that folder and it's uh, containing. So now I will go to Veeam, uh, work triple two, enter. Now, I would write something. Um, um, Ahmed and um, from HR and I edit on Sarah files inside the data one directory 
because this directory owner group is what is HR. Now skip okay and w wq right and quit oh i'm able to modify so cat work triple two enter ha ha i am ahmed and i am from hr and i edit on shadow files inside the data one directory because this directory owner group is hr <laughs> very good and that was for change owner change group and security group actually um, that was all about changing the owner and change, changing the users changing the owner uh, user and then changing the um, owner group on the file and directories yeah for directories for directories as well you will use minus r for example if you create for example i will go back to su dash root i'll go back to root and oh okay and i will go to root and in here i'll go to home for example okay and let's say that okay what i'm gonna do is ls what's there i have data and that one okay let's say i change owner uh change owner dash r to for example that uh, one that uh, uh, change uh, owner dash r um, that the one mm -hmm. okay I'll make the owner of that one for example HR what that I'm sorry okay so change owner okay okay guys change owner dash R okay okay how can i change the owner change owner for that okay very simple okay how can i do it i want to actually what i want to do it's change group and it's directly a uh, to be for for that okay anyone knows this okay uh, you guys okay think about it a little bit okay okay now okay again right right now manage owner okay that okay change owner dash r okay change owner for that let's change on for that one for example that one uh, guys hey, change sorry change on okay data okay let's work on data HR so invalid user data oh, okay so here change owner I'm sorry um a user HR is not 
user that okay so change owner change owner so <clears throat> let's say for example i want to change group okay change grp okay and dash r okay and the user is uh, the group is hr to data one yes enter what will happen in this case actually in this case if you write this command okay and you ls ls dash l data one enter uh, now very good now what we did actually all the files inside of that directory the owner group became hr okay so it recursively actually made the hr group the owner of the, the files inside of that directory and from now on actually because we did group plus security on that file okay so anyone will create any user who is not belonging to hr or belonging to hr whoever will modify on that directory and create files this files owner group will be a child that's all thank you for watching and see you next video all welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about process management and surface management process management and surface management in order to illustrate what this we have to go to linux okay interface and i will open the terminal okay <clears throat> And in here, actually, what I'm going to do is, you know, what I'm going to do is I will um, write the following command. Okay. I will write PS. What is that PS? Uh, PS will give you the process that running running right now. Okay. The whole processes, processes that run right now okay but first of all actually is i want to focus our talk actually if you want to talk about process management so what you need actually in this you need to list the process first list list process okay you want to list the processes and actually what i'm going to talk in this lesson i will list the processes Okay, so listing the processes as you hear the first command that I'm, you can use to list the process is PS. P, yes. Okay. What I'm going to do again is I will run like I will clear here. I will run, run Firefox. And I will use this sign, okay, which is AND, and enter. Oh, now from what happened actually, I run Firefox from the terminal, from the terminal. If I go back to, if I go back to the terminal, okay, and I write PS, enter. Uh-huh, it will give me the old process that's running right now, okay. But here actually, um, I want to, this is a process ID, okay. And this is the process name. Actually, what I need you to know is um, because I opened Firefox from Bash, okay, from this common interface, that means that if I close the Bash, what will happen? The Firefox closed, right? So, again, I'll open the terminal. I'll make it like this and I will write Firefox again. Oh, sorry. Fire. Fox enter. What will happen in this case? It will open the Firefox. But once. Okay. Firefox is opened, yes. I'll make this smaller. It's there already. And if I enter, if I write any command like PS, enter, what you will see, 
you will not be able to write anything because actually now this is running in front which uh, Chrome Firefox sorry is running in in front okay in order to be able to run commons you have it to make it like this I'll okay <clears throat> now once I see once I exit this it closed the Firefox because Firefox was depending on patch but what if I write again Firefox okay and this sign and okay and run again here is saying that missing chrome or resource url resource tre modules update listener.sys.mg okay so if i write any command ps okay see firefox is still running right it's not like okay again uh, i will write for example ls so the terminal is still working and firefox is still working but if i close the terminal see the firefox will close so now there is something there is a concept of dependencies dependencies what is dependencies so the process may de may depend on another process okay this is the dependencies so you open the firefox from the terminal that means that the firefox is depending on that firefox is depending on what is depending on patch okay so let's run the patch again okay very good let's run firefox but I run it in the background okay so now it's running so I can write anything now yes right still Firefox is open okay very good now let's continue mm -hmm. I will write for example ps-f ps-f what's gonna do uh, notice that Process ID of the Firefox process is depends on the bash process. So if I write ps-f What will happen? So if you go to for example um, The process IDs these are the process IDs, right? <clears throat> the process ID of bash This one but Let's go to here Firefox in the Firefox actually you will note that the process ID there is something called process ID and PPID fine PPID is this number see this number is like this number what is this so the process ID of this one this is the Firefox, right? All these are Firefox, so Firefox is running many times. Okay, so okay, I'll take the first one. Sorry, I'll take the first one here. This Firefox here, okay, the process ID is 7325, right? 7325 and PPID, okay is 7290 7290 is like here this is the process id of batch so that means firefox itself is depending on batch so once you close the batch that's why this process is depending on this process this sorry this process for firefox is depending on this process so this is a ppid okay this is the ID, the, the process ID, which I depend on. So the Firefox is depending on the process ID of Bash. Okay, very good. What else? Let's, for example, write many things. What I mean by that? Let's say, for example, I write uh, the following command. PS dash 
E, for example. PS dash E will uh, list all process, all process, all process on the system right now. Okay. Very good. What if, for example, if I write here patch and I write sh and I write ps. Oh, what what is this? PS actually will show you, okay, that there's patch Firefox and bash sh ps and these are the IDs. But you don't know which one is depending on which one. So which one is depending on what? Okay, you write ps dash f dash f enter. What will happen in this case? <coughs> Here, for example, sh, the process ID of it is 7692. And it depends on what? It depends on 7660. 7600 is bash. Okay. So if I close bash, sh will be closed. Right or wrong? Uh huh. So ps-f will show you, okay, which process depends on what process. Okay. Or which process depends on yeah, uh, whose pro process, okay? Very good. Or another process. It will show you the another process ID. Uh, now, if I type exit, sorry, exit, and exit one more time, and exit one more time, oh, I exited, right? I exited the terminal, right? Okay, very good. So let's go back again and write PS. Or I'll make it bigger. And I will write PS dash if one more time. See here. I'll close this, then what I'm going to do actually again, ps-f. So I will clear again. I will write Firefox. I will open Firefox and enter. Okay, it will open the Firefox. Here I will write ps-f. Oh. Because here it opened the Firefox, right? And the process ID of the Firefox depends on patch one. So the first Firefox here, okay. So what I want to do, see here, this is the P P I D of the Firefox, same like P I D of the bash. So you know. What if I write ps dash f1 enter? What is this? Here, process ID one is tty. Okay. Here actually is giving you the number of the process. If you know the number of the process, let's say, for example, PS and minus F and this one, for example, copy, paste, enter. Ah, let's say that this is the bash. So if you know the number of the process ID, actually it will give you what is, who's owning this ID, which is bash. Okay. Now, there is a tool or there is a command will show you diagram and it will illustrate in a very um, 
simple and it will make like a drawing shape um, to know exactly which process depends on what. So if you write this command ps ps3 enter in this case actually it will show you exactly which process depends on what. So it's very simple right now. So for example there is a process depend on depend on this process so let's say for example this process account demon there's another process is depending on it okay this one is depending on the main one okay and so on right yeah let's say let's write this ps3 and i will write that dash a and i will write the process id okay based enter so what happened here actually it will say that this process id this process uh, id is for firefox and firefox is depending on patch see how it's easy okay very good if you know that if you know the id and you want to know it depends on what actually okay you will take the you will write ps3 process 3 dash a and uh, process id itself it will give you this diagram what if for example I want to run pgrip. What is that pgrip? pgrip or you know pgrip and you write Firefox for example. Firefox enter. It will give you the process ID of Firefox. Okay, pgrip, pgrip process grip. What if I write pgrip pgrip bash for example? Ah, it gives me the first ID of bash, right? What if, for example, I write b crib um, sh? Uh huh. So it will give me these IDs for the sh. Fine. There's another, uh, a let's say ps3 right ps3 okay and dash a okay and the process id the one that i for example i copied i paste it again see here what will happen if i write if i write it like this enter it will give me as i told you it will give me this diagram and it will give me this id is belong to firefox and firefox depends on bash right okay So I have ps, ps-f, ps-f and the number of the process, we have ps3, we have ps3-a and process id, we have bgrip and the name of the process, we have pgrip and the name of the process, and we have ps3-a and the process id, okay? All this things can give you exactly what are the processes running and it depends on what okay very good that's for ps3-a what if i write the following command top top enter top is gonna show you the process utilization right now currently the process utilization let's say for example this is a process id this or this process i process id is used by root and it takes this much of cpu and this much of memory right okay what about ps control c to exit and i will write for example psaux enter Mm -hmm. it will show me this list right 
it will show me the status of each process right it's actually same like uh, uh, top but actually top is current the live one but this one is giving you like a uh, logs okay when is the log when is the process started and the location of the process and so on okay mm, like this control C again and now this is briefly the list how to list the process okay now how to kill the process okay how to kill the process means how to stop the process okay let's say okay let's write ps for example ps will tell me the process that's running currently okay like for example firefox so firefox id is this one i will copy it and i will kill it and i will enter the process id enter it gives me error y here actually if you minimize this one now we stopped the firefox if write ps again there is no firefox actually it it killed all the process and what depends on it okay uh very good so if i want to let's say i want to for example um kill another process i will run s or i will kill can i kill this one patch what will happen if i kill this one copy and paste enter ah it will not happen because actually what happened you are using this terminal okay so if you write ps again see you cannot kill it okay but you can do the following you can write kill dash l and in here for example uh, let's enter it will give you a different type of signals okay for killing let's say for example go to uh, this signal 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 number nine signal number nine actually is force it will force to kill something so let's for example kill and use for example nine or minus nine minus nine and i will kill the bash paste oh now i kill the bash now i stop the bash see because i forcefully uh, killed it killed the process okay very good now i want to go back and see uh, i will write bash i will write bash again I will write bash, bash more time. I will write bash more time. Then I will write ps. Okay. Now I want to, for example, kill this one. Copy 8599. Paste. Enter. So ps again still there but if you kill dash 9 and the same one paste enter and you write ps see 8599 is not there very good so kill again kill dash l it will give you all types of what all types of signal whether it force The most dangerous one is number nine, okay, which is four scale, okay. Very good. Uh, 
um, that was for listing and for killing the process okay I will do what else actually in here I will okay go to paint let me summarize actually the comment that we wrote in here so the first comment is Firefox or forget about that actually PS then what else uh, PS dash F PS dash F yeah it will show you the PPID okay show PPID what about uh, PS dash E O process running and what else um, PS dash or yeah PS dash if and number of the process num or PID it will give you name of process what else mm, there is PS3 PS3 will give you three of the processes okay there's PS3 minus a minus a will and the process ID B I D okay it will give you the name of the process name name of the process right what about what else so ps3 minus a and the process id what about um, b grip p grip p grip and the name let's say the name of the process it will give you the process id of this one okay what about p grip or ps3 we say we, told, we said ps3 that's a and the process id uh, we took also top to so to, to show you the process that's running right now and ps aux okay all the things actually is under the listing process okay we also talk about kill kill the process kill and pid and kill with signal dash l to show show all the signals and kill uh, minus nine which is force kill force force kill stopping the process that shell will show you the list of the list of list of the process uh, sorry list of the signals that you can use to kill the process okay that's summarization of this lesson see you next video and thank you for watching Hello, welcome to this tutorial we are going to manage the process as we listed the process we will manage the process actually I will delete that delete and I will uh, for example I will write here manage manage what manage managing the, the processes okay or managing jobs managing managing jobs okay if you for example go to Linux okay and you clear this and I want you to write Firefox like this without without a ending sign 
if I press enter or if, if I write anything here, what will happen? Okay, it will not show you anything. Okay, so what you if you write job? Just write okay uh, jobs for example. It will not you it it will not show you anything also. Okay. What if for example if write if I control C control C ah closed that the Firefox because Firefox was depending on the bash. Very good. So what if I write jobs here? Jobs enter. Oh. Okay. Let me clear this. Alright. Jobs. Nothing is there. Okay. Very good. What if I run Firefox again with this sign, ending sign, enter. Aha, uh -huh. what happened here? It run Firefox and it show me the process ID. What if I write jobs, enter. Aha. Uh -huh. Jobs giving me the status of what? The status of the surface or the status of the uh, process, whether it's running or not. So jobs will show me which surfaces are running or not. Okay? Jobs. So it shows me, it says that Firefox is running. Okay? Right now. Very good. What if I want to run something in the background? And run something in front, uh, in the front ground and in the background. For example, okay. For example, if I write, for example, BG. Okay, and write percentage sign and write, for example, one. Enter. What will happen in this case? He said that. This process is in the background already. What if I want to take it in the front ground? So if G, I will write minus, uh, sorry, percentage one, enter. What happened now? Now Firefox become in front ground. So it came in front. But if you do this, you will not be able to write any command again. Because actually now Firefox became in the front, right? What if I want to send it back again? So write PG and 1. Enter. I don't think it will accept it, right? So because you already print still Firefox working in front, right or wrong? Yes. So Control C to exit and see it closed the Firefox. So be careful when you're praying something in front and when you're praying something in the back, right? So let me f run Firefox again in the back end, Firefox, and this sign, enter. Now it's working in the background. Yeah. How can I know that? I will write job. So again, it will show me that it's running, okay? What if I write background PG and... Or I will, you know what, I will bring it in front. F, uh, sorry, F, G, and percentage, and 1, the process number. Okay, enter. Now it becomes in front. What if I control shift N? It will open another, control shift N, it will open another shell. And I will, what I'm going to do, I will write jobs. Again. Nothing is running in this in here in here. Okay. What I'm gonna do is now this bash is busy. Now I can write anything else in another terminal, right? 
Pyrite PS, for example. So, yes, I can work right now. Right? Very good. Right, jobs again. Right, jobs again. Here. Very good. I will close this. Now, if I control C, now it will close Firefox again. This is for the front and the the back, back background and for foregr foreground. There is something called foreground and background. So foreground. So first of all, let's write jobs in order to list the jobs that's running now. And F G F G for foreground. The front one or background first B B G and percentage and the number of the job the job number let's say job number one and F G this one and one so now it will send it to front this will send it to back okay this will list you the process ID okay or the job number there's something called, there's another concept called nice, N-I-C. This is another comment. What's nice doing, actually? Nice is a status from plus 19 up to what? Up to, up to 0 and from 0 up to minus 20. Mm-hmm. What is that? So the comment nice actually is used to give priority to any process run, running right now. So process zero and the process minus one. Minus one is higher than zero. Minus 20 is higher than plus 19. So if you have many processes running right now and you want to give a process higher than the others okay you can use nice okay you can use nice so let's go back to linux and here what i'm going to do actually is i will clear this and i will do the following i will run start the firefox okay in the background okay and I will do the following what I'm gonna do is I will write for example I will write for example top enter in here actually if you um, I will make it smaller Let's see. Yeah. If you go down, down, okay. Uh, Firefox is here, actually. Okay. Firefox is running in the background, right? It's running in the in the background. Yes. Right? Okay. Okay, and you know what I want to do is uh, I want to top this again. Let's see, and I will write top again. Okay, let's small this. Okay, I want to, you know what, I want to open another one. I want to test right test for example okay and I will go back to the terminal and you will notice that Firefox is here CPU memory and there is something called NI NI is zero for Firefox this is a Firefox and NI is zero now what I want to do what is this nice doing actually it's right now it's zero right okay 
What if I want to give a higher priority to Firefox? I want to dedicate resources like, for example, memory, CPUs, and all of the resources that. So NICE is going to adjust the resources to the process that you giving a higher priority. So in this case, actually, how can I do it? OK, I will write NICE. OK, and minus N minus 15, for example. I'll give minus 15 to Firefox. To Firefox. <clears throat> okay, enter. What happened right now? <clears throat> what happened? I already give higher, higher, I already give higher, a uh, nice priority to Firefox. If I write top again, I give minus 15. So if you notice here, if I go to Firefox, I'll try to run something, okay, and I go back to here and C in here, control C, and I will write top again, what you will see. I won't show you the Firefox nice had changed, right? Okay, let's go back. Let's open more. Enter more. Enter to come back in here. And if you write top again, where is the Firefox? Okay, I will show you. Control C right now. Okay. Make it this one smaller. Okay, now I will try to run this one. Type top and I will close this one. Close this one again. Okay, see here what happened. Control big. C, I will write control C, top again. Oh, sorry, top again. Here, there is no Firefox because I closed it, right? Okay, very good. But what I need actually from you is control C. Ah, what can I do actually here? I will write, I will type that comment again nice dash in dash in and I will give minus 15 to Firefox and this to make it in the back end enter it opened again right so if I write top Firefox here and nice is 15. Very good. Exactly. This is what I need. Okay. Now we change the value of the nice. So we, we, we give a higher priority to uh, Firefox. What if I, for example, is if I write, for example, if I write it in if I renice, this is something called renice, dash n. Okay. Now let's, for example, um, for example, um, 
PS, write PS. In the PS, process ID of Firefox, let's say, for example, this is the process ID. I will copy it, and I will do the following. I will re -nice, okay, if I write PS3 minus A and type paste, enter, it will give me the Firefox is the one and it depends on, okay. Very good. There is pgrip. You remember that? pgrip and you type, for example, minus a and versus id. Let's see what will happen. Nothing. Okay. Let's clear this. Enter. Nothing as well. So pgrip only. Enter. Help more information because is no okay. You remember P P grip dash A and for example Firefox. Okay, it give me actually the process number. Okay, very good. What I need actually here, clear. What I need actually is to renice. Renice. Okay, I will renice. Dash in, and I give it last time minus 15, but no, I won't renice it. I'll give it 3. Then dash P, the process, and the process ID. I'll give it, for example, paste, enter. Now, what happened? It changed it from 15. It said that the old priority was 15, and the new priority is 3. So I give it new priority to it. Okay? If we write top, you may find or no. Okay, you might not find it because you needed to, to change something on Firefox to let you... Ah, yeah, it came here. Three, Firefox. You guys saw it, right? Okay. That's for... Okay. <coughs> PS, <coughs> try this, AUX. <coughs> if you go up, if you go up, Okay, nice one not show here, but um, in top only, right? Yeah. We can write top and the name, maybe there's something like that, Firefox, top Firefox, yeah! It say, no, actually you cannot make it like this. Unknown option. Okay. You guys, if you write man top, you can find maybe you can find option and give you the ability to check specific process. Okay, take it as a task. Okay. You can check it here. Help version. Dash V for going to show like per version and the usage of prompt. Dash B. Dash C. Dash C. Start top. Uh, last remember. Do you specify the delay between E is for <coughs> uh, instruct stop to for summary area? Edge health and instruct top to display individual threads. This command line option is summation of all threads in each process. Okay. Dash P, Montreal only process with specified process ID. Ah, oh, very good. We can use this. <coughs> <coughs> so, Q to quit. We can use dash P. So, tab. But first, I will take 
process ID of Firefox, copy, and I will write top dash p and the process ID enter. Uh, voila! Yes, we can monitor one process with its with its um, uh, ID, right? That's very awesome, guys. Control C again. So, as you we renamed it to three, yeah, this is actually the value that we changed, right? Okay, you can renamed again, renamed um, dash n, renamed dash n, and um, give it zero and dash p and the process ID, right? Paste enter. So the oldest three and you is zero, zero, right? Now um, our command, yeah, it became nice, became zero again. Okay, very good. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, actually, we are going to talk about surface management because we finished uh, this one. Okay, we will talk about surface management. We finish process management, and we will talk about surface management. Surface management, surface. First of all, what is surface? Surface, you can consider them in Linux. Uh, you can consider them modules, modules, modules which build up kernel. <coughs> Surfaces are processes when they run. So when you run the surface, it becomes like a process. But the process itself, you cannot consider it as a service because there are some processes when it runs, it means that it runs, but it's not, it's not a surface by its nature. Okay. So surface, let's say when we disable surface, that means there is no process ID. But when you run the surface, definitely the surface will have a process ID okay so like for example if I go to here and I will let's say I will write the following I will write says uh, system sorry system CTL system CTL status system CTL status SSHD for example <coughs> SSH you know SSH. SSH actually is used to, for example, to connect to remote server. This is SSH, remote socket. Okay, um, um, secure socket host, I think. Yeah, and D for daemon, as we will explain later. Daemon is a devil. Daemon is a process. So anything has D in Linux that is a surface. Okay, so SSH is itself is a surface. Now I want to know the status of this surface, which is SSH. In order to be able to know the status of it, you have to write this common systemctl status sshd, because actually all the surfaces coming out of systemctl, which is the kernel itself of Linux. So I will enter what's going in here. What happened? Uh, SSH.surface open SSH server daemon loaded active running it's running right now ssh that's why uh, control c that's why if you write ssh ssh okay let's take another status of another surface first or you know another comment there is another comment uh, to know the status yeah p grip p grip sshd for example what is this it will give me the process id p grip the process id of ssh you remember the p grip p grip and the surface name it will give me the process id see very simple so that means it's running already because it takes process id right amazing what if I write system CTL, system CTL and <coughs> system CTL status 
and I write systemctl status of the firewall. Sorry, firewall. And enter. Hey, it's active and running as well. Okay. Control C, firewall, D on the enter. Yeah, it's running. Yeah, very good. What if I need, what if I need, for example, systemctl list units? What will happen if I write this command? System, system, ctl, um, list, dash, units. Uh, unknown operating. Mm. Why? Because I have to write this in the end. Yeah. Now it will give you all surfaces, all surfaces on Linux. Okay. As you see here, you can make smaller, smaller a little bit. Yes. Right. Control C again, and I will write this. Write it again. Here it say active or not active. See active sub description. See see her. Until now all of them are active. So control C. This is list let's list units. So system CTL list units. What about system CTL status cron? What is cron D? Cron D actually is it's active as a service is used to let's say for example if you want to um, how can I describe it cron D actually if you want to run a script in a certain time it's a scheduling it's for scheduling okay so you can use cron D okay right now I want to try to do something okay I want to SSH, for example, SSH to 10, not 10, but 1 to 7.0.0.1. What, what is this message? Okay. It say that, are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes or no? I will type, for example, yes. Now, I connected one to I connected to myself okay I connected to myself so that means SSH is working right okay what if I write system serial CTL stop SSH D enter what will happen in this case if I write system CTL again system CTL status SSG SSHD D it says that loaded inactive it is stopped right what if I want to start it again or I want to SSH again SSH sorry SSH two one two seven zero zero one cannot Connect to this one port 22 connection refused Right Right, I cannot connect because The surface itself is stopped because it's working on this port 22. What if I want to start again system? I write system CTL system CTL and I will write the name of uh, Or you know Start. I made a stop. So start as is HD. Enter. Now I write it again. System. System. CTO. Status. SSH. D. It say that it's active. I can connect. Yes, I can connect. So SSH. One seven two zero zero one. Sorry, one two seven. One two seven. Now it asks the password. Yes, I already able to use this <coughs> SSH one more time. So start, stop, and start is stopping and start the surface itself. What if I want, for example, to use okay? 
Okay, what if I want to use actually uh, system CTL enable start? And what if I, for example, restart? I want to restart the surface. Okay, see if you write system system CTL restart. There is restart 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 work sshd what will happen it will close the session and it will restart and it will restart it okay right very good what if i write system cto status uh, ssh e again now it's active so there is system CTO. No, again, I want to SSH to one two seven zero zero one. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to reload instead of restart. Okay. So because restart it stopped actually the SSH. What if I reload? Okay. So I will write system system cto reload ssh it reloaded it failed reload not found yeah it's there because okay now i want to ssh again one two seven zero zero oh. One two seven zero zero one password one two three four. Okay, so reload is not like restart. Restart is restarting and closing the session, and reload is just resetting. Yeah, this is a main different. Okay, this is for enabling, disabling, start stopping, starting, enable, disable the. Yeah, we, did we talk about disable and enable? No, I think so. Right, system serial disable sshd serves. What happened here? It say that removed. Okay, so what if I want to enable? So system now, if you want ssh again, so one two seven zero zero one, you will not be able. Oh. One, two, three. What is that? Still working. Okay, so I disabled this. Aha, uh -huh. see, I want you to be careful here. Why it didn't take place? Why it didn't effectively? Why it, it doesn't effectively actually disable the, um, that one? Because this, the separate and enable, is, needs the system to be rebooted or reloaded in order to take place. Right or wrong? But what if... Okay, so now still it's working. So system... System... CTO... Uh, status... SSHD. Aha, uh -huh, it's still active. But see, what I'm going to do. Now, if I reload the system, what will you see? This is what we call runtime. So this is actually permanent. Stop and start, it's it's in a runtime. But enable and disable, it's in permanent. It's in permanent. Okay. So I will reload the system and see. Let's reload the system. Okay. Reload. Okay, now I'm coming here and 
Um, power off? No, I don't need to power off, guys. I want to restart. So I will restart it. And I will see exactly what will happen in this case. Okay? Because I disabled SSH and I want to check exactly it will take place after a restart. It will be effective after restart or not. So, root. Enter. And I will. So, sorry, I'll bring it back. Sorry. Okay, now I'll go back again. I will check. Now, SSH. S S S H one two seven zero zero one co connect to host refused because actually we disabled so if you write system CTL system CTO status status system CTL status um, S S H It says that it's inactive. Now, Control C, and I want to make it active again. So, system CDL enable SSH. Enter. See, now it run back again. So, system CTL status. System CTL status uh, SSHD enter. It will say that it's still inactive, but when you re reload again, you will be able to see that it's working. So, I'm sorry, cancel and power restart. I will restart the system and see. Okay. <clears throat> I will use root. Now I will check. I will go to this one, bit bigger. Now I want to do what? I want to um, SSH to one two seven zero zero one. Ha! It's working. Very good. So system CTL status. For status for SSHD, now it's working because enable disable it's taken effective, it's become effective after the report or after the restart. Okay, because start and stop it is in the run time, but enable disable should be in the permanent one. Okay. Um, as you notice, sshd, firewall, d, cron, d, httpd, so all of this called daemons, system services, okay. Uh, I have a, some people, they asked me about, let's say, for example, if you want to know the status of the CPU, what is the common? You can write ls cpu. In this case, actually, it will tell you exactly... The architecture, uh, 64 is 64 based and CPU, and it will give you um, an information about the CPU. Okay, flag CPU, Vim, and all. Okay, CPU family, genuine Intel. See, is giving um, details about CPU. 
this is a good and useful uh, command if you want to, to know something about your computer CPU. Um, uh, another command uh, to w enter. What it is? W enter is gonna give you, as you see, user and TTY that he's using and from and login. Uh, yeah, for example, root. Root is using TTY2. Okay, and from 11.11, root. Yeah. Yeah, W. Is, uh, is it's actually uh, it's actually pref the pref the long form is watch so w is watch so we'll give the username and the terminal that he used okay okay what about L we have something called ls ls uh, p l k this is actually let me clear her ls p l k this will show you the um, hard disk, okay? The partitions that you have. You have SR0, you have NVMe, NVMe 0, another partition. So this is a disk one, this is this is a partition, this is a partition, or this is a disk, yeah. This is a hierarchy, how partitions uh, work in Linux, okay? This is LVM. Okay, swap. This is a swap. This actually, uh, this uh, thing or this part uh, 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 listing the disks, these are the disks that you have. This part actually we will talk about in details, but in, uh, in uh, not in this course, actually, in, in next. Um, uh, Actually, it belongs to Red Hat Admin 2 course. Actually, uh, the, the course that I'm explaining right now is related to Admin 1, Red Hat Admin 1, if you if you want to focus on. So this actually, all these topics is Admin 1, belong to Admin 1 Red Hat, okay? We, in details, actually, in part two or uh, in Admin 2, we are going to, to talk about if disk and uh, uh, all these things will format the disk, this will partition the hard, hard disk. All these things will handle it in the part two or admin two. Okay. What about uh, NM, NM, T, UI? This tool actually, NM, T, UI, is going to give you the ability to change the network settings. Like for example, here you have edit connect connection, enter. Uh, here it's gonna give you the interfaces. You have interface called ENS160. You have uh, these two interfaces. Actually, you can enter and it will, once you enter it, you can change the IP, okay? So in here actually profile, you can change the profile name. You can go down, down, and you can come to, for example, ethernet. Yeah. or go to configuration of IBP4. Enter. In here, it will ask you, you want it automatic or manual. Let's say I will choose manual. In manual, actually, it will uh, it will ask you, or I filter, I make it uh, automatic. So it will take from the HTTP server. And this is will actually will explain it later, by the way. So, but this is a good okay this is the mac address of the interface okay now i want to cancel if you want to edit something you come to edit if you want for example want to here okay so i want to skip and I want to go out. I will cancel again. You can manage your interfaces from here. Give IPs also. Okay. Yeah. This is a good tool, by the way. We will. There is a lesson for this, and we will explain it, explain everything in details about that.
thank you for watching and see you uh, next video now welcome in this lesson uh, or in this section of the course we are going to do the following we will configure NIC and we will uh, change the host name and we will take remote login we'll try the remote login and what else we will do the file transfer file transfer so in this section of the course we are going to talk about these four elements or four points the first one here is configuring the NIC or the network interface okay so I will go to the first machine here I open the terminal and okay let's go to terminal and I will change the NIC configuration so in order to be able to, to change a NIC interface the, the, NIC interf the NIC configuration you will write the following you write if config if, if config and enter if config will show you will show you that interfaces that you have the first interface that that you have here is ENS 160 and this is actually our interface that we are going to change the IP fine so you want to change the interface IP so you will write IP config but first of all let's go up it doesn't have IP right now see Ethernet and there is no any IP on it. So what we're gonna do we'll say IP config then we'll choose ENS ENS 160 the name of the interface and I will give a I will give an IP okay Ten zero zero dot hundred, and I will write the net mask net mask the net mask is going to be like um two five five the two five five the two five five the zero enter this is actually the uh, first interface that we change. So if I write if config again, if config again, enter, you will find that the IP really changed it to the IP that I have given to the machine. Okay. Now, if config, if, if config, okay. So this is a tool, or this is actually the command that I use in order to change change the IP but actually I have to take into consideration that this is a temp or a runtime so once you report the machine this configuration will be zero again okay um, right now okay I want to go to the second machine because I have another machine here okay okay this machine Okay. Okay. I don't want anything. Okay, I'll go with, I'll go to the terminal again to the other machine. Okay. And I will change the IP here as well. So I write if config and it will give me the name of the name is the same. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is if config if config ENS 160 and <laughs> the IP 110.0.0. Uh, let's say 200 and NIT mask 
init mask is 255.255.255.0, enter. If config again, if config, enter. Yes, the IP changed it here as well. So let me ping myself. I'll ping 1 or 10.0.0. I'll actually have the IP I give. Okay, the 0 0.200. Yeah, it's pingable. What if I want to ping the other machine? Here is not like Windows actually. Windows you will uh, it, it will ping for three times, reply three times, or uh, time out three times, and it will stop here. It will not stop. So Control C. What I'm gonna do is I will ping the other one. Ten dot zero dot zero. Sorry. Ten dot zero dot zero dot zero dot one hundred. Yeah, I'm able to ping the other machine as well. Control C. Very good. So I'll go back to the first machine. I'll ping 200. 10.0.0.200. Yeah, it's pinging. Okay. Now I changed the IP on the two machines. What, what I'm going to do right now is. Um, okay. I change it to the second one, and I ping already both of them. So when when you use fconfig, it isn't permanent. It's it's you have to take into into consideration, as I said, it's not permanent one. It's runtime only. So in order to make it permanent, what what I'm gonna do is I will vim vim what vim the file where this configuration exists. So the configuration of the interface is existing where in etc and network networks network sorry I'm sorry sysconfig so etc sysconfig and network network what network dash scripts and in here you will write f config ENS160. This is a file, exactly the file that have the configuration of the interface. So I'll enter this, I'll go down, I'll go to IP IBV4 So go down, 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 down Okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do actually, okay, you will do the following. Okay, we'll go to here. Okay, so I'm come down here. All right, insert, enter, or go back, enter. What you can do is the name of the interface, the IPv6, auto config, uh, default root, and so on. So instead, I will write here IP IPv4 and equal let's say 110.0.0.100. Okay, this is and I will write net mask for example equal to 255.255.255.0 escape and write in the queue and now okay I change it the IP so IP config so now I already changed if you reboot the machine it will not lose the configuration it will be saved in the file 
So again, the file is etc. So I will write it here. etc. So you will. This is a bus exactly etc. Then what? Then syslog. Sysconfig. Sys config and after that this config there is network scripts and if config dash ens one six zero this is exactly the bus the path okay where if you want to make the configuration of the interface permanent, you have to come to this uh, uh, to this file and you have to edit it. Okay. You will write vim. You will open it and you will. Okay. Vim and this is uh, the, the 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 file. Okay. You will edit it and you will keep the configuration inside of it what if I want to change the host name okay host name so let's go back to here and I will write host name host name okay the name is local host dot local domain okay if you want to change it you will write host name write host name and what else host name let's give it for example server 100 for example okay so if you type host name again yeah server 100 I'll go to second machine in here and I will type host name I will write here host name server 200 okay so host name again now it changed but also this um, this one this command is not keeping it it's not permanent it's runtime as well so in order to change it to make it the permanent you will type v after that you will type etc then forward slash host name and enter inside of here you have to change so you have to change uh, you write for example server 100 then skip wq and exit you will go to the second file here so vim etc host name enter you will delete that Okay, and we will write server 200. Okay, escape and wq exit. Now you saved it. Okay, if you, for example, cat or slash dc host name, sorry, host name. I'll find that it's really saved. I will go back to the first machine, the server one or server 100. Okay. Here, what I'm going to do actually is if you write, for example, man IP config, IP config, enter. Okay, manual IP config. No manual entry for IP 
config. Okay. Sorry, I'm so sorry. F config. Enter. Now it say that what? Linux system administrator menu. Okay, I, I f, f config. Okay, this is f config. So if you need any help, you will come here and you will check it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'll queue to quit. There is also another command, okay, you can use it, which is nmcli, okay, and we will talk about it later, okay, this is actually a new command, dash dash help, for example, okay, like in here, if you come to or man nmcli this is nmcli general command manuals okay so if you come here here for example dash a when using this option nmcli will stop and uh, will stop and ask for any missing required arguments dash c colors complete escape f else g to get value h dash h to print help dash m to switch between mood and so on q yes and there is also an mtui which is the graphical interface to change the ip right now uh, let's say for example i want to ping the other server okay or as you see here okay i want to ping server 200 ping server 200 by name okay name or ser or surface not no okay so I cannot ping it using name. Why? <clears throat> because there is no DNS and something else called host file. The host file is same like in Windows, there is a host file. The host file, actually, you will open it, you will add the IP and the name. In this case, actually, you will be able to resolve the names by IP using the name instead of IP. So you will be able to resolve. So in this case, actually, if you want to edit the host file, so, but actually this way, okay, if you are trying to change the host file, so go to, for example, Veeam, etc, hosts, enter. In this case, actually, if you come in here, down here, or make it up, so in, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here I will write 10.0.0.100 and I will write server 100 okay then I will escape WQ I saved so I can ping myself using name server 100 yes it's pinging right what if I want to change that on the other server as well so this is the problem of this way if you don't have DNS and using the host file, so you have to change the names on all the e-machines, one by one. Okay? If you come in here and uh, go to uh, Veeam, then etc, then hosts, hosts, and you will put the IP 200 and server name, server 200 escape wq and 
now I will try to ping server 100 server 100 server 100 name or self is not known so I'll ping myself first server 200 yes I'm able to ping I'll ping the IP 10.0.0.100 yes I'm able to ping very good ah sorry so this is I'm sorry you have to put here I'm so sorry you guys what you are gonna do what I did what I did is mistake actually I should put the IP of the other server and the name of the other server to be able to do to to use the the name. So you will go again vim <coughs> etc then the hosts and in here actually what I'm gonna do so you will make the opposite. You will put 100 here. I'm sorry. You will put 100 here and 200 there. <coughs> and you will go to a server one and vim. Go to etc. You will go to hosts. And in here, and you will type two hundred, then WQ. Now you can ping. Now, if you write hostname, I am on server one hundred, and I want to ping server two hundred. Being server 200, it's being the other one, right? Which is IP 200. Control C. If you go again to that one and ping, now just write host name. You are on server 200, you want to ping 10.0 or server 100. Server. 100 enter it will be paying the other other side okay control c so this actually the way in, in on the host of that file local file you have to put the remote server name and the remote ip and vice versa okay that is very easy and very simple okay as, as I said, actually, this way it needs from us to do it on all machines, and actually this is not correct. You have to use DNS. One more thing, actually. Uh, let's say that I have to, to the two options. I have the DNS is working, and I have the hosts. What, which one is going to take the precedence? Which one is the machine will lock first uh, and resolve first? The machine, by default, it will look to the host file instead of the DNS. So if you configure both the DNS and the host file, the machine will look to the host first, then it will look to the DNS. Okay? To resolve the names. But be careful actually, because if there is any penetration of or there is any attack on the server, what will happen actually? He can do what? He can, for example, he can uh, poison the host file. How? For example, he can redirect the traffic if you if you guys have if this server has internet and people or those machines has internet have internet and they for example they go to Facebook for example okay if he changes the IP of the Facebook on the host file instead of uh, the original uh, Facebook IP he will put the attacker IP in this case actually the traffic could be redirected to his server and in 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 case that, that he made a fake a fake uh, website in this case actually you will go to that web, a fake website okay uh, i'll stop this video here and
in the next video I will tell you how to protect you yourself against this attack okay thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to secure yourself actually or how to change the behavior of the machine to look to not look to the host to look to the DNS okay and actually this option is not available in Windows okay so in here in Linux actually you can change the behavior you can tell the uh, the tell to the machine that don't look to the host just look to the DNS okay so how can I do this I'll go to the Linux machine and I will clear no, over here and I will what I'm gonna do is to open that file Okay, so I will open VM, then etc. Then I will go to n something called nsswitch.conf. Enter. Now in here, actually, if you go to down here, actually this is the file where the machine looks to. Oh my God. Yeah, here. So yeah, down here there is something called host, right? Hosts. Yes, exactly. Here, if you reach here, hosts. Here he looking to the files, then DNS, then my host name. Okay, very good. So you can actually delete that. Okay. So what you what you can do is to you can delete that and you can keep only DNS. You can keep only DNS. Okay. Exactly. So it will not look to the file. You it will look to DNS only. Okay. That is the way. So okay. Sorry. Okay. Q. Okay. Uh, okay. Q. Watch quit. Well, so this is actually the file that you have to modify, or you have to edit in order to um, prevent Linux or the machine to look to the. Come here. Control V. This is the file. NSS or ns switch dot uh, dot conf okay in this lesson also um, I'm gonna talk about remote login remote login okay remote login so we what we did uh, last video we already changed the IP on Nick changed the host name changed the host name on the file and on the permanent file and on using the command and the remote login now I will, I'll talk about remote login so if you want to remote login to the other machine you will use SS SSH okay there is still net and there is SSH but what is the difference actually okay so SSH is using actually the key is using the key so if for example if you have the two servers okay this is one server okay and this is the other server let's say that you are an admin here okay so you are admin here okay and this is let's say for example this is your machine okay so this is your machine and you are trying to SSH to that server SS Edge. okay you are using for example uh, any tool party or whatever okay what you're gonna do actually in this case what will happen actually is the SSH is using keys public keys and private key okay so it's using pub key which is public key and it's using also private key okay private key the private key it's always within the server he will keep it but the public key actually 
if you are trying to SSH to me, to the server, okay, the server will tell you, just take my, take my public key, okay, keep it on your machine, and any connection between us, okay, use my public key to encrypt the traffic that going out of your machine talking to me and because I'm using the private key okay this private key is going to decrypt whatever the public key encrypted so now this server will give the public key here let's say for example this server name is server 100 and I'm in here so you will use server 100 public key okay you will use server 100 public key in order to encrypt in order to be able to encrypt the data that going out from this one let's say that this is pca for example this is here pc1 pc1 for example so the PC one, when he talks to the server, like using SSH tool or SSH application, it will use the public key of that server, okay, of that SSH to encrypt the data, and the private key there on the server will encrypt, will decrypt. So the public will encrypt, and the private will decrypt. No one, no one can take the private key here because actually the private key is very important no one can use it the only server who can use it the owner of the private key but public key I'll, i'm going to give it to you encrypt the data and send it to me and when it reaches me i will use my private key to decrypt it so the public key it's like a key and the private key uh, or a locker it lock the data and the private key is opening that lock okay that is SSH. So let's go to our um, first server here and I will SSH-L and I will use the username, um, one of the usernames that exist on the second server because actually here if you come here, okay, and I want clear, I want for example Veeam or ID Walid, you will find that there is a username called Walid on the second one. So I will use this user to log into remotely to, to that server. Okay, because this uh, user is existing there on the remote server. So uh, what I'm gonna do is SSH L, L for login, and the username Walid, okay? Okay, and I will type 10, dot zero dot zero dot two hundred okay and enter what will happen in this case he say are you sure you want to continue connecting to that one you will type yes it will ask you the password for Wally one two three four okay and right now where I am now I am on server 200 very good so I am Walid a username there existing there and but I am remotely accessing it. So how can I, how can I, for example, yeah, uh, uh, approve that? So what I'm gonna do is I will go to Siri, then uh, let's say home, the home of the other server, and enter in here, and I'm gonna create touch, uh, let's say file uh, from, remote file from remote whatever permission denied aha so you don't have permission to write on the home of that server yes so you don't have permission to write to the home but what you can do actually is you know you can do the following so cd ls 
Walid. So you will explore Walid because definitely you will have. Um, sorry, CD. CD Walid. Enter. And in here, there is a lot of files. On desktop, for example, of Walid. So I'll type desktop enter now i will create touch file from remote access oh my god i created it so if you go there to the second one if you go to cd and go to uh, home and go to walid and go to desktop of walid enter ls you will find that file that i created file for on remote access okay it's better to rm delete it <laughs> yes i delete it this is actually the powerful of using ssh if you are having the servers inside the data center and you want to access them or you have server away from you and you want to access it you will use ssh okay and this is a beauty of availability of ssh on all linux and uh, servers okay yeah thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about file, file transfer file transfer so file transfer i will use a sf TP S F T P secure file transfer protocol. So there is FTP and there is SFTP. SFTP is encrypted. So whatever you are uh, uploading or downloading from any machine using SFTP, it's gonna be encrypted. <clears throat> okay. So I will explain to you how to use SFTP. <clears throat> this is how to transfer the files okay between servers <clears throat> so let me clean this first I will delete then sftp okay let's say that i have two servers like this okay this is server one and this is server two now i want to Actually, I want to transfer files between this both of servers. How can I do it? Okay, so I use, for example, this arrows. Okay, I want to here, for example, I want to upload, and here I want, for example, to download. Loot. Okay. So I want to to do this two process. Okay, download and upload. Okay. So what I'm gonna do actually, uh, let's say this is server 100, SRV 100, and this one is SRV SRV 200. Okay. So what I'm gonna do actually, I will create script one one script two script three on that server and i will create file report one report two and report three on that server okay so what i will do here i will upload the script files and i will download the report files okay from server 200 so let's go to linux i'll go to the first server okay and i will clear here and i will su dash 
root. Okay, I will use root. I'm in root right now. So clear again. And now let's start using our SFTP. So first of all, I will create the files. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where I will create them actually. I'll write PWD. I'm in root. Okay. So inside of root, I will create the following files. Touch script one touch script two touch script three now I created three files script one script two script three and I will go to the second server okay and I will print workplace okay CD root pwd i will create report one report two report three okay very good now i will clear ls yeah, I have report one, report one, report two, and report three. And Ellis here. Oh my god, oh my god, it is. Uh, I did a big mistake right here, guys. Why? Because actually, I still use SSH and I could get it to the. <laughs> so I have to type exit or log out. Okay, log out. Now I'm on local server, so. Okay, no problem. Uh, I'll go again to here. I'll um, RM remove. On that server, this is server 200, so report will be here. So I want to remove script. Script. But first, don't forget dash F, enter. Now ls. Now I have report 1, report 2, report 3. Very good. Here we are. So ls here. Still, I want to create the script again, so no problem. So PWD, and I will touch uh, script one touch script script <clears throat> two touch script three. So I I created three files here. On local server okay okay now in order to be able to run sftp so you will write sftp and the ip of the second server 200 and the password because i'm root there also i know the password of the root there so I will use the root there, the root password there. Okay, very good. So in this case, actually, now I'm in SFTP mode. Okay, if you know which directory you are now on local use, for example, okay. Now I want to write BWD. BWD, enter, that is remote working directory space. Be careful. That is removed working read directory space. So now it's giving you where you are on the remote server. What if I want to see where I am on my local server? In this case, you have to write L B W D. Enter. 
that is the local one. So you are in root local and you are in root and remote. Very good. Now I want to, <coughs> for example, okay, I want to ls. If I write ls, that is local. So it will show you the local files, script one, script three, script two. Okay. Very good. What if I want ls? ls means ls without l. That is the remote one. So it will show you report one, report two, and report three. So actually here, so sf sftp and 10.0.200 and lls local lpw local bw d remote ls remote okay very good i'll go back here what i'm going to do is clear oh okay invalid see clear is not valid command you cannot write all commands in sftp mode like for example if you write host name oh invalid command also but if you want for example if config if config it will say invalid also so what if i am in sftp mode and i want to write any command in this case just exclamation mark host name enter it will work Okay, X exclamation mark and if config, it will work uh, if config is wrong. Hmm. Now it will work. Okay, and what else? For example, CD. If you want to use CD, for example, if you want to go to somewhere else, CD, if local, you have to write LCD. If remote, you have to use CD. So CD, it will work on the remote server. Okay. Now let's go to bot. What is bot? Bot actually is to upload something. So what I'm going to do actually here, I will port script one. That means I'm going to upload a script one from my local server to the remote server. Okay. Enter. Okay. Script one. No, no such file or directory. Very good. So what I'm going to do is local LLS. Ah, script one. Ah, I wrote it wrongly. Script one. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. So no problem. I, what I'm going to do is I will bot script one. <laughs> I'm sorry, script one. Now uploading file script one to root script two. Hundred percent. Now it transferred there. So if you write ls, now script one transfer to the second server. If you go to second server, okay. And ls, you will find script one here. Yeah. I'll go to the first server again. What if I want to download? So this is for the upload. What about the... You can, yes, you can upload to different places also. Not only to the directory where you are, but you can also upload to different directories. So if you write, for example, spot uh, script, let's say script 2. I want to put script 2 to where? to, for example, uh, desktop, to desktop, remote desktop of root. Okay, enter. Yeah, transferred. So if you write ls, uh, root desktop, sorry. Okay, enter. You will find script. 
2 is there, right? Very good. What if I want to download? So you write get. So put is to upload and to get to download. So get, get what? Report. Let's get report one, for example, and enter. So now it will download fetching. So it's downloading. So if you write LLS, local LS, you will find that you already uh, get report one from the remote server to local server. Okay, get report two to to um, desktop so to desktop ah oh. now LLS okay desktop You will find report two came here. Yes, exactly. So here we are. So this is the way how you handle SFTP or you work with SFTP. Okay. Now, if you want to exit from SFTP, what you need? Okay, you will type by. Now you are out of SFTB. That is a fi file transfer using SFTB. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about firewall configuration. So in this section of the uh, course, actually, we are going to focus on two things, actually, is firewall configuration and uh, remote syslog or remote system syslogs. So in the first one, we'll talk about uh, firewall. In the second one, we'll make a centralization to the uh, logs. So um, the logs that is coming out of, let's say, for example, you have error logs, you have uh, auditing logs, you have security logs. All of these logs, you can centralize it in one place. Okay, you can redirect it to one place. Uh, so let's get started uh, and see exactly how the firewall configuration. Okay, <clears throat> I'll go to our server here. First of all, you have to check actually if the uh, sorry if uh, system CTL if the service itself is up or no. So you write system CTL status system CTL status firewall service firewall D service so now it will say that it's active and it's running so the uh, firewall service is up and running okay uh, let me we'll see okay I'll clear that then that's at the beginning so now if you want to list the services that already allowed so you have to write the following so firewall you have to write the fire you have to write firewall <coughs> dash cmd firewall dash cmd <coughs> and space dash dash list okay list all now i want to see the old services that allowed okay through the firewall enter it will say let's go up starting from here so for example icmp block no interface sources see nothing is allowed right ICMP blocks, bridge rules, source ports, forward ports, nothing is allowed. Yes. So 
Now we want to, for example, I want to ping the other server, which is, for example, uh, 10.0.0.200, for example. Yeah, I'm able to ping. Okay. So right now I'm in server one. What I'm going to do is I will ping, <coughs> sorry, I will SSH to 10.0.0.200 and it asks me for the password. Okay. Now I am, I am in. I'm able to, to, look, to go to there, to <coughs> the remote server, 200. Okay, let me exit or log out. Okay, I return back to, yeah, to my server. Very good. That means SSH is allowed there, right? Very good. What if I want to... Actually, when I showed you here the old services that allowed or not allowed, nothing actually is blocked till now. So that's what I mean, actually. So we'll start block or allow through this one. Okay. So I will write this comment again. Um, I will, yeah. All. That means still nothing is blocked. Okay. Nothing is blocked till now. So we will fill this. Okay. Clear. So the firewall actually is going to give me the ability to block or allow ports, okay? Especially uh, the TCP and UDP ports. Like, for example, when we talk about HTTP, what is the port number for HTTP? Port 80, right? Okay, so if, for example, I want to block HTTP, I don't want anyone to HTTP to me, I will block port 80. 443 is for HTTPS, right? 2020, uh, sorry, 22 or 20, yeah, 22. 22 actually is for, like, for example, SSH. If I plug 22, that mean, means I will plug the SSH on that server, so, and so on. So, let's look into machine 200, okay, to plug SSH, for example. So, I'm going to go here to this machine, machine 2. 200 <coughs> what I will do actually is I will write firewall <coughs> I will write firewall then what else dash CMD very good now I want to do the following I want to write dash dash remove remove what remove dash Surface. I want to remove a surface, and this surface actually is 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 H. Enter. What? Yeah, it's success. See, you most likely need to use, uh, and it's success. Okay, so if I list right now, so if I write again, firewall, firewall dash cmd dash dash list all. Enter. Now, if you come to, okay, did we read the message carefully? Okay, firewall, you are performing an operation over default zone, public, but your connections interfaces are in zone lib. To use zone libvirt option. Okay, we can copy. Let's see. What I'm going to do is firewall scene B. I won't remove. Let's try to paste it here. Yes. So, <clears throat> because actually, if you write fconfig, um, what will happen? You will find that actually 
it uh, uh, actually it uh, using zones okay and I will explain to you what is zones actually so here this is my the, the interface that I'm using okay okay so he's saying that this interface is in different zone okay so let's for example see okay I will firewall I'll firewall and CMD I will list again and see if you go to okay you go to public for the fold okay mm-hmm Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, Okay, I will try to from that one I will try to SSH to 10.0.0.100 That's very 200 and see So SSH SSH to is saying that the connection to host port two two nor two host. Okay, let me ping again. Then the zero dot zero dot two hundred. Yeah, I'm able to ping. So I cannot connect SSH. So let's remove the SSH. So let me add the surface again and see if it works or no very good so what I'm gonna do is uh, okay firewall firewall dash CMD and I will dash dash at surface um, SSH right enter let me go back here and SSH cool working so now it is working so again let me clear so that's actually it's working by the way and I will show you exactly how to list the services sorry for that but I the command that you should use in order to list okay I will tell you fire wall and dash cmd okay and dash dash list surface enter surfaces haha <laughs> see now this is such is there <clears throat> very good now i want to remove it again so i will write firewall firewall dash cmd then remove remove surface equal ssh and now i want to list surfaces now it say that there is no ssh okay now i want to add it back okay so i will write firewall firewall then dash dash cmd and dash dash add surface ssh now i added it again okay very simple what else we should do actually let's say that i want to enable tenet how can i allow tenet on that server yeah you can write firewall again dash cmd dash dash surface or add 
surface and the surface tilt for example enter so if you come here show or firewall firewall dash cmd add dash surface oh sorry dash dash list surface okay you will find that you added ssh and tilnet ssh and tilnet so clear again if you come back to here if you want to tilnet to 10.0.0.200 you will be able to tilnet it but actually you know what he's saying that the command not found okay so So there is no telnet over here. Okay. <clears throat> it's not available. Okay, so that surface itself is not available here um, to use a telnet. Maybe it needs to be uh, installed. Okay. So clear. And you can come. Um, maybe locate, maybe turn it. See, mm -hmm. okay. Mm, there's no internet. Okay. Anyway, now you know how to open the surface and how you how to uh, list the surface and the firewall. How to add surface to the firewall. How to remove surface from the firewall. Okay. Now, if you let's say for example, I want to add FTP also. You want to add FTP here. Okay, so let's add FTP. So how can I do it? Very simple. So firewall dash cmd dash dash add surface and let's write FTP. So I added FTP, right? Very good. Now let's do the following. Firewall, okay, dash cmd and after that, I will dash dash reload. Okay, I will reload. Now I want to firewall dash cmd and I want to dash dash list surfaces. You will note that everything deleted except SSH. Okay, that's why. Because it's runtime, so you have to keep it. You have to save this using a word permanent. So, for example, so if you write firewall and cmd, let's add, for example, surface, dash dash add, surface equal to, let's say, tilt. Okay. Here you have to type permanent to keep it. So now you firewall dash cmd reload or dash dash reload enter now again firewall dash cmd dash dash list surfaces you will find that till it's still there okay so dash dash permanent will keep things even after reload, reloading okay it will permanently save the things inside of the firewall um, process okay what else we have for, for firewall actually um, <coughs> now uh, for example I want to do the following I want to um, 
I want to add FTP, for example. Okay. And when it remove, uh, when you remove something, actually, let's say, for example, you added something like this. Okay. This is my scenario. So what I'm going to do is a firewall. I write a firewall dash CMD and. Uh, dash dash add dash services and I will type for example FTB FTB enter okay very good so now I will list again so firewall firewall dash CMD dash dash list Services. So I have FTP added here. Very good. So what should I do here? Let's remove it again. So firewall. But I'm sorry. I will. I want to write dash dash permanent. Enter. So I want to list again. Yes, it's there. So what if I want to remove? Okay. So firewall. Firewall dash cmd dash dash remove oh, remove services equal for example ftb enter I removed it right what if <coughs> I want to list services I removed it removed ftb yes it removed what if I reload dash dash reload enter and list again oh FTP is still there because actually it's in permanent wow yeah So when you remove it, just write permanently also firewall dash cmd and dash dash remove um, surface like for example ftp sorry and dash dash permanent so it will be removed permanently okay if you reload if you list it's no longer there FTP is not low it's not there okay so whatever you're adding using permanent you have to remove it using permanent okay what if I want to use a port for example instead of the surface itself okay I will stop the video here because I don't want uh, this video to be long. Actually, I'm, I'm going to stop it here and I will continue in the next video. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to continue talking about the firewall configuration. Last video, we already, uh, I already explained to you or I take you through actually the firewall configura configuration, but we added services by its name. Right now, I want to, for example, let's say, for example, if I want to add a port. So, why port is very important, actually, when you use it, because sometimes people are, uh, or the developers, programmers, or coders, they use different ports for their applications. If, let's say, for example, he developed one of the application and he added a different TCP port, to it so in this case actually how can i block this application this application doesn't have a name famous name like ftp http so the system itself the linux itself will not understand actually how to block by name in this case actually i need the tcp and the udp port to be able to block the program itself so in this case okay i will go to my server okay here and in here actually i will clear and you will use the same command firewall 
dash cmd firewall dash cmd and add in this case i will add dash dash okay add port and the port that you need actually to allow is for example let's say i want to allow 8001 ah but here he will tell you that this one is invalid why because you have to specify with it, whether it is tcp or udb okay now it's success added successfully added to to our things how can i list the ports very good so you have to write firewall dash cmd and dash dash list then here you will choose ports enter you will find that this port added already to the firewall so now you allowed this to p allowed on this server port 8001 to p uh, allowed and actually this is very very dangerous you have to be careful because actually if there's a vulnerable uh, port or the port that has vulnerability and people that scan scan your ser servers and they found this port is open maybe they use it utilize it or they can in uh, cyber security terminology there is something called they will uh, exploit so they are going to exploit this port so you have to be careful when you open port and the close port very good so let's go let's uh, continue okay now we able to add a board okay and we able to list the ports okay what if I want to if I did the same way firewall again firewall and dash CMD and dash dash reload uh, dash dash reload enter and I will list again sorry this ports again now it's gone okay because actually you have to use permanent also with with this okay so i will add the port again i will write firewall okay dash cmd then um after that you will uh, write add port and port number is 8001 and it should be tcp enter now we successfully added it now you want to list ah but you have again don't forget to write for example permanent okay so when you reload when you reload okay and you write firewall dash cmd dash dash list port in this case you will find it again it will not come it will not be removed okay so this is to keep it permanently okay but if i want to for example i want to remove it okay you want to remove the port very easy so you will write firewall and dash cmd then dash dash remove remove port and the port is 8001 tcb enter successfully removed but you didn't type dash dash permanent because i want to remove it permanently so if i list it firewall dash cmd dash dash sorry uh, yeah dash dash list ports you will not find it okay very good so so this is actually about the ports using the tcp and udp ports to block or uh, to allow or to block them yeah thanks for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about remote syslog or remote system logs <clears throat> uh, remote system logs actually um as i told you if you for example have okay let's say that you have a lot of servers inside of your data center or anywhere or you have a PCs, Linux PCs actually. What do you want? Actually, there is logs coming out of the that. There are logs coming out of these machines. Okay, so now you want to centralize all these logs. Okay, 
so you want to centralize all all these logs actually you want to centralize all these logs to one location to one server that's why i'm gonna use this one rsyslog okay i'm going to use rsyslog okay remote syslog so remote syslog is we will centralize the uh, logs here in one of the server let's say for example this is uh, we can say that this is log server, for example, or says log server. Okay, says log server. Okay, it will collect the logs from other places. So we will send the logs to it. Okay, what is the port I'm using to send this says log to it? Okay, uh, we are using this port number five one four. And it should be TCP. Okay, this is a port. Actually, you have to open here. You have to open on that server in order to be able to receive syslog on it. Okay, so you be careful when you go to the server. You have to go to firewall and allow this port. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna make this server as a log collector. Okay, it will collect the logs, logs from other people. So how can we do this? Okay, first of all, I need you to to know the location of logs first. Okay, so for example, if you go ls and var and in here log, there is log. Okay, and in log there is messages. Okay, enter. Yeah. We have the logs saved here in messages. Very good. Uh, if you open, for example, I want to open Veeam. And I want to open that location. So var and log and messages. I want to open this. See? Here are all logs saved. See? It's giving you the logs already that for related to what happened to the system. The errors, security, everything here. See all this, for example, related to kernel. Okay. Okay, let's quit. And I want to write the following. I want to write, for example, tail, okay, and var, var, log, and messages. Enter. It will show us the last 10 lines, okay? Very good. Okay. I will clear that. And what I want to do exactly, okay, I will do the following. I will write tail, then dash if, then again var, log, and messages. Okay, keep it open like this. And try to do the following. <laughs> try to do the following what I'm gonna do I will open another terminal here for example um, sorry control shift n I will open another terminal like this and I will make it a little bit bigger then what I'm gonna do here I will do the following I will write system CTL, okay, stop, system CTL, stop, cron, D service, enter, okay, and I'll come here, okay, let me,
Okay. Control C, write the comment again. If you come back, it will remove the future release. Actually, please consider actually error and behind all these things okay let me enable that again I'll open that one then I will enable that again Enable. What? Okay. This one I want to make it like this. I can see more or bigger. So okay. Okay, control C tail dash F for log message. And Here you can read some messages coming and saved in here. Actually, if you go to server 200, yeah, this is server 200. Wait. Actually, this is this logs is related to server 200. Yes. Why did this? Okay. Okay. This is server two hundred. This is server two one hundred. Okay, no problem. Lagging behind by sixteen. So. Okay. So let me do that many times. No. Let me go to, for example, the second terminal. But you know what? I want to, for example, um, again, system. System CTO. System CTO. And I will stop. Stop Chrome surface and start again start again okay I will write tail dash f and system tail dash f um, var Log message. Ha! <clears throat> ah. mm. See, let's say that there is something stopped and started. <clears throat> System D. Stopping command schedule, scheduler. Ha! Ah. You see that? This is actually what I did. I actually. Chrome D surface is related to scheduling, scheduling, scheduling the surface. It makes the surface run at specific time. 
So this log is actually okay recorded here or saved here. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. Very good. So for example, I'll do something else. Now Okay, let's say, for example, Control C, and I will write SU dash Sara. I think we have Sara here um, as a username. Sara is say that you user share does not exist. Okay. So very good. I think I created on this, uh, this, uh, the first server, server, this one. So what I will log in here now again. What I'm going to do here actually, I will write su dash Sara. Enter. Oh, it's not exist. Oh my God. Okay. So let me log out. I still SSH to the other one. Sorry. Okay. So clear. Now what I'm gonna do is SSH. Uh, let me make 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 it bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I will SU dash Sara. Yeah. Enter. Now I'm in Sara. Now I will. If I already exit, yeah, I will come back to here. Then I will write tail dash f and var log and messages. Enter. You will find here you already logged into SAR. So everything you're doing in the system is coming here and it registered here. It recorded here. So it's very important when as admin you know to know actually that these logs are important to trace and to understand your what what what's going on on your system so this is actually is going to be your reference if there is something wrong happened you have to come back to here to read and to know exactly what happened to your system this is the importance of using the log server and collect and collect and centralize the logs in one place why because it will simplify for you it doesn't need for you to go through individual server one by one and then check the logs you know you will centralize centralize all these logs in one place and it, it's well it's gonna be easy to admin and it's gonna be easy to manage okay so now let's work on redirection Let's work on redirection. First of all, um, I want to control C here. I want to exit. I want to clear. Now, this server 100 is going to be my centralized server. Okay. In order to be able to, um, to collect the logs on it, first of all, you have to do the following. So you have to file. Well, you know, you know, guys, I'm going to do the other server is going to be our, my, things okay so this server 200 is going to be the centralized logs okay so first of all you have to um firewall dash cmd and you have to dash dash list ports to see what are the ports is open see no ports is open so to allow the logs to come to you or syslog to come to you you have to allow the following port so you have to write firewall uh, dash cmd and dash dash add port equal what 514 514 and it has to be tcp uh-huh you forgot to make it permanent tcp and udb as well same port UDP enter now I want to list the ports enter now I have this port maybe it's implicitly allowed 
that one this uh, one five four five form four UDB. Actually, we added UDB also, yeah. So okay, very good. So now at least you uh, added that five form four. Okay, now you allowed the remote syslog port to be allowed on that server. Okay. What I want to do is firewall dash cmd then reload. Okay, dash that sorry. Dash dash. Okay. Okay, dash dash reload. Okay. Very good. Now I reloaded it. Now I want to list the ports again just to make sure. Yes. UDB, yeah, UDB came. So okay, so it need me to reload to see them. Okay, now TCP and UDB are ready. So I will clear that. Now what I want to do is okay. Okay, now I will, what I'm going to do is, I will check the status of rsyslog.surface. Okay, so I will write system, ctl, but you know guys, I will stop the video here and I will continue in the following video. Oh, welcome. We will continue to talk in this video about remote syslog. Okay, in the last video, actually enabled um, port one uh, 514, uh, 514 TCP and UDB on the log server, the server that uh, will receive the logs. Okay, so in this case, actually, what I'm going to do else on that log server, so the first step is to enable the port, the second step is to go to the following file um, there is a file called in etc called rsyslog.conf okay this file you will edit some information on it but actually it's dangerous that's why you want to take backup from it so how can i take backup just rename in the same place etc and the name of the file is syslog dot conf oh, sorry dot conf uh, sorry r syslog r syslog dot conf okay what i'm gonna do actually i will copy uh, I, will, I will take a copy from it okay rc okay r r Sys, r syslog.conf but I will add this old so I will rename it uh, sorry I will copy and rename okay enter so now I take a backup from that one so if I did any mistake on that file it's easy to return or restore from that backup Okay, I'll copy again and I will rename it and I will delete the dot old. In this case, actually, I will restore, restore it. Very good. This is the very, very important step that I need you to take care of. Okay. Now, what should I do next? I will open that. <coughs> I will open that file. Okay. I will open that file so I will write VM and etc r syslog I don't know it's stuck to my mind <laughs> okay r syslog dot conf uh, enter very good you will find that file has modules modules okay it has um, what else? It has global director, direct global directors, 
here directives okay and rules okay on the log server the receiver that the one that we are on right now you have to modify modules so you will go to module part here okay in module what you're going to do is remove the hash <coughs> but you know what okay a little bit more so <coughs> I can see okay there is line here called input port 514 okay what should I do here I will remove the hash from this line and that line module load I remove from this one also okay and after that okay after that what I'm gonna do is Okay, I remove this also. Okay. Right, it's TCP for TCP as well. So UDB and TCP. Okay. I remove that. And sorry, 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 go back, back. And <clears throat> go back here and I remove this now okay what we did okay now we enabled this server to receive logs or syslogs on that server or on that port 514 now I want to skip. <clears throat> I went right and Q. Yeah. Now I saved the change on that file. This is actually on the server. On the server. What about the this is log server? What about the sender? Okay. The person who's gonna send. So the person who's gonna send is 100. So I'll go to 100. This one. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'll go to Veeam. And I'll go to the same file. It's in where? It's in etc r sys r sys log e etc r sys log dot conf. Okay, enter. Now you will go to not modules, you are on the sender right now. So you have to go to down. There is in uh, <coughs> go to down to down. Global directives, rules, yes, you will come in here to rules part, okay, and you get it a little bit like this, yes, now what should I do here? I'll come in here, okay, 
and I will go to this place. You know what I'm gonna go to first? Okay, sorry for that. Okay, I'll go to the beginning of that line. And yes, you know what? Very simple. I will um, DD. Oh, sorry. Test again. So, you know what? I'll escape from here. Uh, Q. Okay, again. Q. And force Q. I don't want to save this change. I will open again. And I will go to rules again. Where is rules? Yeah, if you come back to rules. Here, you are in rules, right? So, this line. Okay. This line, guys. What you're gonna do in this line? In this line, you will change this one sorry writing this okay I'll go out again Q of course I don't want to save you know what for time being to save time etc R is log. Actually, I should take backup, but actually, okay. Now you go down to rules. Okay, where is rules? This rules. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I will come here, I will copy this, then here I paste it. But I'm gonna do is I'll hash it okay then I will change here this place okay I will write what I will write at and 10.0.0 dot what 10.0.0 dot now this will send okay so it will send to 200 so our receiver is gonna be 200 the other server so now save and quit okay after that okay this is the first step on sender second step on sender you have to stop and start you have to um, reload the surface you have to you have to reload the surface yeah I will reload, you know what? I will reload the service on both of them. Sender and receiver. Okay. How can I do it? Anyone can tell me how can I do it? Okay. System, CTL, system, CTL, and what is the name of the service? So, I write reload. R says log. The name of the service is what? Yeah. R says log. But I want to not reload. Sorry, restart. R says log service. Okay. So enter. It will restart. I will restart on the other server as well. This server is going to receive the logs. Okay, so system serial restart R sys log service. Okay. Now I'll go back to the sender. 
this is a sender. Now I will try to, let's say, I will try to change something, okay? Like for example, system CTL, okay? Start system CTL, start for example, current server, service, okay? Or I will stop it. Stop. And start again. Okay. Now I go back here. What I'm going to do is tail dash f and where I go var log and messages enter what you will see here what you guys can see here you will see the logs of server 100 right so now this one this server 100 is able to send the logs okay i will do something else su dash sara enter okay logout okay i'll go back to that server okay he say that 100 is sending that Sara logged in and logged out. Okay. See, tail dash f uh, is giving you the live. Actually, what whatever you're doing here is it appears here. So, okay. You know what? Okay, and I will. This is a one. Uh, this is two. This is one. Okay. I'll try to do some things. And you notice what what happening for example i will stop cron surface see the logs is coming directly to the second server so this server okay this server is sending to this server 200 okay again i will start it see so tail dash f it will show you the live logs that's coming to the logs what if for example, SU, SU to SARA and password, wrong password. Yeah, say see, failed. <laughs> SARA try, tried to log in, but it failed. Okay. Authentication failed. Okay. SU, because I wrongly put, okay. Root. See, see how the how how the logs is coming. Okay, here. Very very good. Okay. Now the question is, okay. Now let's say that if I have a lot of servers, okay. Now this is a very important question. Actually. Uh, let's say that we have a lot of servers sending uh, data here. So in this case, actually, I will uh, I will com get confused. I, I need something to classify <coughs> the messages. How can we classify it? Hmm. Um, okay. What I'm going to do is Control C. There is a, a command. Okay, let's come here. Okay. Okay. I'll copy this, the name of the server. Okay. Copy. Then I'll come back to my second server, the log server, and I will write grip. Grip what? Grip the server name, the other server name. Okay. Var log 
messages. Aha, uh -huh. it will give me all logs coming from server 100, right? Very good. So grip, grip the name of the server and the file. Yeah, this is to filter exactly by server name. Yeah, what you can do else? I can do a very good thing. I can redirect because you remember redirection. So you can redirect this result. So you can take, it's like you are taking a copy from this logs related to server 100 to another file. So what you can do actually is to grip and uh, server name, server 100 and var and log and messages then you will redirect where redirect to for example this location take it anywhere okay you need i'll put for example root put it in for example the name of the server i'll create another i create dot log for example or underscore log and dot for example txt so enter now if you cat this one dash root dash server log dot txt you will find the same result okay so you copied the logs that related to this server uh, in a separate file so it's easy to be uh, follow up everyone uh, and you will not get confused because if you have a huge list of servers they are all of them they are sending logs in one place so you can filter and you can classify okay that was for remote syslog thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome this tutorial we are going to talk about archiving and compressing archive and compress okay so let's at the beginning um, understand or know the difference between archiving and compressing so people they misunderstand actually or they are confusing between both of them because actually both of them has <clears throat> or have different function by the way so if for example if we talk about archive archive mean what archive means backup backup you are taking backup to the to your data so by using by making archiving you are doing backup to your data or are you creating backup for your data what about compress compress is to reduce the size to reduce the size of the data okay or, or of the files okay reducing the size this is the difference by the way so archiving is backup compress is to reduce the size very good or to save space by another meaning okay or, or in another meaning okay uh let's talk first about archiving archiving data archiving data archiving data now you want to archive data okay so uh, we have this tar this tool actually or this command actually will give you the ability to archive the data or to create archive so so what you are gonna do is you will use tar to list the archive First of all, to create the archive, to list the archive, and to extract. Okay, so you are using this tool to, to create, to list, and to extract. Okay, what about compress? What about compress? Compressing data compress 
Compress, there's a tool called gzip, gzip, and bgzip, bzip, sorry, bzip, bzip2, okay? So archiving, we are using tar, and compress, we are using gzip and bzip2. <coughs> Let's talk about compressing, okay? Compress files. Um, in compress files, actually, you need to do the following. You need to list the content of compressed files. List, okay? You need to extract. Okay, so you need two things in compress, to list, to extract, okay? And of course, to Compress, right? Okay, very good. So there is tool doing both of them, archive and compress. Archive plus compress. This tool is zip. Okay, it's doing the two functions, by the way. Okay, so let's go to our Linux and, okay, and see. If I create, for example, touch, let's see exactly where I am. B, B, I am in root. Okay, what I'm going to do actually is to touch or, okay, sorry, ls, okay. <clears throat> I have files, okay, clear, very good. Now what I want you to notice here, touch, for example, firewall. Okay, and ls-l file one. You will find here the size is zero, okay, right? Size is zero, right? Very good. See, I'm gonna do the following. Okay, I will write, I will open Veeam, file one, and in here I will uh, write some text, okay, like this, and so on. Okay. Now I want to save. So Diablo Q. Now I saved. Again, ls dash l file one. Now size became a bit more than before. It's not zero right now. Very good. But actually, it's in K, not in Pi. So, not in, uh, yeah. So, it's a very small one. So, I want to uh, do the following. See? What I'm going to do is I'm going to cat and file one and redirect, redirect this to file two. Okay? And I will that do that redirect to redirect file 2 to file 3 and I will redirect file 3 to file 4 oh file 3 to file 4 and File 4 to file fi 5. Ah, uh, to file 5. File 4. And file 5 to file 6. 
and file 6 to file 7. Very good. Now what I have right now, if ls dash l, you will find all these files being created, right? So, okay, what I'm going to do is I will cat. The last one, one is file 7, right? So what I'm going to do is I will do the following. I will cat file 1, file, sorry, file 7, and I will redirect it to file uh, not file, but work one. Okay, very good. Now what I'm gonna do is, um, I will remove dash f file asterisk enter. Now ls dash l. All, all, uh, all files deleted, okay, work still there, and okay, why it's, uh, okay, cat, work one, only this, <coughs> hmm, What happened? Okay, I want to increase the size. There is a way to increase the size, right? Okay, ls dash lh work one, right? So you will find the size is four 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 four. Okay, I want to increase the size. How can I increase the size? So cat file one or sorry work one. to file one now cat file one what is this okay file cat file one To let's say file two. Now I will cat file two. So file two now has two. Yeah, we copied it two times to file two, right? Cat. Oh, sorry. Cat file two. File three cat file 3 to file 4 and 5 4 now I want to ls dash lh to file 5 file 5 what the hell? Okay, so cat file five. So actually, it's not redirecting. It should append, right? Okay, I will delete rm rm dash f file. I will delete all the files and even I will delete okay so now what I have cat work one right okay now I'm gonna do cat file or work one two five File one. File one. Cat. 
file one. Okay, this is file one. Okay, I'll cat work one again to file one again. Cat file one. Yeah, it's COVID now. So I'll keep doing the same process many times. Yeah. Again and again. So now I will <coughs> vim file one and go down yes we got a big file right now right very good very good this is what i need okay so skip and quit now what i will do i will rm work one yes ls we have file one i will ls dash lh file one file one now it became 7.4k okay very good you want to increase right okay very good we can do the, the following cat file one put it in file one on file for example and again Again, again, again. Now I want to get a big file, you know. What the hell? Okay. Now, let's ls dash lh to file. Mm-hmm. Became bigger. So, again, 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 again. Again. Okay, now ls again, dash lh, file one, or file, okay, oh. Very good. Very awesome. Now I have this, and what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna cat. So I have file, file one. I will file one or I cat file to file two. And to file three. and to file four okay very good now i have ls dash lh file two file three file four Okay, so I have a group, a group of files, and these files are actually big. They have big size. So let's now get to start and do our test. Okay. What I will do actually is... <coughs> First of all, I will archive that. Okay. How can I do it? How can I create archive? There is something called tar, okay? So tar. Tar has some options with it, okay? C, V, F, okay? Let's, for example, tar and C, V, F, okay? C, V, F tar cvf and file 
for example, asterisk. Okay, what will happen in this case? Okay, but before file, I have to put here arc. Okay, arc, for example, arc1 dot, for example, tar. I will archive the files, any file, start with file name and end with anything. I will archive it in a file called archive1.tar. So enter right now. See, it says that we archived one, two, three, four, five files, right? ls you will find the tar one here where is it arc this is the one okay so we archived it means that we took backup from these files right okay let's delete this right this file these files yeah we can delete them like this rm rm f five, right? That's just and enter. Now ls, there is no files. Now we lost the data. Now we want to return the, the data back again, right? How can? Okay. First of all, let me list what is inside archive one. Okay. Tar tf okay t for list f for file so tar tf archive one dot tar enter now it will tell me that this file has file file one file two file three and file four very good now i want to extract the archive how can i ex extract it so i will write tar X for extract, okay, V, F, okay, arc, A, R, arc, arc one dot tar, and archive them here, enter, what happened, ls, oh, you will find the files came back again to the same place, right, very good, yeah, So now we extracted, we listed, and we extracted. Okay, now I want to archive them again. Okay, in, for example, arc2. Okay, and arc2. What I'm going to do is tar to archive, cvf, cvf, and arc2 arc2 will archive in arc2 file enter what happened ls we have now two files okay i think they are same okay so if you write for example ls dash lh enter what will happen if you go to here Okay, 1.1, 1 .1 make. If you go back to 1.1, 1 .1 make also. So the size is the same. Okay, if you calculate this for, you will find the sum of them is same like the archived one. Right? Yes. There is a comment, okay, called, for example, file. Because some people they ask it why you put dot arc in, in the first one and you didn't put dot sorry you put dot tar in the beginning the first one and you didn't put it in the second one both are same but actually we dot we put dot tar just for our reference okay to be easy to uh, classify that this file is or it's easy to filter. And says that this is a archived one. So 
there is a file there is a command called file to note the type of the of the file for example if i type r file arc enter or arc2 enter it says it's star it's archive what if i for example file 1 it said it's a text okay see okay what about file dot tar file arc one dot tar it says also archive so there is no difference between both of them but actually we put tar just for our reference okay very good that is the archiving okay um okay i'll stop the, this video here and uh, I'll see you next video and thank you for watching guys, okay? Hello, welcome. This tutorial we are going to continue talking about uh, archiving and compress. Actually, we have finished archiving and we will talk about compress. How can we compress? And as we already said that uh, archive is to, back, to back up the files, uh, compress is to um, save space or to reduce the size. So we will start with uh, compressing okay files and as we said that we use gzip and bzip2 okay and in compress also you need to list and you need to extract okay there and we said that there is a tool uh, there is a tool doing the two uh, functions okay uh, archiving and compress which is zip okay uh, today or in this tutorial we are going to talk about compress so actually uh, let's start okay i'll go to our server and let's see i will clear this and in here actually i will write ls dash lh now i have all these files okay and i want to compress them okay how can i compress them very good. So, um, okay. But before that, actually, what? Uh, okay. So, for example, uh, let, let, let me let me let uh, me gzip. Okay. And I will gzip archive file. So I will just gzip R, for example, R1, and enter. If you ls dash lh, you remember R1? Where is R1? This is R1. Okay. R1 size is 1.1, but after I uh, gzip it, okay, ls dash lh arc one what is arc one it became 5.2 k because it became see if you if you notice here it became dot gz so i gzip that actually so it, i reduced the size its size before it was 1.1 meg now it became 5k okay that's awesome right okay very good so gzip uh, is to um compress okay yes what if i want to um like for example um uh, i want to, to do this gzip gzip with one of the files let's say for example file 4 okay file 4 for example okay i want to zip file 4 gzip file 4 enter so ls dash lh for example, file 4. File 4 became dot gzip gz. Yes. See, in here actually the size became 1.3. From 273k, it became to 1.3k. Okay, very less, right? Very good. Now, what I want to do is I want to, uh, for example, now it became compressed. This file became compressed, right or no? 
Yeah. So let's, for example, I want to read the text inside this file. How can I read it if I write li write like this file? For gzip, it will see how it it read it because it compressed because it, it compressed. That's why it's not giving the clear text. So what I'm gonna do is gcat the file for enter. There is no gcat command not found. Okay, very good. Uh, sorry, zcat. Zcat and file for. Now I'm able to read it. I'm able to read the file, right? Right or wrong? Yeah, very good. I'm able to read it. Very good. So zcat, okay, when you want to read a compressed file, you have to write Z, zcat, okay? What about more? More file for. To work? No. So in this case, actually, no such file. No. See again, it's giving you this. Um, Z more, Z more, and file four. You can read it. Okay, very good. This is with gzip. Okay, when you compress a file. To extract a file, okay, you do the following: g unzip. G unzip is going to extract, okay, or un or in in compress, okay, file for gzip. Now, if you ls dash dash lh file for enter, you will find it came back again okay this is for compressing okay sometimes when you download file from internet you find it like for example package uh, one dot r dot gzip so uh, the same like this one ls dash lh enter same like this one sometimes when you download a file from the internet you'll find it like this so in this case, it uh, archived that it, it compressed both. Uh, po yani we applied both things on, on it, right? Yes. In, 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 if you find a file like this, what you what you should do actually? Um, gzip, okay. Gzip this file. It's gzip, okay? This file is gzip, compressed by gzip. Sorry, it's uh, compressed, sorry. This file is compressed and archived both, right? Uh, see, gzip, uh, this tool is, you can find it in the most of the distros. What are the distros? Distros actually, as I uh, say, these distros, the Linux versions, like for example, we are right now using CentOS. There is another version of called Red Hat. There is um, what you say, um, Suze, or uh, there is also Debian. Okay, so these are called distros or uh, versions of Linux. Okay, gzip is exists, or you can find it on most of the distros. Gzip. Okay. What about bzip? Two, bzip two, bzip two, bzip two. Actually, it's maybe available in one, but not in the other. Okay, let's use it. For example, with it, you have to use v, bzip dash v, and let's comp uh, let's compress. For example, file file four again or file file one. Okay, now what happened? Actually, it's compressed. See even more than uh, gzip, right? Very good. It's saved around 98 from the space. Good. <clears throat> but don't forget that uh, inside the file that I created, I repeated the, um, I repeated the letters. That's why it uh, compressed this much. 
if you for example cat file actually you see this this letters repeated many times so when you compress it it takes this to one only okay this is a way of compressing okay so uh, let me clear this so what we did actually the last pzip uh, bzip 2 dash v file one right ls dash lh file one enter uh, no such file dot what dot bzip2 see the extension here is bzip2 enter that is the file that we compressed using bzip2 so we took tar for archiving we took gzip to compress and we took bzip2 to compress also and as we said the difference between gzip and bzip2 gzip you will find it on the most of the disk stores but bzip2 maybe it's available on one but not available on the other okay cool oh yeah um, now I want to read okay I want to read using cat for example I will read cat file uh, file one dot bzip2 see again I cannot use cat to read it there is something called bz bz cat bz cat and file Two, for example, file two dot file one. Sorry, file one dot enter. Now I can read it. Bzip, bzip, our pz more or pz cat. So pz more also is working. Pz more, pz more file two dot or file one dot pz. I can read also. Okay, so easy more easy cat you can read the file that compressed by bz okay bz2 bzip2 okay what about uh, what about list okay if i write list and file one dot bz2 list is reading any file okay List is reading any file. Okay. Q. Yeah. Less is reading any file. So write less again. And for example, file four. File four. Okay, we already uncompressed. Right. It can read anything. Q. Okay. What if if I want to extract a file uh, compressed using uh, pzip2? P unzip2. P un zip2 and file one dot pz2. Now ls dash lh file one. It's there. Okay. So we uncompressed it. P unzip2. Right. Um, this is about compress. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we already compressed the file, right? What if I want to? Uh, sorry, we are we, we archived files. What if I want to archive? Uh, folder or directory okay yeah I can do this right okay so let's create uh, uh, mk dire or let me write ls there is data here there is no data right so I will create um, MK dire uh, MK dire and data uh, data now I created a directory called data CP copy file 
inside of that. So ls data, you will find that I copied these files, file, file 1, file 2, file 3, file 4 inside of that. ls dash lh, you will find that data here. Okay. Okay. Now I want to archive data. How can I archive it? Mm -hmm. Think about it. I will write tar. Okay. And after that, um, tar. Okay. CVF, CVF, tar CVF, okay? And data, I will archive data dot and I will say dot tar. Oh my god, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I will archive data. And I will call it data dot tar. Enter. What happened? LS. Okay, so this is data. And okay. Again. Again. Oh, I'm sorry. Tar, I have to write tar CVF. Tar CVF data dot tar for data. I will archive data in this name. So ls dash lh, you will find that data dot tar is, is already there. Okay, we created it just now what ca what can we do actually how can we list okay you will write tar dash or t to list um, so tar tf to data dot tar enter you will list what's inside data right okay so tar t f what if i want to extract how can i do this very easy. So you write tar, tar, then xvf, xvf data dot tar. Now you extracted data again. So ls dash lh, there is no, yeah, you extracted it here. Fine. Right. Very good. This is for compressing and for archiving. Yeah. Uh, in compressing, we used zip, right? We used uh, uh, gzip and bzip too, right? Gzip and bzip too. Yes. Exactly. What, what if I want to remove, for example, um, RM, remove data dot, for example, tar. What happened here? Remove regular file data. I will say yes. See, here in tar, actually it deleted it one time. But if you want to delete directory, it will keep asking you about the inside files. Right? Otherwise, you can use dash R to recursively delete without asking, uh, deleting the inside files one by one or more. Okay, so clear here. And this is about the 
archiving and co compressing. Right? Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about package management. What is package management? You have a program and you want to install it perfectly, like in Windows. You have a package and you want to install it, right? Okay. In, in Linux, how can I install a package? Very good question. In um, Let's first give you an introduction about the packages and how Linux deals with packages. Um, from uh, the very beginning, I want you to, for example, um, to understand the, that uh, when you download any package for Linux, you will find it like this. Package name, the package name, and what, and the version, and the arc, architecture, I mean that if it is 64-bit or 86 like this or 32 bit okay then after that the rpm what is rpm rpm means red hat package management right rpm because actually rpm is a uh, same choice is like uh, red hat so yeah this extension is going to be applicable for both of them right okay this is as a, at the beginning um for for, for the applications, actually, if you, I'll make it a little bit, um, or I'll simplify, uh, uh, I'll give you an example, actually. Um, for example, if you want to install a package on uh, Linux or in Red Hat, on Red Hat or in, on CentOS, um, there is something called Internet Repository, or there is something called Repository, okay? And the Repository itself, okay, the repository itself, I will take like this. Okay, there is a repository. Uh, this repository, okay, repo. So, yeah, we can call it repo, repository. Repo, the two, three. Okay, this repository has the application or has the, the packages inside of it. Okay, but there are two kinds of repository. Okay. Two kinds of repository. Repository in internet on internet. So uh, when you uh, try to install the package on well, on Linux, it can go to it first go to the internet and it's check the repository on the internet and it grab it from there or fetch it from there. But you can also you have the ability to create it locally <clears throat> on Linux itself, look on, inside on prem. <clears throat> okay. Uh, for your information, actually, Red Hat, if you are dealing or if you are going to deal with Red Hat, Red Hat has a repository on the internet, but this one you have to pay in order to get the packages and in order to, uh, uh, yeah, because actually you have to pay for the packages because actually these packages has upgrade and uh, they are maintaining it, okay? So you have to pay to it, for it. In CentOS, it's free. By the way, but there is no support on it. That's why, because it's free. Okay. Uh, yes, exactly. So this is about Rebo. This is about Rebo. Um, now um, we uh, when we installed actually Linux, okay. Uh, if you remember, we put the ISO, uh, the ISO file, right? The ISO file, the, the ISO file itself, the CD or the DVD uh, of the uh, um, the system itself, it has packages on 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 it. Okay, it has packages on it. Okay, so for example, if I want to see and check if um, this DVD has packages or no. Okay, you can do the following. Yeah. You can write ls, okay? And to be able to reach the media or DVD, okay, you have to type, type the following. Run, you will go inside of run, and you will choose media. Okay, in media, there is something called root. And inside of root, there is the name of the package, okay? 
now sorry it's sent to us okay sent os or c e okay you know what i can go up out here one second i'll go to download so i downloaded the package here start with capital c e and t let me check c e n yes this is a dvd right okay inside of the dvd okay that i used to install linux okay there are packages okay these packages you will find it where okay you will find it on for example um sorry a app stream inside app stream and inside app stream there is what there is packages haha <laughs> we have packages inside of this directories or this path okay now i want to ls you will find a lot of packages here because actually see it's a huge number of packages exist that's why it takes time to uh, to show them okay <clears throat> see these all are packages and actually it's rpm red hat package management okay these are the packages existed on the dvd itself fine Very good. <clears throat> there is another location also has uh, on the DVD has uh, uh, has back packages uh, like uh, Pepe's OS. Yeah. So if you write this pass packages, you can write, for example, Pepe's. There is no Pepe's. Actually. It's an in upstream. There's something called phase. Um, upstream, there is phase. Yeah, that th maybe this is in Red Hat, by the way. Okay, there's something phase OS, phase OS. Okay, so packages. It's not there, so only packages. Okay, very good. Okay, this is actually what I mean by the packages that exist on DVD. You can install local repository on the machines, okay, instead of going to the internet to download the packages. Of course, we can do this. You need to, in, you need in, in order to install a package like this, for example, Yelp or whatever, uh, as we will see, okay, XORG all these are packages actually okay there's something called birth manager virtual manager to enable uh, to you to enable the, to use virtualization actually like uh, v, uh, like um, virtual player or workstation vmware workstation this virtual manager uh, is there is, is is there also to be used as a virtual player or a vm workstation player so you can install vms on it okay uh, in order to be able to uh, install <coughs> a package, you need an installer, right? Okay. In uh, Red Hat and CentOS, you have two things actually you can use in order to be able to install uh, packages like RPM, something called RPM, and something else called YAM. And what is the difference between both of them? Okay. In RPM, actually, RPM, if the package itself has dependencies, like for example, uh, when you install, uh, some packages needs dependencies. Me, what, what, what do I mean by that? Dependence, dependencies, when you install the package, it will request from you to install something else because it will tell you that I depend on other packages in order to be able to install me, please install the other packages first. That's called dependencies. So, Packages itself, it depends on dependencies. RPM, 
is not able to will not be able to install the, the dependencies that's the uh, you can say that the pros and cons, cons of uh, uh, of uh, rpm actually yum is gonna be capable to see the uh, dependencies right okay so let's get started with them and uh, see exactly how can we use it let's go to for example rpm first so rpm i will use rpm dash q rpm dash q rpm dash q for for example patch i want to know if the patch is there or no it says that it's there what about ksh it's a kind of shell you remember that ksh ksh is installed or no it say that not installed ksh not installed very good so this command rpm dash q will um, show you which package is installed or no okay it will show you whether the package is installed or no this is for the listing software okay what about if i write for example rbm rbm dash q for example firefox firefox he says that uh, it's installed and this is the version actually of the firefox very good um what if i want to list all so you write rpm rpm dash q rpm dash q dash dash all enter it will give you all packages that are installed on your machine okay it's uh, as simple as 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 like that okay very simple like this very good <clears throat> What if, for example, I want to install something, okay? I want, for example, I want to install KSH. I will write RPM, RPM, then space, dash IV, dash IVH, dash IVH. What is IVH? I for install, V for verbose, H for hash. Hash means it will make arrows like this to see uh, while it's uh, installing or while it's running, okay, it will show you the development of an installation where it reach, okay? For example, 10%, 20%, 90%, 90% until it reach to the end of the installation, okay? So it will show you the hashing, okay? Very good. Let's try to uh, install KSH, for example. Okay, I will install it from media. So I will go to... You remember where is media exist and run yeah exactly and go to media and inside of media there is something called root and inside of the root there is something called capital cn centers and uh, here i'm going to use upstream appstream and from appstream there is packages and packages there is ksh I don't know. KSH. Yeah, KSH is there. I want to install. Yes, now it says that 100% installed. So if you write RPM dash Q, sorry, RPM space dash Q space KSH, enter. It said that it insta it's already installed. Fine. Now you installed one of the packages on your system. Fine. Yeah. What if I want to uninstall it? Very easy. So you write RPM, RPM dash E, and you will write KSH, enter. And now again, KS, uh, uh, sorry, RPM dash Q, K, S, H, enter, it's uninstalled. So if you want to install it again, you will go to this location you want to install and you want to list it, you can list it. Okay, that's simple. Okay. Um, as I told you, RPM is not checking the dependencies. So if any package depend on other packages, it will not check it, okay? Very good. Like for example, if I if I want to 
if I want to install, for example, RPM, and I want to install, for example, for the slash one. Oh my God. Okay, right, RPM and run. I, mm, RPM dash, I'm sorry, should has IV, IV option, IVH, okay. Uh, and run. And after that, there is media. There is uh, inside of media this root, inside of the root there is C and centers, and inside of centers there is apps stream, and uh, I want to install VRT. VRT is there. Maybe V. Virtual manager. Vert dash Vert dash mm. Vert dash Manager mm. Vert manager Okay Vert dash manager dash two says that okay so RPM okay mm. what I'm gonna do <laughs> I will write the ls enter so okay what I'm gonna do is I will use what are these guys I will use for example let's use other ls right and enter Reboot data, okay. Packages and reboot data. Aha! Uh -huh. So I have to write. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Packages first, then VIRT. And VIRT, we have many VIRT. Let's take, for example, Virtual Manager version, version 3. Right? Virtual Manager version 3. Okay. Vert dash man user dash three. Enter. Ha ha. It, what it says here? What it say here? It say that. Um. Oh. Oh my God. Because actually, this is a very big mistake. I have to use RPM dash dash what dash IVH IVH enter. What does it say here? It says that virtual manager okay failed because there are dependencies. This this is what I wanted to show you failed because there are dependencies right very good so um, now um, I will use for example yum to install okay I will use use yum to install okay Let's try with yum, for example, and see what will happen. What's happening? Yum. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. I will remove this. Enter. It says that no such command. Run. Yum. Okay. See, I'll uh, postpone this. Okay. And I will talk about. Uh, let's clear this. Okay. I'll postpone this. And I will talk about. Uh, how to make local repository okay and i will go back to yum again okay thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to continue talking about uh, package management in the last video we already talked about rpm when we talk about introduction introduction of package management and as we said actually in the repository for repository we have local repository and internet repository internet internet and local okay very good see um, if I go to here last time I told you I will show you how to use yum okay if I use yum here and for example I write virtual something uh, sorry uh, yum and install yum install and virtual and the name of the package okay it will go to the internet it will go to the repository for CentOS os in the internet and it will uh, grab it and it will install it we can it we can do it from the dvd <coughs> yes we can do that where is it in run media and inside of the media there is what there is root and inside of the root there is Synth OS and inside of it there is um, AppStream and there is packages and in the packages there is something called VIRT dash manager dash three enter now what is say fail to download metadata for repo AppStream cannot prepare so uh, it can go to the internet and it cannot fetch um, there is see it's giving you exactly the mirror list CentOS this is actually the the repository of what repo, the repo of the CentOS so you can download it from here so you can download it can resolve host name for this one because it's trying actually to go and fetch some of things or some of the dependencies which is not exist on the dvd that's why it's trying to go to the internet to reach it and uh, because this server doesn't have internet so i am not able it's not able to go and pitch it okay very good uh, what i will do um now i will make a local repository yes we can do local repository local repository is very important because um um you can do or you can centralize one of the repository on your inside on prem on your inside of your network okay so uh, the other servers can fetch from it okay this one side other side actually is uh, is going to be more safe actually because you will uh, test the uh, packages before you can test the packages before you install or you before you deploy inside of your network or inside of your uh, organization so uh, if it has any problem so it will not affect the whole organization or the whole um, um, uh, environment so in this case actually how can we how can we do the local repository you have to go through steps okay in order to be able to do it first of all you have to create directory for your package after that you have to copy the packages to your directory so Create directory. Um, I will delete that, and I will write in here. First of all, you have to create directory. Create, create directory, and after creating directory, you have to copy packages to the, your directories. Copy packages. to that 
directory okay and configure your system to use your local repo configure your system to use your the local to use local repo okay yeah how can you do this by go to etc and inside etc there is something called yum dot yum dot repo okay yum dot repos dot d okay very good yeah so let's get started let's create I'll show you how to do the steps I want to clear here and I will make the directory first four so mk dire um, let's create it inside of bar so inside of bar I'm gonna create my repo enter so I created the directory now second thing I have to copy what you will copy copy dash R okay for what let's copy run media for example root and sent OS and um, upstream and upstream upstream I'll copy upstream the whole upstream inside my var um, my repo okay yes enter enter now it's copying right yeah it takes time sometimes because actually it's a big a huge file so it takes some time what if i want to see the development of uh, the copying okay Control c to stop and in here you can put for example v right enter what's this yes oh my god it will ask for all override yes override because it covered so this will take a long time by the way It's copied a lot of things, you know. So, what can we do actually? You know what? Control C and just ls. Inside of the var, I created my repo, right? I have AppStream, so I will delete it. So, what I'm gonna do is I will rm um, var my repo. App Store. So dash R dash R F enter. So what is this? Yeah, now I can fulfill that again. Now it will go. So now it's copying and it show me while it's copying. It's copying all RPM on from the DVD it's go it's putting in, in my repo okay
so <clears throat> I can stop the video so we can uh, so we can save time by the way so now let's check actually I copied uh, so we finished uh, finished the step two uh, so we created the directory after that we copied the packages inside of that directory now the third step the third step actually the very important one and the third step actually what I'm gonna do is I will open this directory okay so what I'm gonna do is g edit g edit and I will open etc um, yum dot repos okay and um, for the slash my my repo my repo okay so vim this one okay my repo I will create okay my repo so inside of yum repos D I will create my repo my repo dot repo okay enter says that couldn't connect connection refused cannot open this play okay so no problem I will write V I will write V and etc and yum and uh, dot repos dot d okay my repo my repo dot repo for example okay enter now it created this file right so what I'm gonna do let me exit Uh, I will write, oh sorry, escape, I will write, I will write anything, then escape, then WQ. Very good. Now I g-edit, so it will be faster and easier. g-edit to etc, yum, to repo and my repo to repo what happened connection refused unable to so warning okay anyway Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll use this one, Veeam. What it is? Okay. G edit. G edit. For example, report. G edit report one. Ah, cannot. So, okay. No problem. I will, I will write Veeam. Then, after that, uh, etc yum dot ribos my ribos dot ribo enter and in here actually what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> I will do the following first of all I will write I will write this app app stream Okay, enter. <coughs> Name is equal upstream. Okay. Uh, 
name is equal upstream phase URL phase URL is equal to if it is um, you can say that for example if you if you write FTP and for example dash dash the IP 10.0.0.100 so people can come and fetch from it or if it is local so you can write this file okay file phase URL is gonna be okay um, file colon for the slash bar and my repo and for the slash app stream okay after that this is the page URL you write enable equal one and there is something called G G P G check GBG check what is GBG check and you will make it zero if you make it on that means it will check the signature of the application okay and if it is on it will check the signature of the application and it will confirm that if it is from Red Hat or no but zero it will not check the signature it will accept any signature okay fine So by that, actually, I will escape and WQ enter. Now let's use yum install, for example, KSH enter. Okay, let's go. yum install ksh he says that downloading metadata repository okay okay so we saved everything and we already bought our Our file, right? V my repo the repo, right? Very good. So now what I'm gonna do is I will maybe because actually I didn't copy everything from so may it may be not exist. So what I'm gonna do is I will ls mm-hmm so ls um or you know what yes ls for the slash where did i copy it okay i copied it where so i copied it in um uh, I copied it in var, right? My repo. So ls var my repo, right? I will ls uh, sorry ls and for slash var my repo upstream. There is packages and there is repo data. Mm -hmm what inside it this package uh, sorry um packages i have these packages okay we can install anything instead mm, we can install this one These are, these are the packages that I copied. I didn't copy all of them. So, no problem. 
let's let's for example HTTP components uh, let's install this max for honest pull honest pull AR honest pull AR okay so so yum install I'm a spill. Okay, so let's go to here. Anything from this? Okay. Copy. Let's see how install. Paste, enter. Still looking to. Yeah, error during downloading beta data for repository. Still going there. So I'll go to clear. I'll go to Veeam or V, the same file again. You remember step three? Okay, I'll go to again to that file, Vim, etc, yum, dot, repo, dash, dot, d, my, repo, dot, repo, enter. Mm -hmm. So I put upstream. And I put the name upstream and the base URL. Mm -hmm. Base URL file. Maybe there is a mistake bar. My repo upstream enable one and gpg check zero. Mm -hmm. We can. Do the following. We can write here also base o OS base OS and name equal to base. OS actually we don't have it this okay phase phase URL phase URL is equal to file var my repo phase Oh, yes. Okay. Enabled. Should write enable. Enabled. Enabled. Equal to one. And GP check equal to zero. So you go here, maybe D. Okay, I'll go to escape and WQ enter. I'll try the last time actually. So, you guys, you can try it for from yourself or you can find it on the internet. You will, you will find it easily. So I will try to install KSH enter. Yo! What's going on? Yes. Now it's trying to find it. 
uh, see it's trying to find it in pays OS it says it's not there by the way so if you copy it, copy it inside this directory it will look to it it will look here okay so you can find it on the media and you can copy it so you can find it on the media and you can copy it it will work definitely it will work okay um, so we successfully created the local thing what about if for example okay if you copy let's copy anything okay so you know what I'm gonna do is I will copy from media um, run media um, root CentOS DVD AppStream and I will copy for example um, KSH AppStream KSH this KSH or no? There is what an upstream. There is mm. okay. Let me ls first. Sorry, guys, you have to be patient. Ls okay. Um, I'll copy from packages. My god, I'll copy from. I'll say CP from upstream packages. There is KSH or no? There is KSH. I'll copy it where? I'll copy it on into into where? <clears throat> var my repo. And hmm, put it where put it in something called base OS. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ls var my repo. Base OS enter. It has what? Sorry, by the way. Copy this RPM. Copy. And in here, I'll paste it. Ashkana. So Enter How did I create it? Okay, you know what? I'm sorry I'll copy it uh, No, I will not copy it I will ls Yeah, L sorry guys I will ls this one. There is okay ls dash lh enter. Oh, sorry. Ls dash 
Yelich. Enter. Oh, oh, oh. So ls here. So I'll put ls. Says that all these are files. Okay, I want to put it inside. So I'll create a folder directly called PageOS. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to inside var and inside of the var is as we did my repo right inside my repo I'm going to create mk dire let's delete this first um, rm dash r rm dash r rm dash r f and i will remove um phase phase os now i removed it very good now what i'm going to do is i will create mk dire called phase Oh yes, enter. Now, what I'm going to do is I will copy yeah, phase Oh yes, I'll copy that inside BizOS. <coughs> Enter. Give me ls var my repo in BizOS. Yes, we covered it inside. Now I want to yum install. I hope it's working now. Install and k sh enter c t where is it actually we are trying to install here and it say you have enabled the checking of packages via gpg keys this is a good thing. However, you don't have any GPT public keys installed. You need to download the keys, right? But I didn't, you know, enable the GPT guys. GPT key, key is zero, right? So, okay, so let's see, for example, yum, I will write yum. Um, if you want to list something installed yum info uh, ksh what it will say it will say that centos um, 8 upstream error during downloading metadata okay very good so that means it's not installed so yum this is to list the software so yum info okay for example virtual vert dash manager it's not there as well so if you want to try it so you can for example go to the file that we created you remember the file that we created yes in step three yeah where is it we put it on where on etc yum repos right so if you go to Beam and you go to etc, go to repo, repos, or oh, sorry, my repos, my rep, oh, sorry, etc, and yum, yum dot repo, repos d, then the, the name of the file, my repo, my repo, 
dot ripple enter yes in here gbg check we did it uh we wrongly gbg okay so insert should be gpg so we did it mistakenly by the way so uh the enabled enabled why like this Ah, uh, I hope that okay. Double Q, enter. Okay, what happened? Read only Y. Okay. Double Q, exclamation mark. And okay. Press enter to type command continue. Yes. What happened, guys? So name upstream is OS and we can GPT is enabled so WQ can't open file for writing. Okay anyway, so we can Q it, Q, okay, no problem, Q, ah, I'm using Sara, what the hell, okay, this U, dash, root, okay, I am using Sara, okay, so, again, I'll go to Veeam, etc yum dot repos and my repo and in here actually I have gp g and here we have enabled okay and skip wq now let's try yum okay yes ah yum install don't forget that install so it's trying to go to here so you guys actually see this is actually the steps so I may made something wrong okay so please try to search for it okay and I'll search from my side as well until I find it and I will show it for you but I'm sorry for wasting your time so you can search for it you now know, know the logic you know the concept you know the steps so it's easy for you now to search for the internet and you can do it. For example, you can go to Google and you write that I want to make a local repo. It will give you full details how to uh, do the steps one by one. Okay. And uh, again, I want to say sorry for that. Um, wasting a lot of time on this, but really it's good, um, good way to, to learn and to educate yourself because actually it's um, once you do mistake and you find the um, uh, find the the way to solve it actually to find the solution this way will make you uh, confident about your knowledge and you, you will never forget it again okay and by that you learn a lot of things thank you for watching and uh, see you